Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. <sighs> if you like a lot of wrestling, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Oh, oh, not so hey, loud. Oh, my yeah. head, my head. Oh, hello. Welcome to a, uh, a recovering, regretful. No. But, but still, after looking at the comments, rather proud episode of the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. Yes, it's the one after the seven hour. Six hours, 58. Seven hour podcast. Why, what were we thinking? Yay, booze. Oh, Ooh, also yeah, wrestling. Yes. Yeah, it was, oh, it, was, it was ridiculous. I am so happy. Really, really happy that it went down so well in the comments. It did. We'll have to start drinking every single week without fail. You'll have to start drinking your rum neat. Every Thursday, just God, for the crowd. The only thing neat about me in that podcast was the whiskey. <laughs> uh, yes, we're doing our Burt Kreischer cycle. <laughs> um, but yes, now thank you very much for putting up with us. I think as a once a year tradition, it'll be all right. Yeah. Every week is uh, taking the piss. Literally. Yes. Yeah, but I was really happy it went down well. It did go down very well, it did. Because yeah. just to peel back the curtain, I walked out the room feeling quite confident, and obviously just because of the, the liquids that had been consumed. But then Jack, what Friday morning, was like, I never want to be a part of anything nah. like that ever <laughs> did again. Did I say that? And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, what's happened? What did we do? I think it was just the lo- the no, it was the length of it, not the quality of it. Obviously, it was obviously it was men. Aye. <laughs> and people seem to enjoy it. I, I'd be interested to know how people listen to it in the comments. Did you listen to it in chunks? Were you crazy and listening to it in one go? Yeah, I've sure been hearing from people, like the great Mike 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 and other people will be messaging going, yep, finally finished it, or <laughs> three hours deep into this. Like it's infinite jest. Right. I'm at the Return of the King part. You know, it's like, it's going to take a while. It's our own ode to WrestleMania, as that came wrong out of my mouth. It's just like, one more time. An ode to WrestleMania. Yeah, finish oh, the chair the podcast. You being sober yeah. ruining it. Yeah, yeah, yeah finish yeah. the pod, yeah. But apart from that, how are you, Jack? Are you recovered? Yeah, I'm all good. I'm not too bad. Um, just g- getting on with the post-mania. Well, I was going to say slump, but everything's stayed quite exciting, really, yeah. hasn't it? In, in WWE, obviously, but also AW pay per this weekend and stuff. Woo-hoo. The wrestling never stops. It never stops. How about you? How are you? I'm, I'm all right. I'm there looking at this, the wrestling going, yeah, it's a lot of stuff to edit. Yeah. Mm. And people <laughs> going, isn't it great? I'm like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it, when you look at the actual wrestling, enjoying it as, an, as a wrestling enjoyer, mm-hmm. which we all are, obviously, up the wrestling. Up the wrestling. Yeah. You kind of fake a seven hour podcast talking about wrestling. You can't fake it. How do you learn to fall off a seven-hour podcast? The passion's there. The fight's still burning. You've that bullet in the chamber for a week, I think. <laughs> but, Ross, how are you feeling? I'm fantastic. Can't wait for the weekend. Myself and Tom on the live stream for Dynasty or Dynasty. <laughs> he said live stream like an MC. On the live stream. On the stream. live stream. I'll be honest with you. I've got a slight ear infection, so I've, it feels like someone's got their finger in my ear, so my voice is not like I can't hear myself properly. Do you feel so, like you've been on a plane? Yeah, basically. Oh, it just feels you. like I've got a full ear. So if, if words do come out wrong today, that's why. It's not because I'm an alcoholic. Not that. Mm. Not that. <laughs> you're an ear infection from drinking. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> but uh, that's not something thick, but I don't think I've ever had an ear infection. How has that happened? Because I used to swim until I was 16. Oh, the swimming thing. That's yeah, what and I've got enough. swimmer's ear, water's trapped in there, and it won't go in. It just, it's a recurring thing. If, a few times you a year. you drained? I get them sucked out every four months. I go to the hospital. Oh. It's a great experience, but it never does anything. Oh, okay. But I go back for the thrill of it. I bet it feels good the next day or oh, straight yeah. after. Oh, yeah. It feels lovely while it's happening. Just imagine a small, really? teeny like, little vacuum. Just getting put in your ear. They put like a little cone in your ear and then stick that in there and say, like oh, a little David like Pence in your ear. It's I lovely. Like <laughs> no, when I was at school once, um, <laughs> the lad who sat next to me in primary school sharpened his pencil really, really sharp and then I just felt he put it in my ear and um, he got kicked out of the lesson and stuff. Yeah. It was the sort of thing that would have been the end of my social status, but he was less, he was worse than me at football, which is the only ranking of popularity in primary school. So everyone was just like, he's Scott, that's too harsh, that like, uh, can't be doing that. But if Scott had been cooler than me, then it was game over. It's a weird thing as a social thing when you see a kid realise, oh, I'm not at that level, am I? You can <laughs> literally see the rankings in front of him, like, oh, uh, he's, oh. Yeah, no, Scott was, um, I don't know what that feels like, Matthew, to be honest with you. <laughs> You've been so high up, you need to look down at us. Don't worry, mate. <laughs> ah, the news, which there's not a lot of this week, but obviously enough to get us uh, into a lovely groove. The Undisputed WWE Universal Championship has been renamed, now simply the Undisputed WWE Championship. Uh, so it's back to being that. Obviously, yeah. Cody Rhodes is the holder of that, which was two belts, now it's just one belt, and now it's renamed the Undisputed one again. Is this the end of the Universal title? That's what it looked like, yeah. 
what I took from it. I quite like that. Retired with Reigns, who held it. For, that True. was the reign that he had, was the uh, Universal. And he even had a third belt made for that thing, which he then held. But then kept the, the other belt, two. Which yeah. I thought was hilarious. Yeah. That's Kovorka. Um, uh, I like it being, I prefer it being called just the simplified version and, you know, more classic design and all that. But uh, part of me just wants it to just be the WWE Championship. Is that too basic? Do they want it to sound more... Uh, UFC adjacent, maybe. I think if they're going like, "Hey, can we get rid of all the Vincisms, like something like that's like synonymous with that period?" It's like, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, it's enough. just back to that belt that we all know and love. It's an interesting point you make about the UFC isms. Because look, the uh, Sheamus' uh, groin this week that was very UFC, wasn't it? His he groin. His groin. Yeah, he had, the, he had his new tights on roll. Yeah, well, we're not noticing them. He had the WWE logo like on the top of his ah on that bit above the winky. That seems a bit yeah. That seems a bit like Under Armoury or like yeah. But they have the UFC logo there, don't they? Mm. They do. They're all um, generic looking because oh. they have to wear the same stuff. Wear like your that. brand with pride, he said on Twitter. The UFC oh. three hundred. The other. The other day, yeah, that's right. Aye. Apparently, it was one of the all-time cards ever. I got told it was great. Aye, that bloke who won the main event, Alex Pereira, is a terrifying man. <laughs> Have you seen him? Nah. Oh, he's scary boy. <laughs> <laughs> he's scary, really scary guy. He's like got like no body fat, but he's like he's like six four or whatever. Just looks like death. Not in a bad like he looks like the Grim Reaper. A oh, good death. <laughs> oh man, and and his because his arms aren't skinny. He's got muscles, but like he's naturally quite a skinny blow. And then his hands at the end are just like massive hands and apparently he's got like the deadliest left hook in history and he just knocks people out it's I'm, terrifying I'm picturing I've got like a really terrifyingly realistic drawing of Popeye popping in my head the way he um, I've got a slender man in my head with massive Joe, hands Joe can you search Alex Pereira please <laughs> yeah slender man wearing those whole Hulk hands used to be getting in the early 2000s um, and there was a he, the end of the fight came when he got a he got clipped low below the belt the ref tried to step in and on he the went, raw logo and then, he, and then he went the ref tried to step in and he went no no it's alright and then knocked the bloke out <laughs> Ooh, he looks great Oh, he's a scary man. What's that picture there at the bottom? That's what he wears for the weigh-in. Is this his face? Oh, it's a skimmy. Okay. No, the, the, yeah, the... Jesus. Oh, my. I know. Oh, my. <laughs> Quite the peacock, eh? Quite the peacock. <laughs> look at his hands. No, it's, it's the network. <laughs> I'm scared of him. Yeah, he does look a bit terrifying. Yeah. Get him in the wrestling. Mm. How old's he? I don't know, actually. Is he 40? Wait, he's got the UFC tattoo on his arm. Oh, okay. Well, he won that belt, I suppose. Are you going to tell him that looks crap, are you? <laughs> <laughs> what a great tattoo, mate. <laughs> okay, so that's nice. Uh, also about Vince, I tried looking on that lovely website, but couldn't find it. But some bizarre little, obviously, more stuff about Wall Street Journal uh, has come out mm. about Vince. Surprise, surprise. We're not going to do all of it because this is supposed to be the happy podcast. One thing said, Vince transported... A bunch of cats and one dog. Yeah. For his friends to adopt. For his friends to adopt. Did mm. they check inside them? Is this or... is this info been... So this was via the Wall Street Journal. Because this feels like it's a detail that's been included to try and make people soften on him. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh. You think so, right? So it's yeah. quite a strange... Or is it just to make... Is it just like a slightly bizarre co- fact to report it looks alongside like the that. main stuff? Yeah. I guess so. Mm. It's people get a bit like, oh, God, not more bad news. Wait, what's this? Him and some cats? Yeah. yeah, interesting. That on the NBC News article, Dwayne Johnson, who in brackets is a TCO board member mm-hmm. as well as talent, is still in touch with Vince since he resigned or resigned in January. Why would you do that, Dwayne? Mm, like Dwayne, just Dwayne, just Dwayne, Dwayne. chill with Triple H and just be. That's your link to yeah. WWE now. I forget which news site it was, but they said uh, the Rock declined to comment about this. Well, <laughs> well yeah. <laughs> How did he do it? Did he go? Oh, don't... No, sorry. <laughs> But interestingly, the next point... Shut up, bitch. (laughs) The next point in the article says, Paul Levesque and uh, Stephen McMahon haven't talked to Vince regarding company matters. I mean, that's more fair. Yeah. 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 Why would you take the risk of staying in contact with him? I don't know. Yeah. It must be awkward, just family matters, just general. Hiya, dad. uh, Yeah. Oh, man. And I thought thought it was... um, I thought what it you've been up to. Actually, yeah, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I thought it was very awkward when, like, Cena was pictured going to, like, dinner with him and stuff, when it, all the fallout was happening and everything. That was really awkward, and I don't agree with it. But I, I can understand that more because Cena's got more of a historic link to Vince than The Rock, who was gone for decades, really. Mm. He only popped back occasionally, so it feels like he would have less of a link to Vince. I don't know. Strange. The only thing revealed the last-minute nature of his WrestleMania 40 involvement uh, because they didn't give Austin enough money. Uh, he spoke about... On his little podcast thing. No, I haven't seen any of it. Have you guys seen any I've of it? I've watched a couple of episodes. I wrote, a report, yeah, right. I wrote an article on this. Um, yeah, he was saying that he was contacted on the Tuesday of WrestleMania week. 
um, by Triple H saying like, do you want to maybe get involved in the main event? And he was like, yeah, I'm up for it. Then he didn't hear anything back until the Thursday when Michael Hayes contacted him and went, it's on. Doop, doop, doop. And then apparently the details of it, like the choke slam, like the final, like what they are actually going to do, that was finalized when the second night of WrestleMania was already on air. Yeah, he tells the story of going into his skybox and everyone in the crowd below the skybox thought it was him and was like, wait, it's The Undertaker. Mm. And the guy he does the podcast with when the main event, apparently like an hour before the main event or something, Taker just leaves, just gets out the box and runs oh. away. And everyone thought he needed the toilet, need to go for a poo-poo. <laughs> poo yeah. uh, just the speed he, he left the box with his new knees and whatnot. And then he just, the entrance happens and everyone who saw him there at the start of the show turned around the box and his podcast pal's like, well, I didn't yeah. know. He kayfabed everybody. He mm, says kayfabe yeah. is still alive. He goes, hey, Undertaker, where are you going? He goes, I'm going to rest in pee. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Joel That's all the news. Ah, and he, all also, the news. he also oh. said um, that it gave him a sense of closure, which he hadn't really had yet since he retired. So that's nice. Yeah, because he had his final match at the, obviously, the cinematic masterpiece that was the Boneyard. Yeah, it probably, mm. it probably doesn't feel quite the same. It's probably like more like filming a short film. And that clip of him running out the arena is fantastic. Yeah, I was going to say, he's had more goodbyes than Kiss. <laughs> All right, then, yeah, sure. And up the Nile Rose as well. That's, that was up the Nile Rose. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, that, go to oh hell, Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, fair play, Nile. Well done. Well done for sticking it to them on social. Nyla, Nyla, Nyla Rose. All I hear when I heard Nyla Rose's name is Taz singing. Oh, it's the uh, song. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Nyla Bees, oh. Nyla, Nyla. These aren't the actual I lyrics. can't wait to talk about Taz's involvement. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> anyway. Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. Ah, the Hall of Fame. And condescending order from last week, Booker T's ad-libs during <sighs> Trick Willie's entrances and the like. Uh, and the like. And the like. Okay. He had lives <laughs> elsewhere in the show. He's, oh, yeah, true. Yeah, his yeah, words yeah, true. were said last week, maybe. <laughs> uh, Knuckles sat in the crowd, 32%. Bollocks. I thought that was going to win. decent show in for Knuckles. Angry Drew McIntyre's supporters' reaction to the start of WrestleMania 40, night two, 51%. Fantastic. It's Considering the amount of censoring we had to do for it. It's yeah. a worthy winner. And the first time that I've been aware of being pipped to a pick because obviously that was my pick as well but I'd send uh, it in to Joel second behind Ross which if it goes to show I'll get a pick it was I think fast to finger first oh baby. yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, so congratulations no, to, first, uh, congratulations <laughs> to <laughs> Sesh uh, for getting the L mutes in because we did stay monetized last week so good work there pal, pal. Yeah. thanks Joel good work thanks. buddy and thanks, thanks for staying until like past 8pm on a work day it was a pleasure I hope you got your oh, time back we had a right sesh didn't we yeah we <laughs> did he did the eyebrows and everything so there when you said that didn't we have a sesh boys oh. so what yeah. got it this week Ross this week I'm going to nominate last week's podcast because it was oh he's won oh, oh, all right, cool oh, ah yeah. damn it it's, as I said I was confident walking out the room Jack then Scuppered that confidence I didn't realise I'd said this. I didn't realise I'd said So I was like, oh God, I'm nervous about going live now. But after it went live, the reaction has been unanimously positive. I've not seen one negative comment. No, I don't think I have. Uh, what was your pos- well, sorry, What was your highlight of last week that you can remember? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know where you begin. I guess the clip that people have been sharing around on Twitter of me losing my bananas when you suggested we skip reviewing <laughs> a match in NXT. <laughs> I guess I, that'll be mine. No! <laughs> I saw can you redo it for us? I don't know if I can. I'd have to feel that emotion again. Yeah. I saw Air a, in the eyes, isn't it? I saw a clip on the Discord, the, go- the Cultaholic Discord that was getting shared of <laughs> me trying to chime in with an observation. And not so much Ross, but you cutting me off <laughs> about sort of eight times just with Brian Alvarez impressions. <laughs> just every time I try to speak, you were going, the worst! <laughs> like, okay. Oh, sorry. I got I so emotive last I didn't week. Re- I don't that. remember it. But I don't remember that. Either. No, no, yeah. I'm sorry for the thing I can't remember. Yeah. But, yeah, I got so emotive during like that. Can you believe they aired the footage? Then why were they doing this? <laughs> and then, yeah, people are like, are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, I was buzzing because I agreed with your side of it and and I got a bit of grief on Yeah, but can I interrupt you? Eight times. So go ahead. <laughs> and I agreed with your side of it. And the fact that you also agreed with that side made me feel bolstered on the podcast because I thought, well, the internet cool kids can come for me, but they won't come for their king. So I'm hiding behind you. <laughs> <laughs> the king? Yeah. The AW what, section of the internet they, cool kids. They weren't yeah. on the podcast last week. Really. <laughs> uh, uh, that final hour, I've got no memory of any of it. <laughs> no. I was saying, getting home? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got home, watched the darts. Oh, bought this 
Is that a dart shirt? 30. No, it's a pack shirt. It's a pack. I had it made myself. Logo, <laughs> logo, oh, okay. logo, logo bear in Newcastle. Though I got to you know when I used to do like dressy up as Rossi Drip Drip for the predictions. I remember. They made a few outfits. A few, they made a few t-shirts for us. So I got in contact saying, would you mind doing this? And I got an embroidered one. Oh. 36 pounds was it's spent a, on that. It's pretty all right. It, warm, it came from last week's podcast. It's a lovely jumper. Yeah. Oh, nice. lovely came from embroidered. last week. Came from last week's podcast. Yeah. Oh. Do things when you're drunk. It's fun. <laughs> it certainly is. It is, I. No rag rat. Not at all. Lovely. Okay, so you're wearing Hall of Fame attire and nominating the Hall of Fame <laughs> thing. Yeah, it's easy. Oh, it's me next, isn't it? it Bollocks. Is <laughs> uh, I will go what to... What animals have we got doing something remotely funny this week, Matthew? Oh, whoa. Oh, oh, whoa. oh, oh, oh. What was that? <laughs> near, near booze, all salt this week. Uh, I have been sent something. So I've sent the lovely Joel, who will now click. Yes. Billy Sewell, go, go Kate. I think that's what it says. I know it's still Mania season, but this needs to be a Hall of Fame pick. The act of intentionally missing a free throw so the opposing fans can have free chicken is great, but the call is even better. So uh-huh. this is Boban, I believe that's how it's pronounced, intentionally missing a free throw to give the Clippers fans free chicken. It's the craziest thing I've seen all season. So he's got, his, he's got his ball. Copyright here. So is it, so sorry, just... Is, is it playing the audio or... Is it, um... Is it, is it, one, I'm, I'm guessing I it's one of those cases where if the home team wins out. by a certain, over a certain number of points, that must be it. Ah. So he must be deliberately not bringing his team within... The game must be over, like, they must be comfortably losing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. I mean, it's a free, I mean, you hope so. So, yeah, and then the crowd has been informed, they'll get free chicken if he misses. And the crowd are like, come on, miss, miss! <laughs> look, at them, look at the clappers. Ah, uh, there you go. Hang it. on. Uh, yeah, hang on. He didn't hulk it yeah, into the crowd I, I think, like I was expecting. He, it it's was like an Austin 99 pop for free chicken. <laughs> it was a very casual It wasn't attempt. the biggest miss in the world, it has to be said. I, I was so, expecting I mean, just launch it off the backboard. It's a bit of a retcon, if Can you I ask me. All right, so let, let me see this again. He's playing up to it, obviously. You want free chicken as well? I think you're free chicken. Oh, oh! I missed it. Oh, that was it. Intentional, lads. Yeah. Yeah, I right. think it was a mm. casual heave, but... I, it could have gone in. It could have gone in. Yeah. If the rim was kind. Yeah. You would make it more deliberate, wouldn't you, to play up with the crowd? You'd throw it at someone in the front row. Yeah, right. I think the, the better Take move that, Jack Nicholson. Been, the better move would have been to really heal it up and just drain it and be like, yeah, no chicken for Under you. Underarm it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, it's interesting. Sports yeah. entertainment, you might say. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's why I think. Thank you very much for sending us that lovely pick. I am to please. It's not true at all. Uh, Jack, what have you got for us? So I'm about to talk about a crime that occurred a number of years Jesus. ago. That's not the pick. The pick isn't the crime, but it leads on to my pick. Okay. Um, okay, I've sent myself the notes. So in 2008, a man named Travis Alexander was murdered by his ex-girlfriend, Jodie Arias. Lol. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> it was a quite Keep it high, light. I think it was quite a high-profile murder case at the time. Um, while in his house in Mesa, Arizona, while in the shower. Arias was convicted of first-degree murder on May 8, 2013, and sentenced to life in prison without parole. Booker T was speaking to Bill Pritchard of WrestleZone. Oh, dear God. And said, Hardy Biscotti actually came from the Jodie Arias murder case. That was her pet name for the guy she was convicted of killing, Travis Alexander. That was her term for him. Her Hardy Biscotti. I was like, man, that sounds pretty cool. So I said, I'm going to steal that to use. I love true crime as well. It's one of my favorite things to talk about, as well as watch. <laughs> what? That's where Hardy <laughs> Biscotti comes from. That's where from. Biscotti comes from. Because it's what a murderer used to call her boyfriend before she killed him. Biscotti. <laughs> why, why would you do that? Why would you do that, Booker? So it makes it a bit more sinister now. <laughs> I want to know the pet names of fellow murderers. Like, what did Ted Bundy call people? What did, you know? <sighs> my pumpkin-y, wumpkin-y. <laughs> <laughs> wumpkin yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> If it rhymes and it's like four syllables at most, Booker T loves it. <laughs> Obviously, Paw it's Patrol just, it's just shone a bit of a dark light on what we thought was a bit of slightly outdated but fun commentary. And, and yeah. now I, I just don't know what I make of it. Well, that makes sense because that's probably the thing he's listening to while he's watching NXT. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he told that story in public. Told it yeah, to yeah. the wrestle zone. Yeah. You just keep it to yourself, wouldn't you? <laughs> Booker T, I love you. <laughs> I don't think he's advocating for murder. <laughs> no one was saying that, but that's right, 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 that should it. be how we're going to word this. <laughs> Booker T advocates for murder. I, I'll just call it the origins of Hottie, uh, Sorry, the origins of Biscotti. I suppose. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yeah. So the origins of Biscotti slash Booker T advocates murder. Yeah. Uh, it's your pick. Yours is last week's seven hour podcast. Of course it is. And mine is that one. Oh, what's his name? Baban. Matthew's third place pick. I might as well call it. That. <laughs> um, some basketball player given the opposing team's free chicken. He's in John Wick as well. That basketball player? Mm, yeah. Is he? I think so. He played like a henchman. Number three is like a massive. Well, he's massive in here. Well, he was more like John Chick there. Oh, chicken. Uh, Jonathan yes. Chicken. Oh, that's, yes. that's right. A guy Very kills good. his chicken and he wants revenge on the, the squad. That's chicken, chicken run, isn't it? No. Uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Call the Hall. Very Matthew Wright of you there. <laughs> <laughs> A blast from the past, yeah, the right? right for an online magazine called Cultaholic. Oh, I forgot about that. What's he oh, doing now? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, now he writes for an online magazine called Cultaholic. Cultaholic. Oh, oh. A hotty biscotti. A there. magazine. <laughs> a magazine. Calling a website a magazine is like calling a what's the term for like a beat combo? Calling a band a beat combo. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> 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 what was that about? Was it about Pachiti's billboard thing? Pachiti's yeah. billboard, yeah. Oh, and then he did that, and then now... <laughs> you'll he again. works with an online <laughs> magazine called Cultaholic. <laughs> 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 oh. uh, I, I got into a Twitter argument with Matthew Wright in the aftermath what? of that. <laughs> to get clout. Oh, because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. because um, you go, Matthew wrong, lol. I said something about, like, wh- why is he said it like that or something, and then didn't get a response, and then... It, sort of lunchtime he must have been on his lunch break Matthew right and he just put idiot and then I told my mum and she was like I'm very proud of you for getting an argument with Matthew Wright oh that's nice apparently she didn't like him let us know if you like Matthew Wright in the comments <laughs> down below that says this week in the wrestling it's this bloody week in the wrestling ha ah. ah, this week in wrestling Smackdown Cody Rhodes opens the show and mentions The Rock interrupting him on Raw he says, who told you it was open mic night, bitch? Yeah. Uh, everyone went, whoa! <laughs> yeah. yeah! Nobody got it, did they? Yeah. <laughs> Why, is that supposed to be an iconic moment? Wait, like, Brandy's from Detroit. They were in Detroit. Oh. Everyone yeah. knows that Brandy's from Detroit off the top of their head, don't oh, they? they? That's right, yes. <laughs> I, I did know that, but did I you? don't think, yeah, because there was some sort of promo where in AW maybe where like they were having a feud. Cody was feuding with someone, she was feuding with someone else and Cody was like don't test Brandy she's from Detroit she knows how to fight oh. I remember that yeah he should have dropped a look at the adjective yeah I want to play with <laughs> rock I oh, has to write the promos for <laughs> <laughs> Cody mentions the item rock gave him on Raw but doesn't reveal what it is he when does the- hmm? it's a watch he says he gifted him gifted him it mm. yeah but it's a wartime overture mm. oh the clues are there <laughs> okay it probably is the watch, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Rossi Poirot here. I was going to say, bloody hell, thank you. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Oh, it's French, isn't it? It's Belgium or oh, whatever. It's Poirot um, Belgium, okay. Yeah, when The Rock returns, he won't have to look for... Ah, it might be some Belgium chocolate. <laughs> well, you wouldn't say it like that if it was Belgium, <laughs> would you? No, you say it with a lot more phlegm. But it doesn't make... Yeah. How would it Sorry, sound Belgium. like, Ross? I don't know what people from Belgium sound like. Belgian chocolate. No. I've just done <laughs> what you just did. That's the exact same thing. <laughs> Belgium has multiple languages. It uh, does, yeah. Take your pick. I'm trying to think of how Vincent Company speaks. That's my main Belgian. Oh, hello, you're Vincent Company. No, it's Dutch, man. <laughs> Never mind. Oof, it's just not how it looks, <laughs> isn't it? Doing this, doing this sober is a bitch. When the rock returns, he won't have to look very far because Cody will be standing right in front of him. Cody brings up backlash en français and hypes the number one contender matches starting tonight. Mm. Now he's champion. He is no longer the hunter, but the hunted. But he's confident because he's our... Undisputed WWE champion. Oh, was that a rah rah baby face? Yeah, people are like, yay! If you come at the king, you best not miss. He quoted The Wire of all the Is shows. Is that where that's that... from? Yes. Right. I thought it came from someplace else, so I had to Google go on. I know Omar from The Wire says that, but be like, no, no, he that that's where that line comes from. Ah. Like, oh, wow. It's one of those you hear it where, everywhere. Now. One of those things where it's so ubiquitous that when you right. hear the origin of it, you don't realize. Yeah, well. Yeah. Well. I like the mention of him and AJ being the only two of the four men to be former NWA and WWE champions. Who were, I was looking through oh, this, right? It was uh, Buddy, Buddy Rogers. Was it Buddy Rogers? And Flair. Flair, 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 yeah. And yeah, Flair, Flair of course, okay. yeah. Buddy Rogers, of course. Wow. Buddy Rogers was the one I couldn't remember. And yeah. he was the first bloody one. Cold to Hollywood. 
But I just Cody still getting massive pops yeah. wherever he goes because people are like, yeah, we're very happy that you beat Roman. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Good for him. <laughs> Heyman, Solo, and Jimmy arrive at what used to be Roman's locker room, but now has a Cody sign on the door. Owens awkwardly scoots past them and says there's a broom closet down the hall if they need somewhere to change. Ooh. Mm. Solo vows to take care of this, but Heyman says there are consequences to losing, and this is one of them. The champion's locker room isn't theirs anymore, but they'll get it back again. By order of the tribal chief. Who else? But yeah. Well, well you well, say well. who else, but we don't know who that is hey, now. Because so, mm. I, Paul says by order of the tribal chief, but then he backs away from Solo. Ooh, what does it mean? The subtext. Well, the I don't cowards. know if it meant anything yet. <laughs> Shrill <laughs> foreboding. I like the uh, the precedent being set that the champion gets their own locker room. That's another thing to fight for. Yeah. The winner's purse, the gold, the locker room. Yeah. The ladies. Oh. Ooh, I don't know. Oh, my. A flair for the... No. I was watching the Harley Race's Dark Side of the Ring this week, and that's in my mind. Is it good? It is a good, good episode. Mm. God, I keep forgetting that song because there's so yeah. much of the stuff we're watching. Uh, what they cover? Like, what's dark about I've only got up to about the early 80s. I had to turn it off because I got a bit, got a bit tired. Um, yeah, it's good. I didn't realize how much of a family man he was. Oh. And the heartbreaking story of his first wife. Oh. Car, car crash around Christmas killed her. Oh, Heart bloody well. Yeah. yeah. I remember seeing the... It was in the Zac Efron film, uh, The Iron Claw. And the Harley Race guy looked so much like Harley Race. Mm. But couldn't really wrestle... <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, what a loser! Yeah, but what the, a other, loser. the other, the other, the other lads film. The other lads learned how to do drop kicks. And that. Yeah, no, yeah, it was good. I remember watching the Star and Shadow Cinema around the corner, and yeah, as soon as he shows up, and starts, I'm Harley Race, I'm handsome, and the crowd, what's that laughing? But I'm like, no, that's what he looked like. That's yeah, God, Star and Shadow. The big up, how he, he just didn't take any crap from police officers. Like police <laughs> officers would walk around the side of the car and go, like, oh God. It's Harley Race, or they would learn via not knowing who he was initially and go, oh, you're, you're Harley Race, I'll leave you alone. And he, he speaks about, oh, what was this? Trevor Murdoch tells a story about him whapping out a gun and going to somebody's house. I've forgotten what it was. I was so tired when I watched it. <laughs> I'd recommend what well, I need to go back and watch it. better myself. have my money. Yeah, but apparently the only uh, bit of the story that Trevor, that Trevor Murdoch had heard about the gun thing was the, the type of gun that was used. The rest of it was true. He was like, ah, it wasn't a shotgun, it was a machine gun. <laughs> 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 Harley Race, the evil yeah, genius yeah. that he was. Yeah, oh, it was Batman tell she went out there, right? I get it. Uh, there's well, again one little Harley Race story that's a bit more of the is the um, he was going to rent Jerry Lawler for the first time, and Lawler had heard that Race didn't like him, and Lawler's like, "I'm not a proper rest. I'm not a, a shooter like him." Like, so he just kept on stalling outside for like 10, 15 <laughs> minutes. So eventually, Harley Race had to tell him, "Tell him I'm not going to mess with him." All right. <laughs> Go flight to catch. I didn't realize he went as far back as the carnivals either. Right. Really? He used to, I don't know if he, I can't remember. The, I was so tired when I watched it. Either he played the role of the plant in the crowd where they couldn't find someone to take on the shoot wrestler, or he was the shoot wrestler yeah. from time ah, to time in the, yeah. in the carnival. This 14 year old already looked like he was 40 years old. And most guys going, oh, yeah, I've never wrestled before. I'd love to go to one of them. I wouldn't take part yeah. just, just to watch like a local. I don't know, bus driver from Newcastle. Right. Like, I'll bloody mm. take it down there, pal. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get stretched. <laughs> on the uh, before they were the Superstars release for Regal, they had a few of the fan cam stuff, and yeah, it looked like oh god, this is a real fight, isn't it? Yeah. I remember we uh, when I was in when I lived in Durham, and it was the end of the year, so like all the students had gone home, and there was just a handful of us left. Uh, I think I was repping. I was an open day rep. So I was like, come and look round, students. And I was like the probably keen lad being like, oh, this all this of them. Come to hold it. Um, and then uh, there was a, a circus came to town and we all agreed to go. And it was like the dodgiest, carniest circus. That's the closest I've ever been to going to a carnival. There was no wrestling, but there was a game where they got four people out of the crowd and they all had to like throw beanbags into hoops or whatever and like swap places. And, okay, stuff. Yeah. and um, three of them were genuinely from the crowd. And then there was the most circus-looking lass you've ever seen, and she won the game handily and took all the money. And I was like, "This is this, uh, this is how wrestling started." Like, it was like a learning experience. It was a dodgy circus. Like, oh, you were a rep for you, you. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. When yeah. we had ours, uh, our show was around um, UD at UCLan on uh, the second day. Uh, they dressed up as the A team, and one of them had the black cup. No, the no, no, <laughs> this no. Is, well, yeah, it was this? This is two thousand six. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it still starts with it too. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> we see an interview from early today where Santos Escobar says his stable are not responsible for the beatdown of Dragon League last week. 
Yeah, we know. It's a it's a Shawn Michaels booking because it's a so far it's a bait and bait, is it not? Because oh. you're thinking it's Carlito, but then it's not Santos either. So who the hell is it? Carlito. So it's Carlito. <laughs> it's yeah. gotta be. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Santos takes part in a triple threat versus Bobby Lashley and LA Knight with the winner qualifying for the number one contender match. Legado del Fantasma interfere, but the Street Profits and B-Fab fight them off. Knight gets the win, hitting the BFT on Escobar. Mm. Yeah, Santos says he had a plan, and his plan was shagging cousins. Yeah. Who attacked LA Knight. After that, it went he, a bit wrong. Yeah, oh, <laughs> B-Fab didn't fall over when she... Uh, it was the best kick I've seen her do. Good. They were much better than last week's bloody chuckle vision. Oh, it was so bad. It was so funny last week, man. <laughs> no, she looked good here. The kick was good. Yeah. It was all good. Uh, the, the highlight of the match for me was the power bomb suplex spot with all three lads involved, where LA Knight yep. nails his leap up to the top rope to do the suplex part. And I thought it was a good win, obviously, for LA Knight with the shoot BFT after Santos had sent Bobby flying out the ring. Yeah, I was surprised it was LA Knight, actually. Tactics. Yeah. Mm. I, I, thought... I did get a bit annoyed going, wait, hang on. Of all the people that. We're involved in this match. LA Knight won his match at WrestleMania. Bobster did, but that was because of his, his mate uh, Bubba Dudley. And then Santos didn't bleed win his match. Was Santos in a match at WrestleMania? Oh, yeah. 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 The multi the match, tag, yeah. yeah. How's oh. he doing in this? But then I went, wrestling's fake, shut up. And LA Knight no, looked no. amazing. I like things to make sense. You're right. That, it's crazy, though. Mm. Um, he looked smoother than Fat Ronaldo, I've put here. Oh, he does look like a smooth boy. Yeah. Uh, Do you mean smooth in his, like his touch? Or just Ronaldo looks quite smooth? Because I think it was... Ian Dice, uh, Ian Drew, oh, I can never see his name right. That Ian lad Drury. on Twitter who's funny. Um, Just saying like... Oh, D- Dice Clay. Yeah, I remember like Ronaldo was like the best with a period when there was no PEDs or diet and stuff like that. He just pulled in a shift after whatever yeah, happened. Was, Even when he was fat, he was smooth. I went, that's good, Dan. I'm still off the podcast. He got fat because of his knees. Of course poor, he did. And he was guy. still great. Yeah. Mm. Poor guy, but also wonderful. That's yeah. our Ronaldo, not this. This is the, the Brazilian guy. Ronaldo we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, Portuguese yeah, 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 yeah. One. The LWO are interviewed in the locker room and don't believe Legado has nothing to do with the attack on Dragon Lee. Carlito thinks Santos is all cap, as the kids say. Mm-hmm. That's very suspicious of an old man to say. Yeah. yeah has Jericho well... been teaching him how to speak? <laughs> 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 it was very interesting how Ray called Ridge Hollins accidentally closing the door on Cruz del Toro an attack. How dare he? It nah. was an accident. A pure, imagine the turmoil Ridge is going through watching SmackDown. Hey, Stop. I'll sit down Stop. with my wife and kid and I'll have a great time watching SmackDown. And he sees a, an icon like Rey Mysterio spreading lies like that. I've got thoughts on the Ridge thing when we get to NXT because <laughs> we had developments this week. I can't wait to hear them. I literally kind of. Uh, Ray Fumi believes that he has another run as champion in him. And crowd are like, yeah, he probably does. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, his, his only other run with that belt lasted minutes. Because of Cena. Oh God! No, Did they ever justify period. that? No. Like, why was Cena allowed was to? Crap. Why was Cena allowed to just have a match with a tired Ray and be the face? Be the face. Stupid. Yeah. But yeah, Ray. I think the only thing about him that makes your mind reminds you that he is old is the fact that his mask has the word "mask" on, in case he forgets. <laughs> Uh, the He's had that for like five years now, though. Yeah. Still works though. You don't, you don't see it on his hand or his foot, do you? So it's the brand. Just mask. Maybe. Yeah. I guess so. It's mask. By mask. Yeah. Like Black Sabbath by Black Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> the Bloodline, minus Roman Reigns, make their entrance. Heyman says the Bloodline don't blame anyone for the loss at WrestleMania. Not Cena, Undertaker, or Jey Uso. Accountability is important on the island of relevancy, and Roman has ordered them to accept the loss without excuses. Unlike last year's WrestleMania, Roman became unfocused in Philly. He decided to get revenge on Seth and take his eye off the ball. Solo interrupts, I've given Heyman the side eye for a bit during those words he just said, suggesting maybe something needs to change around here. He stares menacingly at Jimmy, but hugs him. Aw. As Solo turns away, Tamatonga makes a surprise debut and beats Jimmy down. Solo hits Jimmy with the Simone spike several times. Heyman tries to call Roman, but Solo breaks his phone. Tama wraps a chair around Jimmy's neck, and Solo crushes him in the corner. They leave, taking a terrified Heyman with them, which I thought was a nice touch. Yeah, Heyman was really good in this. Yeah. He's just trembling and stuff. <laughs> yeah, Tama Bloody Tonga. I'm buzzing. Uh, I saw a few people go, that's great, but Tong- Tongan, Samoan, no, Tongan, not part of that. Now, friends. Do you want to tell Haku <laughs> that his son can't join this? Yeah, true. So. Um, I, thought, I thought the reaction was, you could tell not everyone knew who Tama Tonga was. But Corey immediately on commentary was like, he's been running rough shot over Japan, for, you know, and, and all that sort of stuff. Funny that a video package lined up, yeah. Um, the thing that, yeah, <laughs> the thing that people seemed to, like the thing that people, the response was on Twitter was like, God, he looks good. <laughs> like, and he's like 40 as well. 
and he looks great. That doesn't mean anything in no. the 2020s, does it? A lot of people were focusing on how handsome he is. That seemed to be a... Yeah. It, Zazadi. Zazadi, yeah. You put the Zam Zazadi. 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 Yeah. you got to put the Z at the start because that makes him an extra daddy or something. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how it works. It's like a spicy daddy. Yeah. You're <laughs> right. Who is this Zazadi? Who is this Zaddy? I'm lost here. It's what the kids do. Oh, Who do they is? put a Z at the yeah. start of daddy? I'm yeah. going to uh, dictionary Zaddy. Who is this Zaddy? That's what I saw on Zidadeen Zadaddy. <laughs> He would have yeah. daddy. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> Jimmy's just been headbutted in the chest. Who's it? About? <laughs> oh my god, proud Samoans, Zinedine Zidane. I tell you what, though, I liked Paul Heyman closing the book on Roman Reigns, saying it was uh, that he yeah. waited ten years to get his revenge on Rollins, and he gave mm. it a temptation. You know what reminded me of WrestleMania eighteen? No, uh, ninety eight. Beg your pardon. I lost my ability to think. Then WrestleMania fourteen. Raw afterwards, Triple H goes. Well, HBK dropped the ball. Now I'm the leader of the clique because mm. you're out of it now. And then he brings in Sean Waltman. Mm -hmm. Instantly, he's the new dude. I've got my own guy. DX version too. Are you saying that Triple H is becoming a bit more like Shawn Michaels <laughs> in the way that he's inserting his own career milestones into storylines of the current day? Yes, and I can't <laughs> wait for the next 20-minute main event with Tama Tonga. <laughs> I think this is going to be more like Hollywood and Wolfpack. A bit WCW. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I'm expecting war games to be... It's not it's not loading the definition of zaddy, but it doesn't matter. There's too many zaddies, that's yeah. why. Too that's many it. of them. Yeah. I reckon war games this year will be Bloodline 2.0 versus Bloodline 1.0. Ooh, Roman and the Usos. Babyface Roman yeah, with yeah. the Usos taking on the... Babyface team. Roman. I think it'll be really over. Yeah. Jeremy, that's medical. <laughs> Did you not watch the career trajectory of The Rock, the Dwayne, The Rock Johnson? Did you not? When he was a Zazadi himself. <laughs> hey, I'm oh, just starting to moan and like, the entire body gets going. I watched that promo again the other day. The one with Booker, Goldust, and The Rock. Goldust, just amazing. The gold wearing, sometimes oh so daring. <laughs> <laughs> and then they do a bit where like Booker Nettie cracks because The Rock and Goldust do a bit of improv where Rock's like, he does his, take off my t shirt, take my t shirt off. And he starts taking it off and he's like, oh God, put the t shirt back. <laughs> Did you pay for that? And Goldust goes, yes. And he goes, Good. <laughs> <It's> really good. <laughs> Do I find it funny how Solo Soko is the one saying, bringing up uh, the consequences to losing? Mm. When that's all he does. Is that just effective heel work? But I thought, that's, I I thought that was the thing. So, wait, I've had to hear that. Oh, now it's the shoe's on the other foot. Oh, I see. The turntables turn. Doesn't he lose in house shows, though? Doesn't he count. loses a fair few matches on TV, okay. I'd say. Yeah, fair enough. Because he went ages on, he went a year, didn't he, without losing. Then he lost that one to Cody. It was yeah. his penance for beating John Cena. <laughs> like mm. you've got to lose forever now. No, I think you. I don't think you'd be losing much in the future. <laughs> Looks really good. Tamatonga, like, because Solo is really menacing and has like a good aura, but he's not like a natural promo guy. Tamatonga, as long as he can not swear <laughs> by too much by accident, <laughs> is like really good at like being a heel, like heel trash talk and that. So we can. Mm. I also think he'll be good. He might be a better fit for WWE than New Japan. Because he wrestles, oh. he moves really uniquely and like wrestles a bit in an offbeat sort of way, which in New Japan, you've got all these like super workers and stuff. So he always kind of blended in. But in WWE, he might, he might stand out a lot in the ring, mm. the way he wrestles. By that, I mean, sometimes he hits the ropes and then changes direction. <laughs> oh, he does okay. that thing where he goes around the floor like a demon. Does yeah, that, yeah. What, what, you mean like the great Nathan Fraser? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, he's I'm ripped very off, excited he's now. He's ripped off Nathan Fraser. <laughs> God, all the great Frasers we've got in the world. Mm. Joe Fraser, Nathan Fraser, War Fraser, Fraser, Fraser Porter. Yeah. Yeah. He. <laughs> Backstage, AJ Styles says he's going to demolish everything and prove a point in tonight's main event. It's not personal. That's nah, not personal. It's necessary. AJ's opponents are in the way of something bigger than they could imagine his biceps, mm -hmm. and he'll step over their dead bodies, Jesus, to get to LA night next week. God, all right, AJ. Yeah, that escalated <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I reckon uh, AJ Styles might be getting his win back, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting that feeling as well. After, this is where I started to believe after this promo. His arms are going to pop soon. <laughs> the skin's going to just turn into a flappy sack. Is he... <clears throat> do you, You're the theme tune would. guy. Oh. His new one's awful. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. it's supposed to be, though, isn't it? Like... No. Oh, you can't have like people going, oh, I love this song, boo. Yeah, you can. Of course Actually, you can. Yeah, yeah you can. A professional wrestling heel with a cool theme song. I've never seen the like of it before. <laughs> <laughs> I realized what I said as I said, as I said again. Disregard that. Death Rebel are terrible. 
Oh, they are bad. Like D E A F Rebel. Yeah, that's why my boy. Yeah, T- Joe, Joe. The- <laughs> why, why me, 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 boy, me, boy, me, Oh my god, <laughs> my boy T Pizzle was wearing headphones at WrestleMania. Teddy Fizzle. Sick of the new themes he was hearing, like Bailey's. Ugh. Do people call T Pain Teddy Fizzle? Or I, I made that up. I think you've made that up. On what happened at, I was But like, I don't know what a zaddy is either, so I'm the wrong person to ask. On what happened at, I was like, and between the next, before the next match, we see some celebrities in the front row. T-Pain's there, Teddy Fizzle's in the house, and as soon as I recorded it and given it to Owen, I was like, oh no, what if I've made up? Teddy Fizzle sounds cool. Owen would have put you right, he knows about T-Pain. Owen knows three bands. <laughs> right, and he's three of them. I've Googled Teddy Fizzle, and it's just all of the teddy bears. <laughs> oh no. Damn it. No. <laughs> Mind, I've mocked Owen for only knowing like a handful of bands and stuff. And what bands does Owen know? The Beatles, the Kinks. He's working his way through music chronology through pop music chronologically. Oh, you have said <laughs> you know, that. The Beatles, right. the Kinks, and the Arctic Monkeys, right? He skipped a few decades. Um Joel got him out of the Kinks, I think. Yeah. Um Love the Kinks. But I do laugh at him for that. But his Beatles all knowledge. All day and all of the night. Yeah. Sorry. His Beatles knowledge is superb. He knows all sorts. He's from Liverpool. That doesn't count. You've got to you're raised on that. Yeah, there's lessons, right. there's Beatles lessons in school. I my mate's from Memphis, he knows about Elvis. Mm. <laughs> Uh, Bailey makes her entrance as the new WWE Women's Champion. She's about to announce her first challenger, but Tiff Strats interrupts. Tiff says it was a little rude that she wasn't given a title shot at Mania, but she's happy to accept Bailey's open challenge tonight because it's Tiffy time. Bailey says it's nice to meet Tiff, but she wasn't offering an open challenge. She actually wants to give Naomi an opportunity. What the hell? Naomi arrives and <laughs> she actually gets an entrance, uh, and Tiffany points out the fact that she's already beaten her. Naomi admits. That's true, but says she's earned everything she's ever gotten in WWE and she doesn't plan on stopping now. She can't accept Bailey's challenge yet because she wants to wrestle Tiffany right now. That's like yeah, that's a good babyface thing to do. Yeah. Of course it is. He'll turn from Bailey. Do you think? One yeah. easier opponent. <laughs> Could have had an honest open challenge. Yeah. That's a Tiffany's... former SmackDown champ. Exactly. Well, I don't care. Okay. Yeah. Naomi great. in 2024. Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah, is that just. Because it's her mate. It's just yeah. her pal. Another babyface. Mm, don't know about that. I'm playing silly buggers, of course, before people go radio rental. I'm surprised that um, Naomi, I'm surprised Naomi, oh, we've not got to the match yet. Yeah, we? Yeah, okay. We briefly got backstage where Caleb Braxton is waiting for an update on Jimmy. A shaken Heyman exits the medical room, the shot and everywhere. But before <laughs> he can answer <laughs> Kayla's questions, he's interrupted by Tama Tonga. Tama stares at Heyman and says, by orders of the tribal chief, Solo shows up and smirks at Paul. They leave and Heyman wonders what all that means. So what does that mean then? What's that? You're saying him, right? I think if Roman Reigns Solo. isn't there and Rock isn't there, by default, Solo's the new tribal chief. I think Solo as well, but people seem to be saying it's The Rock. No, it he's gone. He's already said he's, be the rock? he's the final be. boss. Brandon. That's why they keep on saying mm. these bloody names. Because yeah, yeah, Wade, Wade was like, I want to really know who's calling the shots at the end of that segment we just talked about earlier. I, it could be Solo, it could be The Rock, it could be Roman. Who knows? It could be Roman. Just the fact that Solo walked in after he was like, Biota's the tribal chief, and then there was a dramatic pause, yeah. and then he walked in. Mm. I'd think it's Solo if I'm putting a bet on. Yeah, I think it's Solo. Yeah, well, he's referring to himself, but he's broken. Thomas Tong is referring to himself. Never. No, I Thomas think doesn't say. Thomas... Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Solo, I know what I said you remember there, like sorry. Bugs Life, the Disney film, right? Pixar yep. film. Bugs Life, basic thugonomics. Solo is like, yeah, Solo is like Hopper, and then, you know, the mad one that's on like a dog lead, and it's like. Yeah. Yes. That's Tamatonga. He's the crazy like that, sidekick. Yes. So he's not higher than Hopper, but he's arguably more dangerous. Yes. And then Heyman's the, the dragon. Heyman's like the bumbling brother one who's like, oh, geez, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what a film. Underrated. I haven't seen that film in ages. Mm, yeah. Uh, with Bailey watching on from ringside, Naomi beats Tiff Strats with a jackknife pinfall. Bailey seems happy about it, and she mm. walks like an Egyptian afterwards. <laughs> I thought it was very good Kavorka from Naomi because on, on a promo right at the start of, of the promo before the match, she's like, you caught me on the wrong night, little girl. What had happened the segment before? That's when Jimmy had been spaffed. Oh, over. that's mint. Because I was like, why is she like that? And then I went on the X.com machine and people were saying, why are you like... I think she quote tweeted someone's tweet saying it's because Jimmy got hurt and that's her husband. So that was good Kavorka that's, there. Mm. That's really good wrestling. It is good ring psychology. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was all about just giving Naomi a big win because her returns felt a bit flat. Before the Jade Cargill and uh, Bianca Belair stuff, it felt flat. Getting job entrances a bit too early for me. Um, and maybe they're cooling off Tiffy Stratton for a bit. No. Oh. Not going straight for the title. Shucks. Going somewhere before the title. Do you reckon they might bring mm. in a mid-tier, a second-tier women's title? It would feel weird for NXT to get one and not for the main roster Yeah, team. and Tiffany would be a prime candidate for that if they did. Yes. Mm. What do NXT call those promo segments? Like Trick Willie and Carmelo Hayes? Prime target. Oh, prime uh, those ones, um, yeah. yeah. Oh. 
I don't the know. one the, the recap candidate. thing they did, yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, the match was a ding dong battle. Tiffy didn't look weak in defeat. No, nope. I didn't think at all. Uh, it was given some time, and just I think I was just to reestablish Naomi as a good wrestler, which yeah. is what she is. Yeah, it's nice when they do these balancing acts mm. for people that are keeping around the Naomi Tiff Strat two names. Yeah, they're I not mean, hoppers, as you said. They're I can't remember they're the name the, of uh, the stick insects. Um, it's been ages since I've seen this film. <laughs> and the oh, ladybugs. Tuck and roll. Hey. You remember the? Oh yeah. Um, I used to have the little toys of them. Did so, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flick, the main one. Dot is little pal. Okay. She's like the princess's sister. Her wings haven't grown in yet. Yeah. Yeah. And the sex. <laughs> and uh, the sexy spider. Oh no, wait, that's James the Giant Peach. Oh yeah. Effie tweeted about the spider. And James the Giant Peach. Yeah, uh, James the Giant Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's him he went to school with. Huh? <laughs> James has fallen off the edge of the peach. He twitched too hard. <laughs> He's in the ocean now. <laughs> uh, also, I've probably missed out because it's right at the top of the page. I was going to say. I've started doing this thing now where if I'm reading, I will just skip the first period, I guess, because I don't know why. Oh, that's not how reading works. I know. It's completely <laughs> opposite to how reading works. Bron Breaker wins a singles match against Rootin, Dooten, Cameron Graham. Just happened to be here. Yeehaw, mm. in dominant fashion. I think they can see the fallout of every new Death Rebel theme that we hear because we're here bronze for the first time here. And they have Wade say, I assume Triple H was sat with a shotgun just below the announce table. Oh, point so of, funny. I am digging his music. This is a fight song. Yeah. <laughs> for another generic, just white noise of a theme. Uh, there was a lot of Styler references. They mentioned Scott Steiner. Straight away his dad and his yeah. uncle. Oh, did they mention Rick as well? Oh, yeah, his oh, dad right, okay. mm-hmm. uh, There's a Steiner line mm-hmm. naming of uh, his clothes and I have to run the ropes like yeah. he does. And I just thought there was a nice spear for the win after doing the kind of catch and slam off the ropes. It did what it needed to do. Is running Absolutely. the ropes get to pop still. Mm. People are like, whoa, yeah. whoa. Yeah. Imagine seeing that live though. Oh, yeah. I always wish I could see Lesnar. Do you remember when Lesnar was doing that in the Hell in a Cell? And people were like, oh... Imagine seeing that live Biscotti. just stand next to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be terrifying. Yeah. No, I'm with you. He looked the mutter nuts here. Mm. Yeah. Good for him. And well done for Rootin' Toot and Cameron Grams, who's already wrestled him uh, and can take all the bumps. Yeah. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. What a shame they don't use him more. Uh, the Crypto King. Yeah, make him funny again. Yeah. Where are we at? Uh, we get an A Town down under vignette. They brag about all the celebrities that came to see them win the SmackDown tag team titles at WrestleMania. And celebrate by going to a small empty bar. They call yeah, that's <laughs> weird. They call themselves the greatest undefeated tag champs of all time. The new Catch Republic and the Street Profits watch this from back in the arena. Nick Aldis says we'll find new challenges next week, implying a match between the two teams. This was a cheesy opening line away from being a prime NXT 2.0 promo. Yeah. Uh, I like them calling themselves the greatest undefeated tag team champions of all time because they've lost four of their ten televised matches so far as a team. To the likes of Jay and Cody, Randy and Kev. But not since they become champions, though. Well, they became champions last weekend, didn't they? Well, they're undefeated. <laughs> yeah, they, are, they are technically correct yeah. here in this small, empty bar. <laughs> uh, I thought, okay, fair enough, I get the characterization. This is making them look good. Woohoo, Street Profits, they're great. I'm not a size queen. I was not prepared to see the size of Tyler Bate on TV next to people like that. Because they've always presented him as looking... Moderately sized NXT. Have they? They, um, they threw him the wolves here. Who was he next to? Oh, the Street Profits. He was. He was all the way. Th- he was like Puppet Jack next to Ross. Next to Gary. And you put and him Ken. on the floor, like on. Yeah, they're just like, big oh. boys though. Yeah, Gary and Ken are massive. Mm. Yeah. Gary Angelo Dawkins needs to stop tweeting about Real Madrid. It's all I say. <laughs> <in my feed. laughs> he loves Real Madrid. He's keeping it real. Mm. Oh. Uh, <laughs> he felt that was bad. Logan Paul cuts a promo on his phone at home. Is that really a promo? And brags about retaining the US title at WrestleMania. He says he's the real legend killer and talks about how much of a splash he made for Dub to be on social media. Okay. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, yeah there were so many millions of impressions and two million or something was down to him. Yeah. That's what the kids care about these days. That's yeah, but people only care about your impression of Irish people, Ross. That's a real impression. <laughs> Do they? Well, yeah. we'll wait for that. I don't want to bastardize it too early in it to run. Mm, bet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea Green and Piper <laughs> Niven complain about Adam Pearce booking Chelsea against Jay Cargill. Oh, Raw. Matthew. Oh, Matthew. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. Hello. What happened during uh, Chelsea and Piper's entrance here before we go into the main <laughs> match? <laughs> what happened there, Matthew? That's right, folks. It's the segment <laughs> where Matthew admits he got something wrong. <laughs> oh, the what? new weekly occurrence. <laughs> What's this? A so, sure hit for the people on the Discord. He was a howdy denier last week. Last week, Bronson <laughs> Reed was like, I'm Bronson Reed and I'm badass. And then it came up very briefly. Oh, oh, went, oh uh, that's nothing. Uh, Shut up. Every week this howdy. <laughs> this week, a bloody thing that scan and... Three could take your card details and <laughs> scam you. 
Um, just take your inheritance right out of your bank account. Uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, Uncle Howdy's coming back. My bad. I don't Possibly. know if it's going to be Uncle Howdy, but it's some version of Bo. Possibly with Eric Rowan. Yeah. Possibly, because obviously he's been taken off shows. Mm. Uh, please be wary if you're on any social media. There are a lot of people like impersonating Uncle Howdy or some sort of like evil way at why we at play that why up. Or oh, to get to get them. followers. Or something. To get followers, oh. make you think it's them, and then they'll treat someone like like lol the resource or something. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come, the, the mask will fall off really quickly. So please don't assume anybody puts their name or faces that is that. No, right? that that nightmare. What's it called? I've forgotten that. Dreadmare. Dreadmare. From that that's, con artist. That I, uh, There's been no conclusive evidence that's not actually Bo. There hasn't there been. There has been. <laughs> <laughs> you lying bastard. Is he like tweeting crypto or something? He makes videos, no. but it's like Bo's making the videos. No, but... They're incredible. No, yeah, I mean, yeah, but he hasn't got a good enough job of saying, no, this is nothing to do with Bo. It's got nothing to do with them <laughs> at all. And it doesn't. He's put tweets and... Uh, yeah, so... Like I'm saying, you can enjoy them for what they are. I'm not being a... Killjoy. I'm just saying, please don't think it's actually that. So mm. I, this week's was uh, in the bottom corner. It says, you forgot about us. Oh. <laughs> Matthew sucks, lol, is what I'm uh. <laughs> yeah, that. But us is interesting after the Eric Rowan news as well. It does look like that is going to be a thing. Sorry, Joel's just Joel made a little a, noise. A... I was just going to say, Mahad has been tweeting about it as well. Posting yeah. the clips from Raw I can't on work out if that's led by him or by WWE, actually. Yeah, yeah he put the clip from back? Raw, didn't he? Yeah. There's another one on Raw. Because he's got history of Bray. Yeah. It would make sense as well if they need members for the group. Yeah. And he's like, he'd be the biggest star in there by far. Hmm. Oof. Ah! Matthew's not really awesome every about... aspect of this, isn't he? No, no I'm not I'm yeah. trying to see where it goes and stuff like that. I'm like, Matt Hardy's coming back. Like, oh, okay. Hey, now. It might be a different version of Matt Hardy. Yeah. No pun intended. Oh. But it's uh... what it was intended, actually. Does Wait he do that? He might have asked him. Zero, Miedo, Matt Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, where's he come up with these wacky <laughs> ideas from? You know, I've said this like so many times and it's just, and Matt Hardy's always like come back and been impressive or whatever. So yeah, I'll be wrong again. Yeah. On next week's edition of Matthew Was Wrong. <sighs> There's a nice little storyline. I thought at the time there was a nice little storyline forming with Jay just appearing when Chelsea tries to make something happen yeah. for herself. I'm going to have a match on SmackDown. Here comes Jay just to smash her. Uh, Piper looked good in there. I thought in this match she needs to be used more, but I think everyone just accepts that anyway. Yep. And I thought it was interesting that Jay, they're having to do the same three moves that she does in her, like all of her matches. I thought she'd be a bit more on than just doing that in her first few bits on especially, Smacky Down. Especially when they were like, no, we're keeping her in the performance center to learn more. Mm. And now they've limited her. I don't mind her matches being limited because it's like, she doesn't need to do much to win. Yeah, especially when the joke is, oh, it's Jade and you know she's wrecking people. Mm. If you only need three moves, then absolutely. You said last week, Ross, that Adam Pearce had turned heel because he booked Chelsea against Jade. Has Nick Aldis now also turned heel for doing this? It would appear so. Okay, fair enough. You can't do that. Ava's the only good JM left. And God, we know she's good because they tell us every week. That's right. If she wants she's to so run... She's so qualified. She's really good. For she's another... all over this week's NXT, sorry. Mm -hmm. If she wants to run for another kind of office in the fall, I reckon she's got a good chance of getting in there. There was a nice <laughs> there was a nice picture of um, on the WWE's gallery of like behind-the-scenes WrestleMania shots um, of her hugging The Rock after his match. And I thought, oh, he does know her. Because <laughs> he's never. Has he ever... Imagine Rock sees us. I was like, "Oh, do you enjoy the show?" Yeah, it's crazy. Isn't it, I'm Rock? sure I know you. From <laughs> it's just. It's not that I'm not suggesting the Rock was an absentee father or anything like that. It's just that I am. He never mentioned. He never. He never. Had... And he had a go at uh, Dusty Rose, didn't he, for having an age an age gap for his kids. Oh, did when he? he's got the same age gap, just about. Oh, in the promo oh, code, yeah. yeah. Or did he forget that Ava exists? Ooh. Yeah, that would be it. Well, he hugged, <laughs> he hugged her backstage. We're all we're all good. There were some lovely shots in that. I put my favourite ones on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> I curated but, some. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. I wish it was like that Key and Peele sketch with the, the president's shaking hands. He's got the, <laughs> Ross got his, his manager mate going, yeah, the, she, the your daughter. Oh, hey, <laughs> how you doing? You used um, us in that once. Um, and I was really relieved that we were one of the cool that ones. Was, <laughs> that was made by... Um, oh, it was not you? Three. Uh, oh, I'll probably say the name really badly, aren't I? Story. Story. It's actually got a lisp, I guess. Story. <laughs> um, the lovely French ah. YouTuber who will be having a very nice time. I imagine the backlash. Not the Booch guy. That's him. The guy who got Booch over. Oh, yeah. wow. Mm. Well, small world. I was glad. I was, I was positive in there as well. I was like, oh, phew. Um, their opponents turned out to be Jay Cargill. Oh, I've already done that. And Bianca Belair. Uh, backstage, Kevin Owens wants to try one of those cool new tracking shots. Oh, he's so wacky. <laughs> he cuts a promo as the camera follows him through Gorilla and says that he... Oh, it's always funny by this note that Gorilla doesn't have a capital G. So it's just that, yeah, there was a big monkey Oh, there. sorry. <laughs> um, through a monkey and says that he respects Rey Mysterio and AJ Styles. But he's going to kick both their asses tonight because he wants to be WWE champion. Fair bloody enough. Yeah, yeah. That uh likeable Kevin Owens. I like the bit where he picked up the title with the tigers on because he likes tigers. 
Doesn't nah. care about sports, just likes tigers. And he also threw the CM Punk shirts off the table to the floor. Yes, he did. Oh, oh. I didn't notice that. <laughs> it, 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 I had to be happy. It's one of these things that so many things happen that I'm like noticing. Ooh, yeah. the long, as I'm typing, they're doing the long shot. Kevin Owens is like, get away, CM Punk shirt. There's mm. two things you don't like, CM Punk and shirts. <laughs> Fair enough. I like the bit where he's going through his and Rey Mysterio similarities as well, where he's like, we've both got sons that are way taller than us, but mine's not a dick. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he loves tigers. He's great. Who doesn't like tigers, eh? Tigers are good, aren't they? I, I suppose so. I saw, <laughs> gi- I saw a giraffe. Scary. I'm going to think about this, really. Yeah. The pros and cons. I saw a giraffe kick its own daughter, I assume. It looked like a girl. <laughs> Move, Ava. <laughs> Kicked its own daughter in the head to kill it this week on Instagram. <laughs> So, so picture the scene, everybody. <laughs> Baby giraffe is, no, get, uh, is getting dragged into a lake. Where did this come from? By oh, something. it's a humane killing. Yeah. yeah. Right. So baby giraffe's getting dragged into a lake by a super crocodile. And adult is like just flailing its legs everywhere. And one of the legs just catches the baby on the head and just flops down and dies. And it gets dragged in to the water by the... Uh, That's um, horrible. Yeah. But it's also really... Long live the king. That's reminding me of uh, Andre Chase throwing the towel in for Thea Hale. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Very similar. <laughs> I appreciate you blending back the wrestling me. Because even though it hurt him to do it, he knew it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Uh, let's move on from dead animals. Oh, yeah. Uh, it just does. It's a circle of life, Matthew. <laughs> that crocodile... I have heard that song before, that yes. That crocodile would have died if that giraffe didn't die for it. Hmm. It is Stars was the main event with an Avalanche Stars clash from one opponent onto the other. That was cool. It did look sweet. LA Knight comes out and they talk trash as the show goes off the air. I would love to have been backstage to see this match being put together because right. the amount of like three way sequences and moves that came into other moves was amazing. For nine minutes, which isn't a lot of time, obviously, they crammed a lot in. Yeah, good main event. Very uh, good. But I think, well, me and Ross both think so. Do you think AJ's getting his win back as well? Matthew. I think so. <laughs> I do think I that. thought he was just weighing it up. I, thought mm. he was just the text I was going, you have some good spots in this match. Oh, he's talking to me. Right, right. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that would be a good time to beat LA Knight if LA Knight's already beaten him. And then, of course, because you can't have face LA Knight versus face Cody. You could, but it would be weird for his first feud. Right. And then AJ has done this before. Wasn't he like Roman's first feud when he beat Triple H, maybe? I remember he had, they had yes. a feud that lasted a couple of pay-per-views. Yeah, he f- sweet feud. Where he both formed, like formed him through the announcement. Anyway, oh, oh, no, I'm a good guy. No, I'm a good guy too, oh, are yeah. you? Mm. Oh, yeah, cheating bastard. <laughs> oh, so, such a good It was feud, good, that. yeah. yeah. Maybe this Roman yeah, fella's going to be all right. <laughs> That's yeah. what we'll thought. What do, what do you think? Do you think he's going to... Yeah, I think AJ's going to win. He seems to make sense for a first opponent for Cody. And his new serious thing, even though I'm not fully convinced by it, does feel more main eventy. Yeah. Plus... If he's in France, it's going to be L.R. Styles. Hmm. No, if he goes to France, if L.A. Knight goes to France, he'd just be the knight, but a feminine knight. La knight. Yeah, yeah. Ooh la la. And that would be silly. I always start focused on doing the proper French things for letters. I call them L.I. Styles again. Because <laughs> L.A. Styles is the name of a bloody song I've got on my phone. I listen to all the time. Please ignore me. This is the only <laughs> podcast. I'm good. much better with Captain Whiskey in my, my corner. Good, uh, good Smackdown. Of course, I'm saying LA Styles. But yeah, no, a lovely match. And then doing the stuff in the barricades, the cannonballs. And that finish was amazing. I yeah. swear I've seen something similar before. Was it Mustafa Ali? Yes. Oh. Someone, yeah. I can picture it on Raw for some reason. Hey. I mean, Styles had that one match. He's the that. current X Division champion, uh, Mustafa Ali. He certainly bloody is. Yeah. And he had a good match in a church against Mike. But no. Jesus Christ. Oh, who was it against? <laughs> it was a WrestleMania weekend anyway. Oh, who was it against? At a church. It was like a church hall. Oh. But uh, you could see like the mosaic, like the windows in the background. Oh, nice. It would look good. I like when wrestling's in weird venues. Oh, the one in Japan, you mean? No, in Philadelphia. WrestleMania, Philadelphia. WrestleMania weekend. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair I think you'll find that's called the ECW Arena. That yeah. We're talking about, not a church. Uh, but I don't know how many under 10 minutes triple threats there have been. I assume there's a lot more than 10 minutes than there is under 10 minutes. Yeah. Is that the best under 10 minutes? Triple threat oh, that's ever been on TV. Possibly. Uh, just throw Come out on, tell me, Encyclopedia <laughs> Matthew. Encyclopedia <laughs> Matthew says, yes, it is. <laughs> AW Collision. Danny Magic fills in for Nigel McGuinness on commentary. Well, he's been doing so much work, he needs to rest him. He's been pulling a shift and a half, that lad. What assignment's he on, though? Because he's on assignment. What assignment he do? Is he doing something for college or something? I don't know what's happening. Where's Nigel? Yeah. Mm. Is it something to do with Brian? Is and he getting Ruby Soho pregnant? <laughs> That's what I've said. Oh, yeah, congratulations, by the way, to <laughs> yeah, Ruby congrats. Soho. Yeah, well done. And to 
Cool well hand, hand, not to Nigel McKinnon. Yeah, yeah, congrats to Ruby. Not to Is that I a knew, shoot relationship? I knew, yeah, well, uh, I knew their chemistry was steamy, lads. <laughs> I remember saying it's so steamy. Oh, but that breaks the rule. It does break the rule. Oh. Yeah, if it's steamy, that means they're not together off camera. But like Rollins and Becky are. Exactly. And they weren't steamy on camera. So it might be Nigel. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I can't. It is a shoot relationship, isn't it? It's yeah, all, yeah. That's astonishing, nice. that, yeah. Congratulations. Lo- Logan Paul's having a kid as well. Is he? Ah, oh, who gives a talk? <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <coughs> Congratulations as well, I guess. Yeah, well done, Logan. Life's a, you know, life's a miracle. Strike! <laughs> Uh, he and Tony Schiavone recap John Moxie beating NATO to become IWGP <laughs> World Heavyweight Champion, hey. which I got a bit confused about because it's the unified world one. Heavyweight championship, right. right? It's not the proper one from the eighties. So they had the the original one, yeah. which got up to like ninety eight champions or something, yeah. unique champions, not just distinct rings, but like, and they'd show them all before the matches on the Tron, and right. it was like from Inoki all the way, all the way through to whoever the champion was at that. Then they got rid of it, which was annoying. Before they even got to hundred, brought in this new one. So that first one was the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Right. Then they had the IWGP World Championship, which was a fusion of the main belt and the IC one. Okay. Then no one really liked... No! Oh, no. No, no, hang on. There was oh, the... oh, breaking news. <laughs> there was the one with like 90-odd champions. Then they got... Then they... I don't know, lads. <laughs> I don't know. There was... Then there was another one, which might have been when it merged with the IC one. And now Moxie's like the fourth champion of this new belt. That's why I got confused. I went, wait, oh, so he's got the same lineage and we had look and goes, wait, there's only four people who's had this bloody belt. Yeah, and like a Bushi, right? Osprey, JY. Right. And Nido and yeah, like so it Ricardo. doesn't. So it does and doesn't share the lineage of two belts. I like to pretend it does, but I don't think it does. You know, huh. why would they stop when uh, they that were so like close a very to? Odd decision. I think I thought everyone loved the lineage of that. Right. Yeah. Anyway, it's nice that Moxie's the champion. Fantastic, the fourth ever IWGP champion. <laughs> so I saw someone on someone tweets or on Reddit or something saying like, "Congrats to Moxley for winning the Divas belt because it looks like the the shape it's of it." Oh, okay. the Divas it belt. is noticeably worse than the old design, isn't it? Why did they change it? I don't know. I think it might Stupid. be when it might be when New Japan's ownership changed, and it was like Harold May or, or whatever. I don't know. Let's blame Deaf Rebel. Yeah, yeah. Bloody Deaf Rebel. Yeah, yeah. their bloody belts are yeah. worse than the themes. rubbish musics. This could be the their LA styles. New Japan hasn't ever really recovered from the slump when Omega and Cody and everyone like all the when AW formed and they all left, and then the pandemic. They they didn't do very well during the pandemic and stuff. And since then, they've never really recovered, and the booking's been like. Just kind of felt flat and everything. So this could be the shot in the arm that New Japan needs. That's my two cents there. Thank you. That's all right. Your cents. Your two cents. You sent for me? Yeah. That's this right. Is... To read the rest of this. <laughs> Danielson and Claudio could have promo backstage and say they're ready for the Don Callas family tonight. Mm. They mentioned how Don told the stable that they didn't need to beat the BCC tonight. Just heard them. Brian says it shows how little faith Callas is, has in Osprey but it's even harder to hurt the BCC than it is to beat them. Great Violence line. is their speciality. Great, Great line. line. Yep. Regal-esque almost. Mm. I thought it was very regal. Mm. Uh-huh. In a Harley race sense. Yes. Or Booker. But yeah, and it's nice because it's like, why are we having this tag match? Well, Callus wants them to get beat up, so they're nice and soft and tender, ready to be put in the oven by little Will Ospreay at Dynasty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you thought that was going somebody else, didn't you? You filthy bastard. Oh, that was a black win a six man tag match against Dante Martin. I've cut you off, Ross. No, I was just going to say, just like the line of uh, Claudia saying, like, Swiss chuck the uh, clockwork. I've done. The, the, done the, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, we are rubbish. We, done, done. we were better last week. Great. No, we were better last week. Swiss we were, yeah. shock work. That sounds good. A chocolate clock. clockwork. <laughs> He's been good at the wrestling for 15 plus years. Oh, he's really consistent. Yeah, I yeah, hate yeah. my life. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh. Swiss shock work. I can't hear myself because of my ear. That's my excuse. Yeah. I've got Anyways. no excuse. <laughs> yeah, Dante, Seidel, and Action Andretti teamed up, didn't they, Matthew? <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> that lovely segue. Darius misses the match because he's busy getting his pilot's license, which you think is just a really dumb joke. No, apparently he is. Top flight, am I right? Time to fly, friends. Hey. <laughs> Chance of winning. Hey! We really are better when we're, we're it. It's back. It's back. <laughs> Uh, I thought Malachi and Brody just looked really hard. Should Bro- I get on Dyla drink now? <laughs> <laughs> if you want, yeah. Oh, goodness. Get the no. company card. Do we not have any of those, like, free IPAs? I don't want to have a drink. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, Me Bro- neither. Haven't you got your car? Well, oh, yeah, I can leave it here, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, Brody was getting good organic reactions when he tagged in, which was nice to see. I think he's a member of my Bahoy Stahable. 
Ah. If he can be qualified as one. I was going to say, he did win the six-man tag match. Uh, is it not world titles? Yeah, you can't yeah, be a world okay. champion. Oh, wait, yeah. we've got so many Dilfin titles anyway. Yeah. yeah. So many Dilfin titles. <laughs> I'm nearly getting these words out, all right? <laughs> Damn those Dilfin titles. Uh, Dante Martin was the lead twink for the twink fight back. He was mm. looking good there. The other ah, twinks, not good, so much. Good, you think of the lingual. Um, and then the big bomb started getting thrown. Big lariat from Brody. Massive splash from Dante to break up a fall. And I like the finish because they do a triple finisher now with the cannonball from Brody and two drive-bys either side. It's one of the beers. House of black eyes, am I right? Yeah, you are, probably. Thank you. But yeah, just a nice match there. House of black to fill some time on bloody collusion, having a good match with three good lads. Yes. Who are doing nothing but making other people look good. Yes. Twinkies. Three Twinkie Cameron Grimesies. <laughs> uh, backstage Tony Storm says last week's champagne celebrate... Beg your pardon, Champagne. She says it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Celebration would have made an Italian woman curse. <laughs> what does that mean? I said something offensive there. Tony goes to kiss Mariah May again, but Lexi Nair brings up Mina Shirakawa. Mariah says this is distracting Tony from her upcoming match against Azumi. Tony vows to give Azumi a beating so intense it'll be featured in a fetish peri- peridoc- periodical. Periodical. Periodical, yeah. So it's a, a periodical mag- magazine. A magazine. Is it an online magazine? Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll get them in every quarter. Call the Holy British magazine. <laughs> uh, I like the storyline that's bubbling here because Tony has seen did. the kiss that happened on Dynamite last week and yes. thought, oof, I'm getting a bit jealous here. Mm. I need to now smother this lady in my own smooches and mm. sniffs. It's really weird. <laughs> and I, I, I don't like it, but I guess that's the point. She's a heel. Exactly. She's Doesn't got cruel intentions. Yeah. Yes. She's controlling. Yeah. Mm. What a bitch. <laughs> we see footage from after last week's Dynamite. Jericho finds Taz backstage and asks him to speak to Hook on his behalf. Taz says Hook does his own thing, and Jericho may have pissed him off. Still, he'll try to put in a good word. <laughs> yeah, fair. I love uh, that. That's his son he's on about there. He's his <laughs> own man. I can't get through. He didn't talk to me. <laughs> it's true. It's so true. You, know, you can tell it's so true. Did you see later on on Dynamite when they're all coming in the ring for this next segment? Who kind of just says a little Taz by going like, "All right," <laughs> before he gets his crisps out. Yeah, this, yeah. Said this on the pitches video. Chris Jericho is just anything, throwing anything to wall to stay on TV. Yeah. The tenuous link with oh, I had a match in 1996 through to broker a meeting with Hook for me Taz. <laughs> uh, it's not, I just think he needs a period away from TV just mm. to. Cleanse the old palate. Yeah, I think so. That was, Jer- that was Jericho's, like, his best skill was sodden off after he cooled off. Oh. It was remaining relevant. He's been in AW for bloody ages. Is this I- the one where he can't do it? It's finally happened. Wow. Just remember in the summer of 05 when he went away after the Cena match and he had yeah. that banger, enemy, where the guy's climbing up the stairs with no legs. Because you're my enemy. Enemy. It's a good song. Sounds like holiday. Good video. I'm sure we laughed about the video. We've once talked before. about it yes. before. Great. Video. Although, maybe... I remember the video. I remember your description of the video, though. Yeah. Yeah. Lab, lab and her legs trying to climb up the stairs. But... You're my enemy. <laughs> it's horrible when you look back on it. Yeah, but we're laughing at it now. <laughs> so we're going to move on. It <laughs> was an actor. This I'm sure he had real legs. I don't know. Despite the presence of Andy Agogo and Shane Taylor at ringside, Shibata gets his win back over Lee Moriarty. Taylor attacks Shibata after the bell, but Hook comes out and chases him away. I think you'll find that's the wrestler, Shibata. Yeah, that's his name. That's his gimmick. The wrestler. Yeah. Um, I liked the skull-cracking, jaw-jacking Anthony Agogo. He's turning into a man with many nicknames. Mm. I couldn't think of anyone else apart from the obvious one who I don't want to compare him to, but that's besides the point. Oh, I get you. Yeah, 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 yeah move on. Tile and profile, that's all. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. Lee with a nice roll through into a sleeper. When uh, Shibata was sort of sat on the mat, that was one of my highlights of the match there. Mm. The crowd didn't feel as into this one as they did in previous matches with the House of Black and whatnot. Um, but it was nice because Agogo was a bit like William Regal on commentary, the second mention of Regal on the podcast. Because he was, he was saying how he was teaching Lee how to throw a punch properly, putting weight into the punch and how to swivel his hips to take punches and other moves so they didn't hurt as much. Yeah. Mm. And I was like, wow, that's good, that. That's like, Olympic talk. Yeah. Yeah, fair and enough. you can talk about like you know, you got like zero point zero 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 one percent or whatever of like of all people are Olympians. There's more people being the moon than being the Olympics and all yeah. this sort of stuff. And you're like, he is good at talking himself up. Like he mm. is very enthusiastic yeah. man. And it's a shame that I'm not like, oh, he's wrestling, whatever. But yeah, like I should... said, he hasn't done anything for literally years. In AWT, I know it's so. weird, isn't it? I'm glad he's back though. Mm. See what he can do. 
Yeah. But this match, it was good on paper. I'm like, oh, this could be sweet, this. And it was just good. You yeah. Know? Just, yeah. Okay, fair enough then. But yeah, the conclusion's mostly just yeah. people doing stuff. Big pop for Hook at the end there where he saved yeah. his friend, the wrestler Shibata. That's nice. Mm. He's the wrestler. Stop being so sarcastic about the wrestler. It's just a funny nickname, isn't it? The wrestler. Black trunks, no, yells, no bollocks. It's like when you're on 2K and you're like, I need to give myself a nickname and you go down the list and there's yeah. nothing you just get to. He is the wrestler. Uh, yeah. Ross. Rossi Sweetness. <laughs> That's my character. <laughs> you're going to play... Universal what, what champion, was, have you know? What was Phrases? Matt, Mike. Matt, Mark. Matt, like Matt Tyler or something. Yeah, Matt. something really boring. <laughs> Matt yeah. Turner? No, he's Matt, not. Oh, what was it? Phrases create a wrestler name. We were all talking about like... Like Jack Atkins used to love, he moved back to Liverpool now, it still works with us and everything. It still works on the little magazine. But um, he used to come up with like nicknames, like he was the rambunctious Jackie Orlando. That was his baby face. Clive name. F. Clive F. <laughs> <laughs> um, Aiden's Blitz Spirit, Aiden Gibbons. He's, he's, you know, just, Blitz just, Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> Jack was good at coming up with this sort of stuff. And then the one, we were all talking about this, like, what would your wrestler name be? And then Fraser was like, Matt Tyler. <laughs> we were like, eh? And that was his name on it. His great wrestlers were Matt, Matt Tyler. That's beautiful. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Though I'm guessing they didn't have Fraser in the right. announceable names, but yeah. Oh, good times. Mm. Athena and Billy Starks are interviewed backstage. I was interested in that. It's had nothing that. Yeah. Athena is ready to retain the Ring of Honor Women's Title at Battle of the Belts. Oh yeah, that's happening afterwards. Oh, later, <laughs> later, I've written it. I've written it. I just forgot. Later, Red Velvet responds and says she saw what Lex's boss Athena said about her. Velvet thinks she'll win. So Lexi Nair oh. is in Athena's group, but she's an interviewer. She's a minion. She's one of the minions with Billy Starks. Because here we saw an emergen emergency mem. Minion empowerment meeting. This is very Chris Jericho. It is a little <laughs> bit, yeah. This is a strange time as well, because the whole thing with Athena has been that Billy Starks is her minion, but she was always a face, and everyone was waiting for her to do a Virgil and like break free. But now she's a heel. After the fake injury angle I talked about at WrestleMania weekend. That's right. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I just didn't know that Lexi Nair was one of the yeah. minions. Oh, if only we watched Ring of Honor and we got the, whole, yeah. the full I story. Say, I don't watch any Ring of Honor, but this made me want to watch Ring of Honor. This is the best Athena I've ever seen. She's really... I she's go like, back to Ember Moon. Oh. Like her sassiness here and her, like a nickname she was giving herself and just the general presentation and what she was doing. It's, it's the best I've ever seen her do. She's unreal. And it's just a shame that why not bring her in DAW and yeah. give her the, all the all the belts? That's a good question. I know. Mm. Well, I'll never know the answer to, I guess. Uh, Carl Fletcher and Powerhouse Hobbs are on a mission to protect their golden goose tonight by injuring the BCC. Hobbs says they're expecting a hefty fine because Brian won't be able to walk out the ring on his own. Oof. And no, it was time for Brian to go, don't you know, I've, half my career's been spent doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's <scary laughs> Uh, Brian and Claudio win a long main event against Fletcher and Hobbs. By God, you're right. But Dekeshta runs out to help his stablemate beat Danielson down. Claudio checks on Brian as the show ends. Oh, no. Will Where he be they? able to make his match with William? Yeah. Where the have hell is he? Where have the hell have you? You've missed an entire like hour of the show here, have Matthew. I? What's going on? That's my fault. So. <laughs> he goes, oh. <laughs> How it's long was my, this show? It's not my fault, Jesus guys. Christ. It's not my fault. Yeah, it was a good yeah. main event. Next up, we have Roddy in the Kingdom. That's the next bit. There's no way there's another page. <laughs> Good God, mate. Sorry, I just assumed we'd like... Roddy Strong is interviewed alongside the Kingdom. He's a giving champion. He's been winning matches without any help, just like his good friend, Carl O'Reilly. Shrill for Borden. It was, I. That's from Bo Selector, that is. Oh, I know is why it? I sent him my lexicon. <laughs> he does the most haunted bit, and he goes, I'm getting shrill for Borden. Oh, all right, so just shrill for Borden. <laughs> <laughs> I went home a few weeks ago, and I put Bo Selector on. Yeah. And one of the first skits on, I think it was season two or season three, is the week in bits by Jordan's. Yes. I had to turn it off. My mum was there. <laughs> your mum was your mum. Most likely your mum. She's like, <laughs> she was going through boxes upstairs. She's like, I found these DVDs because I had the, the three box sets. I oh, was yeah, like, yeah. And then she's like, oh, you used to love this. I was like, yeah, let's put it on. <laughs> I haven't seen it for 20 years. Oh, no. The week in bits by Jordan's You Know What's came on and I had to turn it off. Um, but yeah, Roddy has been doing it on his own, just like his friend Kyle. Yeah. Great poo housery. Um, and I like the line, and it wasn't intentional, obviously, to be a cool line, but it came across really cool. He's going to put a show, and that show's going to be called The Beating of a Lifetime. Oof. It's crap, but it's fantastic. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. It's, he knows it's crap. But, he, but he, thinks it's cr he thinks it's class. Mm. Yes, that's what I meant to say. He yeah. knows it's, in his head, it's great, but yeah. we all know it's rubbish. It mm. fits very strong, good... 
Yeah, I'm still, he's still a really slow train away from getting the, the previous destination he was at, which was, well, I'm a, Matthew, leave this map all alone. You're dying. You're, you're literally dying. Um, Car Roddy was really popular. Now he's not. He still hasn't got that heat yet. It's just, yeah, the, just stick the boring stuff, man. The whole UK, just put them out of pasta. Yeah. Pasta? Pasture. <laughs> I'll rub off on you. Kill me. I'm really sorry. You're magnificent. It's when not I'm my ear. I can't control my mouth. He's a rubbish pasta. <laughs> not that Jack would know anything about pasta. <laughs> Danny Garcia wins a singles match against Angelico via submission. Yeah. These two meshed really well together, I thought. Yeah, their legs meshed when they were going, get off me. Yeah. Because <laughs> I follow like a really like slick submission sequence and then they just start going like, eh. That's good. Yeah. Good Kavorka. Uh, the air hump was the big talking point of the match, I thought. It looked stiff for Angelico. Oh, I'm sorry, no. I had to say no. it. Uh, there was a nice leg lock for the finish, and I think Garcia's become quite the sports entertainer, quite ironically. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I wish they would have him win things. I, he could yeah. beat Copeland, but I think he's already lost him, hasn't he? Damn it. Damn it. Mm. I was really wanting him to beat Copeland. Yeah. He's yeah. been cup opened. Mm, yeah, Split my half. Mm. <laughs> For you, the cope is cope shut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, crap this. Sorry, everybody. This isn't the best podcast. God, this really is like the Sunday after the good Saturday, isn't it? Yeah. I'm uh, having a nice little time. <laughs> Jack, Jack, you were doing nothing wrong. Keep it up. Yes. Pat cuts a thanks. promo and thanks to Carter for walloping him around the head with a steel chair. Now he has a perpetual headache because he's listening to this podcast. That serves as motivation. He may not be as tall and handsome. He may not be a Japanese superstar. When he does the accent, it's, just, he's, he's it's all, less Geordie. He's already it sounds Geordie. really good on me. It is. Does it not come out that well? Or a Ferrari. He is certainly not flavour of the month. Okada thinks he's God's gift the rest of them. I'll, I'll do my normal voice. <laughs> Okada thinks he's God's gift the rest of them, but he's not. He's crap. Mm. Pac knows he's better. And at Dynasty, he'll relish the chance to prove it. You got it towards the end there. Yeah. The word crap really got you back on track. Some words you can define, but uh -huh. the, the entire sentence just... Oh, An hard. interesting turn of phrase there from Pac saying, you're yeah, crap and I'm better than you. Who says that? Ooh. E somebody else says that. MJF. MJF. Mm. Oh, I'm better Zach than Ryder. you. Zach <laughs> Ryder. I'm kidding, of course. Yeah. Uh, I love it when Pac puts his little like his little boy voice on, going like, "E, that was that was very brave of you, wasn't it?" Yeah, he can't do his arms when he puts that on. It's fantastic. It was very brave. I like the turn of phrase. I might not be tall and handsome. I might not be a Japanese superstar or own a Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> Good, yeah, like it. It's like singing an indie song for the twenty ten. <laughs> I may not be Brad Pitt. Yeah, <laughs> you ever heard that one called Twenty Two Grand Job? I was a gun. Joe might know. It's just like 22 grand job. In the city, it's all right. 22 grand job. It I just goes on about that. No idea. Mm. I forget who it's by. It sounds very ordinary boys or like yeah. something like that. I'd be more like Paco. I want to be a millionaire. <laughs> so friggin' bad. <laughs> he loves Bruno Mars. I can see him being like. The Rakes? The Rakes, that's the one. Yeah. I was a very indie bahoy in high school. Were you? Yeah. Had me curly hair. Never like heard of him. Pigeon detectives. Yeah. Oh. I'm not sorry. Yeah, they're good. Uh, yeah. Pigeon <laughs> I don't remember that. I, like, I remember their name and thinking, they must be good. They and Edison it. going, oh, I thing. found out you're going out with him. Go out with Jesus. Going out <laughs> with you. Would not believe the state of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, hey. <laughs> that's, that's, that's rock after getting speed of mania. <laughs> Jesus. They were very like in between a soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. Tony Storm has a match against Azumi. Mariah May and Anna Jay get into a brawl at ringside and fight to the back. Tony wins, and Mariah comes back to ringside with Champ Champagne to celebrate. Tony licks her face. Ew. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, commentators did really well straight away because I've never seen or heard of Azumi before. So this is my first time AZM. seeing her. AZM. AZM, baby. Uh, stardom High Speed Champion for 458 days. Started wrestling at the age of 11. I feel like I'd know her for 17 years, yeah. if not longer. Um, I thought it was a nice blend of wrestling and silly bollocks. The laughing, the foot stomping, turned into a proper ding-dong battle towards the end. I don't know what I'm doing The laughing and the foot stomping. <laughs> no, you're doing good. You're doing good. Keep it up. There was a hell of a shearer from Azumi from Tony on the apron while Tony was on the floor. It made a big old bloody noise. And I thought it was nice to see the lasses given plenty of time to tell a story. Yeah. Mm. I think that as good as Azumi looked here, I think she's even better. But it's just that because she's featured on my Matches of the Month podcast before in Stardom, but they've got a smaller ring. Oh. And when she's got just smaller ring, she's like running. She's, she was she was the high speed champion, so she I think that helps show off her skill set more 
But this was still a good performance from her. Why is it called the High Speed Champion? It's like their Cruiserweight Championship. Oh. Yeah, seen, or the Activate, yeah, they're flying around. I've beat Nigel Mansell. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been part of a side story. Uh, don't know everything else that's going on. Fit well. Like everything else in collision, just a bit of filler. Mm. But in a good way, that sounds condescending, but no, I don't think it's a bad thing. It was good, good to see Tony Storm have like a proper serious match as well, because when it got past the silly stuff at the start, then she was just wrestling like the old Tony Storm. Mm. And I like the big hug and the sniffs at the end. Not in a weird way, but because of the storyline that's developing with the Not big old Andrew Hodgins Hodgins and Not Andrew Hodgins. Not Andrew Hodgins, yeah. <laughs> Andrew's a dirty <laughs> pervert. You see, I would have would Jade you? lick her hand <laughs> and make eye contact with Bianca, who would also lick her hand. It was an interesting pictures video, although he's since denied that he wanted Bianca to lick her hand back, so we might have just run with that. He threatened you, did he? He said he was going to knock me out. Yeah. <laughs> he threatened to knock was, you out? It was a great pictures video. What happened was, right, one of Andrew's pictures was, you know how later on we're going to talk about Osprey versus Claudio, and he was, but we recorded it before that match had happened. So his pitch was leading up to Dynasty, and he was saying like, so obviously on Dynamite, uh, Osprey versus Claudio, and I'm going to, I think that Claudio should win due to a miscommunication between Osprey and Don Callis. And me and Ross were like, whoa, you've just beaten Osprey on TV in the build-up to this massive match with Danielson. And he went, wait, I'm not finished. <laughs> and he got really annoyed. And I started going, as he carried on with his pitch, I started going, ooh, as if I was going to give a thunder. Then he said he was going to knock me out. Oh. And but I kept doing it because Joe was, Joe was on Then Osprey funny. licks Claudio's hand. <laughs> <laughs> Bless him. Uh, he yeah. turned around. I think we gave it a yes in the end. He turned oh. the pitch around. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Keeping him happy. I was I was intimidated into saying yes though. That, that's what it sounds like to me. Mm. Why well, he delivered a shoot joke slam last week, didn't he? At work. Oh Christ! Yeah. Such a bully. For God. Such, such a small man. He fell in and the he, table and he landed himself. on him as well. Yeah. Just had insult <laughs> injury. Apparently, he got one of the drawing pins in his hand. I mean, you know, deserves it. Play play with feathers. Get your ass tickled. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mark Briscoe could promo ahead of the six man tag match against Alsa Black at Dynasty. He knows his opponents try to strike fear in the heart of their opponents, but Briscoe fears no evil. Did I really use opponents twice so close together? That's disappointing. Yeah. He, Copeland, and Kingston are violent men, and their opponents, the House of Black, should be very afraid. Fair enough. Love this promo. I fear no man. I fear no evil. <laughs> what evil! That? That's evil. what you've got. That's what you're oh, suffering man, with. I'm, I'm not with it today. I just like what he says at the end, be afraid, and then be afraid, be very afraid, and starts barking like a dog. Mm. Fantastic. Arr, arr, arr. He should have a match with speed, shouldn't he? You know? Yeah, I yeah. show. Just barking at the, each the other. Show. I show speed. Yep. I show speed, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, I show speed the YouTuber in the prime yeah. ball. You said speed. I thought the WWE thing. So oh, that's why I said, I've not the, watched the, any the, of I went yet. the Maybe show. Yeah. I realized. Have, have you watched any of the WWE speed? No. I'm interested to see what it's like. Yeah. I imagine it's good. I imagine it'll make. If I start to watch it and get into it, it'll make normal wrestling unbearable. I'll be like, this is dragging so. <laughs> much. I, I don't want to be like that. Yeah. Uh, Shivani interviews Thunder Rosa on the stage. Rosa thanks all the fans for watching AE Dub over the past five years, because that's what everyone's doing now on TV. Uh, she says she doesn't need any help to beat Tony Storm, especially addressing Diona Perosa. 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 <laughs> Rosa says she's done a lot of things on her own, graduating from college, becoming an American citizen, and helping people as a social worker. She won her college degree, which I thought was a nice turn of phrase. Yeah, in the Battle Royal. I had a fight for it, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> AEW is where the best wrestle, which is the new catchphrase at the minute. She was heartbroken when she had to vacate the title, now she has a chance to win it back, and she do it for her family and her people. And also, for every woman in the back, and if you're thinking they're like, maybe not all the women, considering all the people who were liking and retweeting stuff during a few years ago. Ooh. On Sunday, Tony will learn that she can't kill what is already dead. Rosa is going to drag her soul to hell. Now, where she also has a citizenship. <laughs> I like Thunder Rosa, right? But I, I didn't like this promo, and I saw people did like it, and saying like, oh, this is like her best promo. I thought that it tried, I don't know if it was her fault or the, if she was given points to hit, but it felt like it was about too many different things. She was like, I've done all this and I've dragged myself up from my bootstraps and all that, uh, up by my bootstraps and I've, I've done all this and this and this and I'm doing it for women and I'm doing it for the company and for my family and for the people. I was like, Jesus, like it's, it's just uh, too many themes, I think. It, yeah, I agree. Her talking about herself and what she's gone through and all that, I yeah. liked it because it's been so long since we've heard from her or she had a video package or anything it's like, yeah, who are you again? All right, yeah, cool. Thanks, we get refresher and some time to actually speak, which has obviously been a criticism and of addressed... women in, in A-Dub. I didn't like the Miss Universe answer she gave. I'm doing this for the puppies. I'm doing this for the cat, the kittens, wh whatever animals you like. The dead giraffes that Ross keeps on oh, bringing up on the God. podcast. Anything that's going to get us a cheer. But yeah, apart from yeah. that, they're, they're, thank you, up the giraffe. Um, <laughs> apart from that, uh, I liked it. Okay. I'm glad that they're doing stuff like Delivery this. Delivery was good. Like She was intense. Mm. I wonder... 
wonder if she's going to win. Hmm. I don't think she will. No, she Me stood either. tall, didn't she, on Dynamite, I suppose. I really like the story of the, the, the final two minutes or whatever where she's like wiping the face paint off saying she's already dead and whatnot and then taking Tony down to hell and all that sort of stuff. Tony, yeah, Tony down to hell. Yeah. Getting confused there. Liked all that, but as Jack said, yeah, it was a bit bit rambling in the middle, a bit rambling rabbit. Rambling yeah. Rosa. Mm. It was, I mean, it's the first time she's been allowed to speak that long in bloody ages, yeah. if ever, in the E-dub. So. I remember her having a similar one because it was staged the same. She was on the stage, but I can't remember when that was, if it was before injury or after. Mm. Maybe it was when she first came back. I don't know. Maybe it was always when she first became champion, maybe. I remember doing something like that after, yeah. after, after she, yeah. 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 After her feed with Britt, her on screen feed yeah. with Britt Break. Not, Not the off I'm just kidding. Though. I'm just joking, guys. I wonder if she was told, like, we need, like, a female version of the Copeland one. That was another thing. Yeah. They're trying to do two things here. One, hey, Thunder Rosa, why don't you get, get hyped for yourself? Absolutely. Then we wrestle here. Everyone loves each other. Everything's all right. The week after air and fight footage. Just have a scream. That's the final bit was fantastic. Yeah. I dragged yeah. you down to hell. Mm. In Wales, apparently, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Thunder Rosa from the valleys. <laughs> Backstage, Jonas says it's fine. Rosa doesn't want her help. She doesn't think Tony represents a true champion. But since she can't get a rematch against her, she'll have to take out the other Tony Storm instead. Mariah May. Yeah. She says she'll break Mariah's arm. Oh. Fair enough. Sets That's, up the match for yeah. Dynamite. Certainly does. And then we learn that the Young Bucks versus FTR will, for no reason given, be a ladder match. Where's the fourth meeting? Okay. It's a fifth, isn't it? Four, fifth. Oh, yeah, it's 2 2, isn't it? Oh, is it 3 2? Is it the sixth meeting? I thought it, Oh, I'm no way. Okay. Oh, I swear, like, this was the. Yeah, because FTR have beaten them more. Did FTR. Hang on, I've got. I had written down yeah. my pictures because I looked it up. The FTR are one in the lead, aren't they? With, yeah. With the win at Wembley. So is it 3 2? Is this the sixth meeting? That can't be right. Where is it 2 1? Yeah, me? it must be the fourth meet. It must be the fourth meet. I'm pretty sure it's the fourth meet. Okay, that would make sense. So I definitely cage matched it. The FTR won, then the Bucks beat them because they were like, if we lose, we'll never challenge for the tag mm-hmm. belt again. Wembley, FTR won. Mm-hmm. Must be the. Yeah, it must be the fourth. Yeah, fourth one. Fourth the, two on two tag team match. Yeah, and the Bucks are one behind as well. Okay. Yeah, but it's I've written there, it's unfair because that's their, that's their forte. Yeah, but it also fits the gimmick of them being the EVPs. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, it can work. We saw but there wasn't any like promos. There was a brief mention of Dynamite and Bucks go, oh, that, that, that won't be a problem for us. That thankfully it's that, and it's like, oh, was that supposed to be you doing that in character? Like, oh no, it's this. Maybe I FTR, didn't get that from that. Maybe FTR don't want to get pinned by. Them. <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, no, no they're not House of Black. No, yeah, true. This maybe, is uh, sorry. Maybe it's just someone can topple FTR from a ladder. Some someone interfering in the match. Ooh, like who? Jungle Boy. Oh, you think so? I think Ross what also. What do you mean, is, think yeah, so? It's yeah, the yeah. obvious thing that happened, is it not? We talked about this on, <laughs> on our pitches yesterday. We're both like, yep, Jungle Boy. I think all three of us had mentioned some form of Jungle Boy. Uh, I'd already forgotten about him. I wasn't the. Gen- no, no, yeah, I'm that, talking that, about what happened on there. That was well. Daniel Garcia. He did well on that New Japan show in Chicago. Daniel in the Garcia? Because I like Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> he could push them over, they're like, no, and then just dance. <laughs> do his little Garcia dance. Jungle Boy did well in that Chicago New Japan yeah, show. Recently. I'm happy for him. Oh, he yeah. did better than Riddle then. I only saw the clip of him immediately bit. getting up after his uh, loss. No, like Austin Aries. And he's not on the posters anymore. Oh, God. Why oh. would you do that? Nah, I felt really good about myself after that. <laughs> <laughs> I had Jack Perry come back after that. Strike while the iron's hot. Yeah, he the did thing, well. thing to do. Yeah. yeah. And there's been a couple of references made by the Bucks to him on TV, so. Oh, uh, yeah. Going to be up. What are you so downtrodden for? Because it's going to mean even more CM Punk, CM Punk. Let's view the guy who's not on TV. Not if he does it. Let's focus on this guy who's not on TV. Pivots to. I think he did it because he was in. No, no, no. The crowd are going to be chanting. Yeah, they will. It's going to be non stop CM Punk, which is something that AEW have done to themselves. That's not Jack Perry's fault, is it, as well? That's quite a shame for him because it's not. He didn't decide to air the footage. That that bit of it's not his fault, absolutely. Oh. No, I think he's. My word. As much in the wrong as Punk is, absolutely. Um, I think. Oh, I'm just getting. Oh, into, no, 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 I'm just getting into deep anyway, conspiracy whatever. theories. Here. I was, I was going to be like, I think he was a bit of a stooge for the young bucks, but wasn't one of Punk's major antagonists. And that. <laughs> I know, I, I would do well, he again. wanted to harm a rental car and give a bad name to all wrestlers. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's what CM Punk said. I can just picture. I know, right? I, it probably, it probably, it probably didn't happen, but I can just see the bucks sidling up to him before all in and being like, "You should say this on camera. It'd be yeah. really, it'd really wind him up." Like worm tongue lowerings. We'll yeah. have your back if he punches you. We'll, we'll. You can take punk. Look, <laughs> you saw him in UFC. He's rubbish. <laughs> Go for a takedown. He won't know what to do. Oh, did you see? Was it Jay Uso super kicking his child? Yeah. Because <laughs> the kid, well, was, and we're kid was getting dragged into a lake. Yeah. Yes. No, <laughs> no, it was just in one of those WrestleMania vlogs they've been putting up. 
And there's kids, kids like walking down the ramp and Jay's just ripping him. <laughs> he's just like, what are you doing? Super kick. <laughs> and he says it like that and lightly super kicks it. Bless. Yeah. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> he does the next laugh. Oh, oh, he didn't shoot. No, it's not a real... No. Oh, that's a relief. Though. Thank you. <laughs> but his kid sort of lightly sells it as well. He goes like, What's the craziest thing that's been brought up in this week's podcast? It's going to be the dead giraffe hitting kids. That's only Ray Mysterio does that. Choose oh, yeah. one day. <laughs> I beat my kids. Oh, I can't Billy, wait to beat Billy my kids. Billy Gunn as well. Billy Gunn, we'll find out later on. That was a disturbing promo. Oh. <laughs> I've been kicking their ass since they were little children. <laughs> oh, nice one, Billy. Great baby face. Yeah, keep it like. <laughs> and then, yes, the lovely main event. Ah, yes, which we've talked about now. Yeah, yes, we, because I wrote that. Oh, there we go. You're like Tarantino. Sorry, man. Oh, that's good. Any other thoughts on it? Like, uh, I don't even think we talked. You mentioned it. We didn't talk about it, though. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 20, 25 Sorry. minutes Sorry. 44 it went. I was a big boy. Was. Uh, share out the match, turn and heel on yeah, Kyle, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which I'm sure you were very happy about. <laughs> um, but it was, I don't know what, it was just a massive match, and b- just both teams were doing lots of moves to each other. There wasn't really much of a story to it. I thought it was just like, who's the best team? Do all the moves, and we'll see who wins at the end. Yeah, that's all tag team. Yeah. Well said, and I'm glad they did these promos for Horn going. No, no, we just want to suffer you up. We beat you. We don't care if we beat you. But yeah, the BCC. That was like, the story. I've yeah, just lied. What, yeah, yeah, because they're <laughs> fantastic. Because like the BCC, the, the, that they got that much pride about their work. Going, you think you're gonna hurt us? What? Oh, okay. What happened with Carl Fletcher in the match? He tried to lift oh, it up outside. for her. Oh, right. I'm going to power, dro- a power bomb. I was the thinking thing. And then the, the mat went, lump. I was thinking the mat And then it, 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 the comedic portion of this was so... If they scripted this, it wouldn't have been as funny. Because then Powerhouse Hobbs goes outside, holds it, but then walks off and it flops uh, back yeah. and hit onto him. So Carl goes, hey! And then <laughs> so he goes, whatever, I won't even do it. And then Brian counted to a backdrop anyway. I, I thought you meant the mat is in the canvas. So I was trying to think, did he trip on the canvas or something? But no, that mm-hmm. makes a lot more sense now. But yeah. Yeah, as you said, lots of moves, lots of work, and, and I just unexpectedly going hard. Yeah. 25 yeah, whole minutes. Yeah. Cause, and then again, you go, okay, that's the thing, isn't it? That's why the Brian Osprey feud is nice on the microphone. We'll not mention Triple H. Uh, Brian goes, I'm better than ye. And Osprey goes, no, but I can go harder than ye. It's like, well, we've got two different MOs there, haven't we, pal? Yeah. I hope if there's any bollocks at the show in that match, it comes after the match. Mm. I just want Osprey and nice and just have a, a good match. Yeah. Yeah. There was two yeah. highlights in this match, though. Do you remember Hobbs' bump over the barricade after a Claudio uppercut? God, where his body just goes rigid. And he just, like, teeters like that. Mm. Fantastic. And then what was the other one? I forgot what the other one was. Oh, I'm not with it today. There was a lot of moves. Yeah. Oh, was, yeah. was it your move of the week? No, it wasn't. That's all right, then. This week, that is an NXT. Oh, yes. Oh, no, that was on Dynamite, man. What am I thinking? Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Well, maybe, maybe right. it was on Battle of the Belts. It, no. I just said I'm just built attention. I'm sorry, <laughs> I know I've I've got to do so much. <laughs> Shimada tells Hook he'll have his back against Shane Taylor, but Hook says he's got this on his own. Hook wins with the red rum. Do you prefer this to <laughs> Hook versus uh Lee? Um yeah. Yeah, I think I did as well. Yeah. Um yeah. you know why? Because Hook's getting better. Like you said, they're not asking him to do too much, uh, what he's capable of. Tony Shivani's commentary on this. You'd, you'd think it was the most important match of Hook's life. That's how it should be. To- Tony on, was... Tony. Tony was just like, my God, he could do it! Yeah! Like, no, no, Hook's a former champion, mate. I appreciate the hell out of what uh, he was doing here, because, oh, my God. Do you think Tony's trying to make up for everyone saying that he hates being oh, an AW? bless him. I know. He's like, I'm acting. I'm supposed to look like this, because the bad guys have said something. It's like, oh, Yeah, I don't believe him. <laughs> you don't believe him? Nah. Uh, I think he was like, why are we doing this? <laughs> I think it was a cover of me as well. You think so? Yeah. Oh, he d- we all see him when he reacts towards the heels, and he doesn't react like that. Maybe it's just fantastic. It probably was. Mm. Maybe. I'll take Tony Schiavone. He's an upstanding citizen for his word. Yeah. Um, I like the boxing theme in this match, though, because mm. Shane Taylor is an accomplished boxer, apparently, who teams with a boxer, and then Hook was boxing him. So boxing ah. was the theme of the day. Um, I just Shane Taylor just looks the dog's bollocks every time he wrestles. I like he's be getting more on dynamite as well, and just rather than just being a collider, a collision cowboy. Yeah. Um, I just thought it was simple with Hook taking a massive beating, then refusing to quit, and then fighting back, and then Shane's just trash talking him. He just he is fantastic. I didn't realize how good he was until two, three weeks ago. Mm. I'm glad they're using him more. Likewise. Mm. Yes, the same for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage, Rocky Romero is asked what's going on with best friends. He says he has to focus on his match with Roddy Strong tonight. Kyle Riley comes along and wishes Rocky good luck. Yeah, bad journalism there. 
The man's trying to prepare for a title eliminator match, and you're asking him about other wrestlers. Taking his eyes off the prize, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're right, because Roddy beat Romero in their title eliminator match. You mean Rocky Romero? Yeah, that's right. Azuka! What do, yeah, what does Azuka mean, I wonder? Because that's his Twitter handle as well. Someone told me on Twitch, and I've already forgotten. Oh, okay. I can't, loved... I, haven't come, I can't call him Asuka. He's like, no, that's not <laughs> <laughs> No, that's someone else. I've never seen him shake his tits so much, though. Oh, he's, he's done time in Mexico. Mm. Not like that. Just like, <laughs> Excuse me. Even in the proper Cuban Pete. Yeah, the Cuban Pete, what does that mean? Yeah. They yeah, call me Cuban Pete. Oh. I'm the king of the rumba beat. Well, What's that I'm going to shake my right? rackets to go cheek, cheeky boom, cheek, cheeky boom. What's that from? It's an old song, but it's no, I know it from The Mask with Jim Carrey. Ah, ah. Iranu. He distracts, he's like, the police are there, and he decides to sing this song. Mm. And it works because it's The Mask, and it's mint. I wonder how Jim's doing. Uh, I'd rather not know. I'm happy that way. Uh, he went a bit, yeah. yeah anyway. He's just retired from Hollywood. It's all fine. And, and, and sanity. I like the line from Daddy Magic on commentary when he says, you've got to fight the elements when you're fighting the UK, uh, the Undisputed Kingdom. That is true, though, yeah, yeah. And uh, you've got to have, you're going to have to have their goons as well, he says, <laughs> which I thought was very yeah, timely. Their goons. Ah. Their goons. Gooning. The match was fine. I thought the highlights were a nice backbreaker on the barricade by Roddy, which made Mike Bennett turn into Thea Hale on cocaine for some reason in his celebration. So just Thea Hale. It was Hale. fantastic. Um, there was a nice sliced bread from Rocky up the, up the uh, ropes, and there was a nice one in the middle of the ring as well. And just the finish was badass. Bad ass. Because he's just a big old bloody knee when he's don't flying mean, off the top rope. Don't you mean bad back? Bad back, bad face, bad everything. I wonder if, I'm assuming, because Roddy's... Considered to be like a really good wrestler, isn't he? And, and people have liked him for years and stuff. And He's I mean, considered I'm, to be I mean, good. no, I mean other wrestlers. Like you, you never hear anyone complain about Roddy Strong in the ring and all that sort of stuff. Which makes me think, how does he? Because if I was a wrestler, I would hate to wrestle Roddy Strong just because his move set looks so painful. This because he's the king of the backbreaker and all that. Um, so how does he? I was about to ask a question like a fundamental wrestling question. How does it not hurt? Even though it does probably. But how does it not really, really hurt? And you hear people go, I hate wrestling Roddy. Because he's a professional. Yeah, he's very good, I suppose. Yeah. 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 But I'm glad the, I'm, uh, the matches that we're getting with Roddy, I'm glad we're getting them because, yeah, you get reminded how good he is. The oh, Messiah God. of the Backbreaker, they called him. The Messiah of the Backbreaker. Yeah, he's considered to be good when he's allowed to be. It's a shame he's part of the, the UK. I know, man. The miserable little stable. Maybe. <laughs> well, you're right. You don't have to battle the elements because the bloody Keyside flooded the other week. <laughs> it did, huh? Yeah. Well, these flash floods we're very good at right now. I thought we'd entered, we were starting to get warmer weather, and now it's just gone cold and rainy. No, again. but for like an hour, we'll get a month's worth of rain. I know. And it'll go back to being sunny again. Hail well, the other day. It's, crazy it's, the, it's the government, lads. Um, yeah, it is, yeah. People need to realize this is why we <laughs> like complaining in this country, because we like saying stuff, because we spend our entire time going, E, it's either too hot or too cold in creative different ways. Yeah. Mm. More interesting than that, though, is the fact we did the turn. <laughs> 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 oh yeah and then you know the they've, been, they've been teasing for weeks with this sort of triple agent but uh, yeah but never mind that it rained the other day Ross <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised it, I'm not am I surprised I am a little bit surprised but that, soon. yeah just mm. before the pay-per-view I thought it would have been done at the pay-per-view but well now they're done, having, yeah. now they're having a match ah, yeah. see ya yeah bye because I think Kyle now will win Care. cool Care. I think Roddy might win the first one oh, I don't know now hmm well, Carl hasn't got any bloody friends apart from Romero. Romero. Not really count. Romero. Ah. It's not really friends, are they I've like? Kick the computer, is it all right? Is everything right. still on? Oh, don't do that. Yeah, he's got no friends. <laughs> <laughs> and Von Wagner, of course. Yeah. Oh, no, he turned on him. He, oh, God. He Matthew did. Found no, no, they really, both thought Matthew that found that really funny because Von Wagner couldn't even sneak attack he someone. He couldn't even sneak attack the <laughs> dude. Won the I was like, yeah, I know it's coming. <laughs> oh, I've never seen it before in wrestling. Yeah. Loved it. But then they continue that story by having the sneak attack on whoever it was in the locker room that time by shouting sneak attack. Do you remember? Yes. When Robert Stone and come attack somebody in the locker room, I can't remember. What it was, yes, no? they did the Bash Brothers sneak tactic. attack. Yeah. Sneak attack. As the... Sneak attack. In a Maxage interview, Serena Deeb says she's undefeated since her return, and her next target is Yuka Sakazaki. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. She's at number three in the rankings. She says not sweating, not getting a title match. Ma ma ma. That's what she said, and she's got an invitation out there to Deeb's Dojo. I don't know, I keep saying words weird. <laughs> Deeb's Dojo. Um, I think sh- that promo is a-, a lot better than what I've seen from her in the past. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Good on her. I think there'll be a clash of styles, won't it? Fast, excited Yuka, <laughs> and technical, angry Serena. That's my punditry. Yeah. There we go. Looking forward to it. Mm. 
Athena beats Red Velvet to retain the Ring of Honor Women's World Championship. The champion and Billy Starks attack Red Velvet after the match, but Queen Aminita runs out and makes a save. Aminata. Says Aminita. Aminata. A M I N A. Aminata. But the Queen runs out and makes a save. Um, she's really she, good. She does really. a wing from the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> that match with the fake injury from Billy Starks, the, the story of that match up to that point was like, for me, watching it was like, Jesus, Queen Aminata is really good. Because we've seen her have good matches in AW, but she had more time on this pay-per-view. And uh, now I just want to see her be like a regular on the roster. And mm. she's class. She was that good in the run at the end that I thought Athena was really hurt in the way that she was selling because she was like, ah! And then someone came over and was like, are you okay? And she was just like, ah! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. it was very convincing to sell in all just really good hard wrestling. Garcia did one of them cells on Dynamite where I thought he was genuinely hurt as well. Because he got pinned, but he was all like, yeah. he went into like the fence in response. And you saw like, I think Okada was like, oh no, he's all right. It's like, Jesus. <laughs> uh, as for they're the, good them, the wrestlers. Yeah, they're good, oh, these wrestlers, they're very good, aren't they? But th these two are very good as well. It was just a big old dick swinging contest this match. Anything you can do, I can do better. Hey, me hey, who better than you? Do you know the name of uh, of Athena's non WWE finisher? Not the Eclipse, the O face, the O right. face, which I think it was called before she went to WWE as well. But right. that's a naughty name, is it? The orgasm face. Oh, the O, oh, oh mm. that kind of the move's so good it makes you, you know. It's not just ow. No, it's the O face. <laughs> the ow face. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> makes you go ow. <laughs> she stunned me off the top. It's You're right, move. it's disgusting hearing those moves. So yeah. I've seen his uh, five-knuckle shuffle. <laughs> oh, it means gooning, yes, of course. Fantastic. Yes. Lovely shoot slam on the apron from Athena. That's that was bad now. Point. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said it there. Uh, um, uh, then it just, the bit where they started slapping each other, I was thinking about calling the police, even though I wasn't watching the show live, because it was very reminiscent of that there match that we all know. Uh, Red Velvet does a shoot hurricane run a reverse, reversal after a few wastelands and roll-throughs from Athena, which are... I don't think she calls them that. The Wasteland. Up the Wade Barrett all the same. Yeah. Um, not sure what the Hurricane Rana thing was from Red Velvet off the ropes where she was sort of around the midriff of uh, Athena, but did it, but it looked great anyway. And there was a very impressive one-arm catch, wabadoo, big slam on the floor from Athena, followed by some hair throws. Yeah. Glad very see, good match. That was beautiful, Ross. Thank glad you. Glad to see Red Velvet back. Uh, you know, she's been probably, probably on Rampage. Again. Or right in her mama's kitchen. Yeah, yeah. That's where she's built from. Mm -hmm. Straight from your mama's kitchen. What you doing there? Red velvet, making oh, cakes. I I oh, okay. What's that? It feels like we've been... I'm so glad we've reached the end of Collision and Battle of the Bells because it feels like that took so long. <laughs> and I'm gagging for a piss, me. Oh. Really am. Well, I'd like to say, it may have been not the most exciting thing ever, but I'm glad it happened just for your description of that match, Ross. Thank you. Why? It was beautiful. There Cheers, was, Matthew. There was also talk that none of the three, obviously none of the three belts at Battle of the Belts were AEW belts. Well, it was FDR, FT, Title Eliminator, FTW, and then the Ring of Honor. Title Eliminator, Ring of Honor, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Let's let Ross, Ross needs to go away. to the toilet. You know, I think it's fine having Athena in the main event, because I had it in my pictures, just because of that, and because of something Athena put on Twitter, that maybe she could get involved in the mercedes Monet saga. Yeah, but yeah. after Dynamite, that makes no sense anymore. <laughs> Bastards. No, but it's... That's it, analysis. That is. Go for a piss. No, what were you going to say? No. It wasn't just... I've the, got a bladder of steel. You can't say what were you going to say. Like, <laughs> Let's do raw. Come on. No. <laughs> I said steel, not Look at Joel sponge. Take the ah, Monday Night Raw, which we will be doing in order because Matthew knows the page is now. Ooh, isn't he good? <laughs> Rhea Ripley opens the show with her arm in a sling and everyone's heart also in a sling yeah. and a cast and a grave. She says that after being attacked by Liv Morgan last week, she's injured and has been forced to vacate the Women's World Championship. She lays the belt on the canvas and rants about Liv, calling her a coward. She issues a warning to whoever the next champion is and says when she finds Liv, they'll have to lock her up in Montreal jail. Uh, it's actually Bordeaux prison, according to Google. Yes. Liv comes out for security to prevent the two from fighting. Ripley headbutts a security guard in frustration, but that's just how Aussies say hello. Uh, bloody hell. Yeah. They gave the title. Yeah. And I look online, no one's exactly sure when it happened, right, the injury. So I think it's when she got shoved into a wall or something, haven't they? Yeah, so there was a the backstage brawl last week and she sort of gets like arm first into a wall and just must have oh, I see. something must have gone. Innocuously oh. so. Um because it is obviously a massive shame. Obviously, people are saying, well, Roman was missing for months on end and he didn't have to vacate his. And we've just had Rollins do a bloody thing where he was injured and didn't have to vacate his. 
it must be a big injury. That's what I'm putting it down to. Right. Yeah. So hopefully she's all right. It'll be interesting if people start timing it and go how long it is when she she's off after yeah. they get when she returns because if it's long if it's short Roman Reigns had a title defense like uh, in, uh, break in between them it's going to be like oh. we but shot yeah. a backstage brawl once in WCPW between Gabe Kidd and Bad Bones and there was they were like pushing and shoving each other and stuff and then Bad Bones went like wait wait stop 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 and we were all like uh oh and then he is the back of his head had hit a nail on the wall and he was just a little trickle of blood down the back of his head he was. Because he's hard as balls, he was like, "Oh no!" Gabe was like, "Oh man, I'm sorry," and he was like, "Oh, it's fine, it's all right." But it could have gone so, it could have gone so badly. Jesus. Right. So this sort of stuff, yeah, just that can't happen. Yeah. yeah, I like what they've done with it though, because Turn and Live, because Live was getting booze anyway. I think off the back of you know depriving the world from the mother, um, but the way she came out just laughing was great, Kavorka. Yeah, she had that like, hee 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 hee. Yeah. Like, oh, you. I'm really. And the fact she's only little as well really helps. Yeah, no, no, it does. <laughs> I don't I'm, mean, I'm, look, I'm a short king as well, but. I'm good about. <laughs> I'm good about Rhea, but like, I do like the new he'll live. I think it's a good way to go to just embrace it and be yeah. like, yeah, yeah. Even funnier is people were immediately going, wait, hang on. And Liv went on Twitter as well. It's like, oh, you're a coward, Liv. Well, if only you attack me from the front. She's like, hang on, here's you attacking me and injuring me <laughs> months ago. Yeah. Sucker punching. How dare you? She the says it later, doesn't she? The Hallmark. nerve of you. Hallmark of Triple H's booking. Mm, remembering everything's things. Tr- everything's true from their perspective. Yes. No, if it was Triple H's booking, oh, right, she yeah. would have come out in a suit with the arm and a break. <laughs> I thought that was the best look for Triple H ever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but I had a look on Rhea's face when she's speaking about coming back for blood. I know the, I know the in the spirit of Rod Stewart again from South Park, pooped my pants. <laughs> 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 Terrifying. Did a Paul Heyman. Yeah, she was really Did a Paul scary. Heyman. What yeah. does that mean? He shot everywhere on SmackDown. Yeah, oh, he sorry. Pay attention it's to the a, podcast. It's a callback. In sorry. the trainers, in the trainers room with Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Me and Jack saw it. What version yeah, were you watching? I don't know. It's my bootleg version. <laughs> um, and again, backstage. Which, oh yeah, uh, Rhea hugs the rest of Judgment Day. Priest says when Rhea comes back, they all know she's going to make Liv pay and be even more destructive than before. Ripley tells them to keep JD on top and walks off. For an evil faction of heels, it was all very sweet, and I love their interaction. So I'm saying, love you, mommy. And Rhea going, yeah, I know. Oh, so, <laughs> so Star Wars. Original Star Wars. Yes. The, a New Hope. That's right. That's, that's, so, I know. I, <laughs> it shouldn't be. I mean, like, come they're, on. They're about to fly off and attack the Death Star or whatever. Right. Wait, are no, they? Not, no, because no, Han doesn't Empire do that at first. Back. Oh, it's Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. And Leia goes, I love you. And Han sort of goes, I know. Oh. Yeah, Han's making putting carbonite and all this because he's, you know, he's got a bounty in his head because of yeah, Jabba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Got the moves like Jabba. Jabba. I've mistaken it for the first one when they're all getting ready to go off and Han doesn't go with them. Yeah. But then he comes along later on and goes, yeah. yee <laughs> He does. He shouts, yee-hoo. yee <laughs> He does. He shouts, yee <laughs> When does he when, shout, yee When, obviously, Luke's in trouble. Yeah. He's the last remaining X-Wing who hasn't had oh, to yeah. pull off or whatever. There's TIE fighters on yeah. him and Darth Vader's there. And then it's like, who's going to get three on one? And then the Millennium Falcon, obviously, oh. is the iconic. And he shoots the... Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. And Darth Vader spins off. And then Han goes, yee-hoo, down the radio to Luke, doesn't he? Guys, remember that in Star Wars? You've got me there, mate. He you does, he there. goes, yee-hoo. Like a Geordie in a room full of strangers. I'm so gonna... <laughs> Oh, the internet's not good in here. He goes, yee-hoo. <laughs> <laughs> While Jack's searching that, I like the light, because it looks like she's properly leaving television, because the way she was like, yeah. look after this one while pointing the Dom. Oh. I guess, oh, yeah. yeah, I guess she is like properly taking a break, which I guess makes sense if she can't get physical because she obviously is the leader of the JD. She overshadows most of what they do because she is that popular. So having to go away for a bit, probably the right call. Yeah. And I thought, poor Dom. It's like his mommy's gone. He's got to have his puppies oh. and this big polyamorous thing they got going on. <laughs> 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 okay, Jack. Yeah, yeah, you win this one. <laughs> Do you think Liv's winning the title? Maybe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I wanted to. I mean, yeah. yeah. So I have the fight. For the the, the fight again. I did this on the news on Monday. I keep calling wrestling matches fights. <laughs> having the fight for the vacant title oh, next week man. on Raw. They are uh, in a way. One of the first WCPW shows I said to a wrestler backstage, I was like, "Who are you fighting tonight?" And he went fighting. I was like, "No, oh, <laughs> no, I'm a bloody Mark." <laughs> I'm a Marcel Desai. I used to call uh, football games matches. No, no, that's right. That's right, yeah. Did you do the other I one? I picked all that, man. That was another games. I go, no, that's right. matches. American sports oh. is the game. <laughs> Screw you, Dad. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I feel upset now. I don't read the rest of the ball. Maybe he's doing like an old school one. Yeah, maybe. On right. the terraces. Seamus returns, which means it's fight night. 
uh, even has his old theme music. Yes, Too right. Take that, Def Rebel. That was a <laughs> yes. Thank they, God. They had the CFO dollar sign. Sorry, CFO money intro. The dun dun dun. You know what? And then they had the old. I guess it was a Jimmy J number, was it? Maybe, yeah. That far back. God, it might be. Let yeah. me have a look. Have who a who did too many limes? Yeah. He's in shorts. He's big. He's 46. Yeah. He's all Japan's very own Seamus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the reaction to his body's been a bit weird. Oh, yeah. He, he's, he came out as well after the fact, saying I know he had to retire because of my neck. Right. We all know he's been out with his neck, which means he won't have been able to move for as, as much as he used to. Yeah. And it's not even as if he's coming back looking like me. He's coming back looking Stop like you. a really hard man. Yeah. I think the less defined look made him look harder. Yeah, like, like he does go down right. the pub and on brawl. Anderson. Yeah, strategically yeah. plays muscle and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, we've got this weird uh, male body period where you have to look to find the ripped and basically water dehydrated, and if not, you're a fat bastard. Yeah. Which is like that, that's not how it works. And, and also, before his injury, Seamus looked ridiculous, like in yeah. ridiculous shape. So anything slightly less than that was going to be a step, quote unquote, step down. Exactly. Like, it's stupid. It's called too many lies, isn't it? I've just sat there giving <laughs> too many oh, lies. Oh, bless you, mate. Yeah, it's called lobster head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to put that in. WRE Seamus. We'll get there eventually. Who the hell wrote it? No, I want to hear the mic. Written in my face is called. Uh, tuned by Jim Johnson and Sean Genes. Genes. So it's Genes, Jim. the it's Jim. best a man can get. <laughs> <laughs> Joel. Oh, Joel, Joel jumped out his seat and went, "Yes, Matthew." Saying it's my favorite song at the minute. Tom Grennan, Glennon, Grennan. Glenn Grennan, Grennan, I think. I was yeah. singing it on the office Joe yesterday. It's great. And I had a show to Andrew, yeah. Good. You're looking sharp. You've come so far. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're, you like the Northern Boys, obviously. Absolutely. Do you know Pete and Baz? They are Northern Boys yeah. affiliated rappers, granddads. Yeah, they're rubbish. Oh. So, because they're not as funny as... Well, they're not doing it ironically. They're like, I'm a proper cockney geezer. Yeah. Well, two... I, I'm really old, so my knees hurt. You two know. younger lads have come out with a video that's shot very similarly to those videos. Oh, yeah. And the, one of them's got a deeper voice and one of them's got a higher voice. And everyone's been going, this is like finding out The Wizard of Oz isn't real. Because they are the <laughs> ones clearly behind Pete and Baz who are like the real rappers. Oh. They rap so It's like similar. Millie Vanilli for a new generation. Yeah, it is. It's a <laughs> Millie Vanilli situation. Great song, though. I liked it. Girl, you're no witch. Girl, you're no witch. <laughs> Tell you what, though. It was an interesting opponent for Seamus, Ivar. Because obviously Ivar's got the big feud with Obafemi coming up, so if he can't deal with Seamus, how the hell's he going to deal with Obafemi? Yeah, that's true. Actually. How the uh, hell? But Seamus is all the way up here. Can anybody... Like... Obafemi's up there. Can anybody, oh, oh, right. <laughs> can anybody deal with Obafemi? Where, where's no. he going to stop? And Seamus was good in the match as well, like the white noise off the ropes. Oh, God, yeah. The power slam yeah. after a little bit of tilt-a-whirl action. Yeah. Um, Ivar got his little licks in as well with a Booker T spin kick and Baron Corbin fallen fridge. <laughs> um, and the knee cap is a nice new... I, I know he did it a knee before, but I don't think he took the knee pad down, did he, Seamus? Yeah, he made it clear. Like, this one's the knee, the next one's the broke kick. Yeah. I like it as a one-two mm. finishing sequence. The knee cap. Mm. You'd call it the night cap, wouldn't you, with Seamus, like in the pints and whatnot? Oh, the lovely Irish night cap. Uh, before I go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I what, do, to, what do you do, Seamus? <laughs> I love to go into the fridge. Oh, yeah? Get my finest, bi oh, what was that? Tiff my finest bar of Tiffin Dairy Milk chocolate. Oh, yes. And that break off a me piece. Last week. Put it in a little glass of Jameson whiskey <laughs> and see it off in one fresher. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Po podcast back on track. There we go. Uh, yeah, the fact that he showed up in the first, first movie he did was a super white noise. He's like, yeah, I'm back. Yeah. yeah. But I'm all right with Ivar doing this because Ivar is a super worker. They're definitely keeping him and maybe getting rid of the rest of the Vikings. Mm. Yeah, where well, is Valerie Haller? Exactly. No that's, one no one is saying that. I was going to say, that's the first time anyone's ever asked that question. I really like Pat's analysis, because obviously after the match is over, Seamus goes over to the announce table and just goes, Way! Yes, he's celebrated. All these, he's a sweaty mess on the lads yeah. in their suits and whatnot. Spills Pat's drink, and yes, then Pat does a nice big uh, analysis of that happening, including the quote there, Sava no bien, Frenchie. I'm getting choked out by an Irishman. Le Merde. And if you know what that means, it's very I naughty. He did say Le Merde, didn't he? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Non, 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 non. Wee, 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 wee. Oh, no, it's the opposite of wee, 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 wee. No, 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 no. Oh, you, you, you bilingual get. Piss. Uh, happy I to see... buy it many things. <laughs> Lingual is not one of them. <laughs> For years, people like, Triple H is by. He said it on King the Ring. Oh, God, he did, yes. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were just saying that. I was like, oh, Ross. Oh, when you heard that somebody says it, he's clearly laughing it off. 
Uh, yeah, happy to see Seamus back after faking an injury to get out of the brawling brute. <laughs> You dick. No, I wouldn't, Why? Want to, I wouldn't want to hang around a loose cannon like Reg either. Uh, exactly. What's he going to do? <laughs> more on him later, sadly. Next, we get a Morecambe and Wise sketch. Oh, God, if only. <laughs> Triple H makes his entrance and is joined by Adam Pearce in the ring. They talk about the recent new era, something which extends to the tag team division. They bring out the awesome truth, and Triple H congratulates them on winning possibly the biggest tag match in history. Okay. He congratulates Truth on finally having his WrestleMania moment before unveiling a new set of belts. The world tag team titles. They get a big pop. They do. Truth thinks the unveiling is a magic trick, but doesn't think <laughs> it was doesn't really... trust magicians ever since little Jimmy turned invisible. Miz says Triple H has given them a very important responsibility, but Truth doesn't see Triple H anywhere. Just a masso champa. Miz explains things in French to pop the crowd. Yeah, like pop. And his wife's French. Well, That's right. Speak I, French, yeah. I thought she would get a mention here, but apparently not. And finally, Truth understands. Triple H presents them with the new belts and leaves. Pia says they're going to determine a new pair of number one contenders right here, right now. If I was Pierce, I'd be really cross with Triple H because he did that whole line at the end where he's like, you're on your own, Adam, and walks out. And I'm like, that's Adam's gimmick. He's the one who needs a drink. Hmm. And Triple H was stealing that, stealing his thunder a bit. That's not like him. <laughs> <laughs> this was, I don't know why I've got, Michael Barrymore's got his kind of music. <laughs> this was my kind of wrestling. <laughs> Because this was our truth reaction. Casual Barrymore reference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on. 2024. <laughs> the little like, whoa, whoa, wow, wow. That was really funny, I thought. Okay. From our truth. I like the fact he thought it was a rabbit trick. A rabbit trick? <laughs> End my life. No, a I magic know what you mean. Yeah. 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 Magicians yeah. use rabbits and their rabbit tricks. A rabbit pulled out of a hat. He's seen a, a lady cut in half, but she walked away. He just made titles appear out of thin oxygen. Mm. Not thin air, thin oxygen. Um, and just the build-up to I see right through you, Tommaso Ciampa, the delivery was on point. Mm. The title belt, so that's the most important thing. Of uh, course. Richard Yannick Tubman, with some analysis on Tuesday morning in the office, apparently saying, well, not apparently, I think, was it you, Sasha, who told us, or Owen? Uh, must Owen have must have spilled these beans saying, they've upgraded a penny-looking thing for a pound-looking thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, they have a bit, haven't they? Yeah. Richard's analysis there for you. Yeah. Delivered in the style of Richard. Apparently the bit on Ross, the... you could do audio books about amazing <laughs> accents you bust out on one show. On the video of Pachiti going through the table from the other week, the bit apparently... That the, one shot of Richard. The bit that popped the boys back here, apparently, when they were watching it back. Slow motion reaction shots of all the editors watching on. Yeah. Tubman, nothing. Brilliant. He's Just very stoic. Straight faced, yeah, it's great. He's seen some things. He has. Yeah, he has. He cycled around Japan. Gary's van. Oh, yeah, got big Gary. He went around Japan. He rode across. We should have mentioned that in the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Fuji. Yeah. You know who's going to Japan soon? Pierce. Pierce. Yeah. There's Pierce another Pierce oh, in Japan. Is, does, can he vlog? I've asked, yeah, I've said he should. Pierce He's only going for two weeks. So. <laughs> Irish chocolate. Because <laughs> he's, he's from Ireland. <laughs> That'd be it. Because, oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Because he's from Ireland. <laughs> Sorry, Pierce. He doesn't listen to us. <laughs> we shouldn't. He will in a few weeks' time when if, he's getting talked about. If he needs to get through the flight. It's a long flight. Lads, how come my bit in the podcast is longer than NXT? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. The... How long is he going for? Just two weeks. Oh, oh yeah, so... boy. You're supposed to live there, aren't you? God, coward. <laughs> I like how he's got a trip, trip of a lifetime for two weeks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll have a good time. Back up. Isn't he the one who you... A bit of Japanese there. That's it. Thank Isn't you. he the one who you used to go to to ask for the Japanese pronunciations? Yeah, he knows mm. everything about Japanese wrestling. Everything. So he'll have a good time. No, we'll find right. out, he's we? not just going over for the rest of it. Like, I think he's just going to experience Japan as well. He'll be at home over there. Yeah. At peace with Pierce in Japan. <laughs> 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 it's not a rock intro. It's like <laughs> lovely pipes. And... <laughs> Irish Japanese. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, 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 the oh, yeah, belts the, are good the on the tie belts look like uh, deep pan pizza yeah great I saw I think that's a bit harsh but I can see where people are coming from they are very round aren't they yeah very round they've got a big pop live yeah, yeah. The well, only, new belts always do don't they the crowd only popped louder in this segment for French being spoken which the Montreal crowd go Absolutely. wild they love it when, I thought it was just because it was Sammy who did it last year but no they love anyone speaking oh, anytime French anytime there yeah um, they absolutely bloody love it don't they Parley vous français yeah they do uh what was I going to say? I thought they looked all right, the belts. I, I think see some right. people going, ah, oh, change bad, but I'm like, oh, I'm alright. I'm middling on them. They're they look so expensive. Much, they're so much better than what they're replacing, which is yeah, the most important it. thing. I wonder yeah. what the SmackDown ones are going to look like. You know what I would have done, though? What would you have done? Get those NXT UK tag team titles and repurpose them. Because they are... Oh! Yeah, they were nice. 
I'll have to save that for NXT. I'll have to save that for NXT. Oh, in Montreal also. <laughs> save it for NXT Europe when that comes along. Yeah, any or day NXT, now. NXT Japan. Uh, NXT oh, Pierce can take it. Yeah. Uh, do you yeah. think we should have spelled Rossi Ogawa in his new promotion? Marigold. Which is uh, conveniently mentioned in the likes of Kyrie Sane. Who else was there? Julie, obviously. Eosky. Sure. Eosky. Sky. I think they've they've done a deal because Rossi was sat in the front row at Stand and Deliver with Willie Riggs, wasn't he? Mm. I think they've done a deal where Dury are going to run this promotion in the background. Didn't they try and mm. like get a partnership a few years ago with maybe Noah or someone? It was Noah, yeah. Because Noah. Because Tom Campbell did yeah. that joke, yeah. which we still know and love. Um, and maybe this is their way of trying to sneak in. Yeah. It'll be a different type of scene to conquer than the UK scene, though, mm. which rolled over and died. <laughs> that was it. Japan like, no, we'll oh. fight you. It looks like a little hamster pellet. A little poo-poo from a hamster. Ross is distracted by something on the desk. I think it's a bit of fluff. Don't it's just fluff, yeah. He thinks it's hamster poo. Yeah. It does look like it. How's hey. Bandit? Very well, very yes. well. Fantastic. <laughs> DOI arrive, and too excited to see Triple H. They win a three-way tag match against the Creed Brothers and the New Day, setting up a future title shot. But Matthew, what happened during the New Day's entrance for this match? Was it another Y? Another, uh, another QR code, mm. yeah. Pictures of, oh, I forgot, Pluto, Plato, I don't know, someone. But one's a planet, one's a philosopher. <laughs> yeah, so no, no, what no. did it look like? There was a raven and there was a flame and then someone holding, casting the shadow. Oh. that Whoever that is, began with a P. A raven? Poe, Edgar Allan Poe, no, Poe the Raven. That's never... the Teletubbies there, Matthew. Don't get confused. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Oh, all right. Right. So that, that appeared. Then there was a second picture appeared where there was... Some... <laughs> it's just nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, apparently it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> it's oh. a thing. What is it? Yeah, then if you click through again, that red and black <laughs> number at the bottom there, that appeared. And then a video appeared where... They were talking about, like, everything's going to be okay when we come back and whatever that Ooh. is. Yeah. So uh, you, you got three a three for with your QR code this week on Raw. Nah, it's, it's all a sham. It's just <laughs> it's all computer <laughs> errors. Okay. But I had some form of... And they're, they're doing the thing again before the show with the lights going out and the old timely music yeah. playing. Well, look, I'm happy if they do it and they actually pull it off this time because what last time... this time? Well, no, because last time they're doing all this, look... Is that one of the puppets in the background of the shot the last three seconds? And it was like, and people loved that going back and trying to find the clues, but it went nowhere. Nothing happened with Bray it. Bray Wyatt came returned. back at the end of a pay per view and it was massive. <laughs> there were all references to Bray Wyatt coming back. Extreme rules. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that happened. Yeah, and he came back and then it's like, ah, Uncle Howdy. That never got resolved as a second character. And that, it all started yeah. off because it was crap. The Howdy stuff wasn't very good. Yeah. yeah. I've got more confidence now that Triple H is fully That's it. In With charge. Triple H yeah. in control of this, this should be all right. Because I'm, I'm, I think it's not out the realm possibility to go, hey, it's going to be really good. We'll do these QR codes and this and that and that. And Vince is just there going, uh-huh. Vince How got, about we do the complete opposite of that? Vince got obsessed for some reason with, like, horror. Like, every... Around the time that Alexa Bliss took the powers from Bray, every <laughs> Raw would end with, like, a wank horror segment. It was yeah. crap. Yeah. Nothing against Bliss. She did her best with what she was given. But, oh, could, you couldn't escape it for... It was during lockdown. I think you got bored. Yeah. Uh, the match, though. What would say about the match? All the teams laid it in. Yeah. New Day did an assisted fame asset, which I thought very interesting. Yeah. And that went straight to Julius, throwing everyone around like they were little babies. I wanted yeah. the Creeds to win. Like, so, how, yeah. like how the person who does the fame asset, Billy Gunn, treated his kids. Uh -huh. He threw them around when they were little babies. <laughs> yes, that's God. right. Out Juli the womb. Julius was the man of the match for this one. <laughs> Just Billy Gunn. Ah! Ah! Boop, boop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Julius was the man of the match here once again, as he has been, I think, every time he wrestles on Raw. He always steals the, high, uh, the headlines. Uh, he gets up to the top for a superplex. The finish was great. So he does the superplex, and because he's laying on, on the mat flat, Woods flies in with the elbow drop. Then while Woods is sort of pinning Julius, DIY do the old meet in the middle. Yep. The meet and two veg. The big old <laughs> tallywhacker. Uh, lovely creative finish. Yes. Yeah. It was good. It was a fun match. It was good Raw, generally. Mm. Generally, was it? I'm not like this. I, again, was surprised the... The lovely lads. Ah, oh, actually, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? They were not involved in this. Uh, because maybe, just maybe, they'll be involved with something that happens later on. Oh, so, yeah. Who? Uh, well, we'll go. I'm building hype and suspense. Oh, I've got a QR code out. and Please do. I'll, I'll, I'll scan, scan it. it. Be a dick and balls. <laughs> Are you looking at it from a different angle? Oh! Come on. No, I'm not. Oh. Uh, but I don't know why DIY is still doing the lol DX, right? 
Like, uh, maybe they'll just batter truth in the title match and be like, yeah. stop calling us direct, you. I'll be all right with that. Mm. It's not going to happen, but I'll be all right with it. Mm. Uh, backstage, Drew McIntyre watches a recap of CM Punk costing him the number one contendership last week. He laughs at first, but gets angry and kicks the TV hour. That was all from Drew this week. But you can't have everyone on every show all the of time. Of course not. Yeah. No. I like the little tweeting the character with him laughing and then kicking the TV. He's mm. slowly descending into madness. He is, that like, like, like right, Macbeth. Oh, that's on a perfect. It is. You just doubt yourself when you say good stuff. He Mrs. Is, Doubtfire, he, that's my name. <laughs> he is like Macbeth now. God, so so many ages. Deeped in blood. I was about to soliloquize, but it, it's okay. Go soliloquize? on, you soliloquize, soliloquize like there's no tomorrow. I can't remember the speech. <laughs> Mac- Which one? Macbeth, so steeped in blood now. The twi- but can't, the shore there, right, is just, it's be- It's easier <laughs> to just keep going. That's what basically Macbeth's saying. He's like, I've killed loads of people. I might as well just keep doing it. Then go back to that shore, miles mm-hmm. away. I should do like a translation of Shakespeare and just yeah, carry on. That was, <coughs> I was going. Oh, I'm trying to think of any soliloquies, aren't you? The only one who was um, Hamlet. You know what? One more talk about is so boring. I know no one's going to care about it. Let's move on. Some silly quiz, aren't you? Was Quee Wee back in the day? He was mm. a silly quee. <laughs> I'll give him. Darren from WCW. Sounds yeah, yeah. slightly a bit, but it's how oh, that was. No, his no, name. no. He said Quee. He said Quee. He said Quee. He said Quee. He said I also was worried for a split second. <laughs> and they, wait, what have you just. Oh, <laughs> then then okay. the word ended with the E and it was fine. Kicking cur. Yep. W. Eh, eh, yeah. W. Hyphen. Kicking cur. Double. What was it? W. Yeah, W. W. Eh, eh. Quee wee. A silly queen. Oh we get him. God. Stop saying it. We get a video package <laughs> detailing Damien Priest's rise to the World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> He's a serious queen. In the clubhouse, oh, Priest man. fires up Dominic. I can say it ahead of this match of Andrade. <laughs> Dom leaves of JD while Balor complains to Priest about facing Jey Uso tonight. Ooh, this was a babyface promo. Oh, sorry. Then Priest says, um, "I was going to say yeah, he thinks they should be concentrating on getting the tag titles back instead." Priest tells Finn to focus on beating Jey. You think this was a face promo. The promo package was a face one. I see. I was homeless 10 years ago, but busting my ass, you can achieve anything in the world, he says. Yeah. Basically. Nice. Um, we saw him as Punishment Martinez mm. yeah. for a bit. Nice. Yeah. But now it looks like Finn is not accepting being second fiddle to the World Heavyweight Champion. He's been a little bit... There's a little bit of dissension, isn't there? But not fully yet. But when, why, why would Damien Priest want to focus on the tag titles when he is <laughs> yeah, the Yeah, but I've got champion? this, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Finn should really respect that, but he's not. You know when you want to hang out with your mate, but your mate's like, oh, I've got a partner now, and you're like, oh. Yeah. That's what Priest, Priest is. Priest, Priest married the belt. The belt. Okay, yeah, yeah fair enough. <laughs> Bala's like, come down the pub with the lads. His belt's, his belt's changed him. He's not <laughs> the lads anymore. We see footage from early today. Chad Gable is training with the Creeds ahead of his icy title shot tonight. Mm. He's asked about dealing with Sami Zayn's hometown advantage, but it says his amateur background prepared him for this. Apparently, Minnesota and Iowa don't like each other. Oh. When he was wrestling to get into the Olympic team, the trials were in Iowa, and he's from Minnesota, and none of the crowd wanted him to win. Oh. Like a Sunderland lad wrestling in Newcastle. Yeah. Didn't want him to win the air, you know. Sorry. Yeah, he also said that <laughs> Sammy showed all his weaknesses, and he's ready to expose them. Yeah, and then I think there was a bit of foreshadowing at the end of this, because he turns back to the ring and gives one of the creeds like a belly-to-belly or something. And he proper slams him. You hear the creed go, ooh. It's like, ooh, is Chad a bit too fired up for this match? Uh, Chad a bit too bad. Mm, Perchance. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) In one Shakespeare thing. (laughs) Forsooth. Despite taking a destroyer on the apron and interference from JD. You missed the match again, Matthew. I was waiting for Ah, you to get the... uh, Indy Hartwell. You missed that off. Big angle. No, I haven't missed anything. I have written it. I have written it. Bloody have, man, you silly Billy. I wrote it somewhere. I remember writing it. I say, like, Indy's the one who... <laughs> Can it's the rain, Indy Hartwell, run of a tag match against Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree. But this time it's Indy who bends the rules. Yeah. You think it'd be really easy to, to read a numbered list? <laughs> I do number this the points. That's why news, news presenters on TV get paid the big bucks, uh-huh. isn't it? Order cues are hard. Especially when you've got a silly accent like we do. Hey. Yeah. Heal Indy, guys. Sorry, I don't know. I just got it right back on track there. What do you think of Indy? I liked it. I liked it because it's been bubbling for a little while. Candice being a dick. She continued to be a dick here during the entrance because she went for the high five, no look thing, but on the wrong side. Uh, uh, Ivy was wrestling really well as well in the match, I should say. Ivy Nile. Uh, Ivy Nile is a weapon, said Pat McAfee. Hey. He did say that. She could fit in with the Creeds and maybe someone else. If they need a woman in the stable. The Pax. Tatum Paxley. 
Oh, oh not her. <laughs> oh, she, she was in the Diamond Mine. She used mine. to be in the Diamond Mine. Oh, her new gimmick's so different that I just totally forgot about her. Yeah, oh, wow. what an actress. Uh, all eyes were on Maxine Dupree when obviously she got tagged in because this was the sort of match that was happening when that promo was cut on her being. Uh, she did a nice cross body off the top and then a perfect plex. Oh. Iranu. Mm -hmm. uh, nice DDT on Kanis as well. And then I'm glad that Indy's turned heel because now they can be the, what the way was. This is the way. Because they've yeah. been bland as bowels up until Candice yeah, started yeah, being yeah. a dick. It's nice when you get these angles where it's like, oh, okay, and then they're, she's heel, but she doesn't want to be heel. And then she's like, no, nah, I should be heel, so I might actually win a match now. She's yeah. embraced the dark side, she like... Has. Harley Race. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Is that a lot of reference to Dark Side of the Ring? No, no? No. That Star Wars thing. It's like the oh, only, right, the only film Wars. you've seen. Sorry. Like Jar Jar Binks. There yeah. you go. Yeah, like Jar Jar Binks. He yeah. was using mole in the Senate. People say, I've actually, seen that. No, seen that people, there's a theory. There's a fan theory that he was. What was he? Why was he the way he was? Because George, <laughs> <laughs> George Lucas wanted to sell toys, I think. That oh, was well, fair. Yeah. yeah, and I know that because I bought all of them as a kid, especially the one where it was a little Jar Jar Binks head where his tongue came out and was edible. So to eat it, you had to make out with Jar Jar Binks. Really? <laughs> oh. I think I had the same thing. I got a few Star Wars toys for my eighth birthday in that August. I got the double-ended lightsaber. I got this, you know, this, <laughs> this state, I, I, come on, man. What? <laughs> Darth Maul? Keep talking, keep talking. I know, I'm with you, yes. Yeah, okay. I got that Jar Jar Binks thing. What's happening here? You just Jar -Jar said, said double-ended in my brain, just went, <laughs> what? What's it actually called in the, in the Sith? I think it is called the double-ended oh, lightsaber. Right. <laughs> I'm just, sorry, it was my fault. It's because it came after the kissing Jar Jar. Yeah, toy then I well. got a double-ended. <laughs> <laughs> Huge pop when Darth Maul does that, and then the other end lights up as well, though. What a yeah. game changing moment. Oh, that scene with the screens. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Qui Gon. You're quite a Qui Gon fan, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. He's so calm. Yeah, yep. and Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the Star Wars universe, though. Also, one thing we m I've got to mention in my notes. Uh, so they're doing the, the three way match, the Tact Auto Shop. And they're talking on commentary, Brutus ripping the handles off of microwaves when he was in school and uh, to show off people how hard he was. And then Pat just says, that must have impressed the bullies. <laughs> <laughs> and it's never explained, like, did he bring them into, did he wreck the school's microwaves? Did he have his own and go, look what I can do? And then go, all right, you're mental. Why have you brought a microwave to school? Have impressed the bullies? <laughs> Is he suggesting that anyone in their right mind would bully the creeds? I yeah, I mean, that's another thing as well. Yeah. It's like, oh, what, this little this little tiny kid who can rip off... No, he must have been jacked at that point. Yeah. Surely yeah. he's ripping microwave handles off. I can imagine Julius having the look of a nerd in school and then blossoming when he was like 16. Maybe. But Brutus, I reckon, has always been as wide as he is yeah. tall. Yeah. 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 He's undefeated against microwaves. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing to have a start. Oh, but that, that microwave was from Iowa. Uh. Uh. Sorry. But yeah, it's interesting, though. I like... Ah, oh, no, actually, we've got the proper match, haven't we? Spider gets destroyed on the apron. Andrade beats Dominic Mysterio. The bad guys try to beat Andrade down afterwards, but Ricochet makes a save. We're back on track. Yes. We are back on track. Uh, uh, it's maybe one of the more work ratey matches I've ever seen Dom have. Mm. Even though it wasn't like the longest or anything. He did a, he did a destroyer, lad. Mm. He did a this country destroyer, as Pat called it on commentary, which was a very nice touch. Yeah, yeah. He's, He's a right, little silly get, isn't he? he is. <laughs> <laughs> but I, Andrade does all the hits. I like the, the, I don't even know what it's called. The, no, Jacob Fatu does it. It's not the split leg moonsault, but it's like on the top rope. B -b Boom. Acai. That's not an acai because that's out of the floor, isn't it? Oh. Just a slingshot. I oh, know what you mean. Does yeah, it have to be out of the floor? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Sabi used to it was the Arabian moonsault, but. Is the acai more mm. like a springboard one? Yeah, off the middle rope. Acai is off the second rope because so acai is a split legged This is, is off the top. This is off the top. round very quickly. But it's not the split legged one. Okay. Yeah, yeah Sabi mm. would do it and he called it the Arabian moonsault. The song. Jacob Fatu moonsault. The Colonic yeah, Wrestling Podcast moonsault. <laughs> yes. call it now. But I Andrade does one of those before the thingy, which was very impressive. He had all the hits here, did Andrade. And then Dom's 619 attempt into the hidden elbow, then followed by the message. Who oh, else did uh, Andrade's message. back elbow this week? Oh, it was Dar. It was Norm Dar in NXT. Yes. Mm. He's done it for a while. Yeah, it's not just Andrade's move. But... Yeah, I thought this went well, but I'm there going. Is Andrade going to be a face? It's he's yeah. not very facey. He's like he's got the Kavorkin superstar aura about him, but I don't go hell yeah, Andrade. He's yeah. more of a natural heel, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Rey Mysterio's friend. <laughs> Did you just watch WrestleMania. Yeah. Everybody's his bloody friend, apparently. <laughs> I Especially NFL players. Just when he came back, they were like, "Let's make him a face first for this first run." But I, yeah, I want him to be heel as well. Have you changed your stance on that as well from last week? What was that? The Jason Kelsey thing. 
Oh, yeah. That you just weren't having Jason Kelsey. <laughs> yeah, you were really like, <laughs> why was he even involved? <laughs> the entire view has been built around, like, Ray, his son, Dragon Lee, and ben Dalla, uh, like, blah, 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 blah. But them, people, people commented, Carlino. And then suddenly two NFL dudes show up. And you're so like, whoa. He was previously seen partying in a Ray Mysterio mask. Oh, well, that's all right then, as they say in Doctor Who. All right, cool. Um, thank you for ruining it. <laughs> Stupid NFL. <laughs> Fake sport based around advertising. Ooh. It just takes too long, doesn't it? I can never get into it. Yeah, I like, I like the tactics, though. Mm. I prefer my seven-hour podcasts. Of course, <laughs> yes. Mm. So, yeah, uh, I was like, okay, this is nice. Good for Andrade, I think. I don't know how long it's going to last in this Fair role enough. as Andrade. Mysterious, suit-wearing, cool dude. Fair like, enough. Until he does something, you go, ah, Tim, and he... Yeah, at the minute, because Escobar's a more heelish heel, maybe Andrade doesn't look as heelish by comparison. Yeah. Once he moves away from him, everyone might be like, he should be a heel again. Yeah. Bruce mm -hmm. Wayne, there's a mysterious suit-wearing cool man who's a face. It can work. Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Cody Rhodes. He's not so mysterious. No, he's mysterious not mysterious. Cody Rhodes. He, he might be American. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> oh, uh, backstage, Kathy Kelly asked Jay Uso about the bloodline kicking out Jimmy. Jade talks about how dangerous the bloodline are and says he tried to get Jimmy to leave alongside him, but tonight he has to focus on this match with Finn Balor. Now, is that revisionist history? Wasn't it Jimmy who left and tried to get Jay to come with him? Yeah. I'm sure there was promos the other way as well, though. Uh, they've they've, 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 they've definitely gone was... back on it more than once, though. So yeah. Just was... pretend, just pretend. Jimmy left, Jay left. Jimmy came back, Jade yeah. continued to leave. Yeah. Okay. There must have been promos after that second Jimmy return where he was like, you should come with me. The, yeah, yeah. The light side. Don't be like Jar Jar. <laughs> <laughs> um, this to me was like foreshadowing an Uso's reunion already, which I don't want to see at I, all. I don't, yeah. Maybe years down the line, but not yet. Come on, guys. Hold your horses. Yeet. Uso. Oh, I would, I'd be up for it. No? I think that's, that would really help Jimmy... Oh, yeah. To, to keep on being a dick, going, come on, let's reunite. And Jay going, no, uh. that would be good. But to hear uh, Jay being like, yeah, 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 I, I want me and him a cool guy. Like, no, what? No, you need to be up your brother some more. Yeah, mm -hmm. he literally cost you the universe. Again, that title. bit in the match where he's like, oh, I forgive you, brother. You're like, what? <laughs> You're the dumbest idiot. Uh -huh. <laughs> nah, I think, I think we're a bit on, uh, we're reading different books here. And he's number one contender now. Yes, you should concentrate on his solo thing because he's doing it really well right now. Not, Not solo, that solo, yeah. yeah. Oh, you. <laughs> his mono thing. Uh, backstage, Kathy Kelly. Or is that a bit? Chelsea Green and Piper Niven win a tag match against the Cowie Girls. They won. But Bloody sadly, hell. it was against the Cowie Girls. Yeah. And that two, was an amazing, the world. Mm. an epic two minute 11. <laughs> um, Piper looked good. Piper looked very good in the match. She catched, she, she catched, she caught Katana off the top rope and then yeeted her out the ring with a fallaway slam. Yep. That was good. Uh, Caden Carter did the arm lock thing and then was doing like chops and like, come on, everybody, count along. Not one person in that building counted along. <laughs> that one cowie, two cowie, three cowie. <laughs> Just so dangerous. Floor. <laughs> um, the punch clothesline combo from Chelsea and Piper was really rubbish as well. <laughs> Chelsea went like ha but it works for her because it sort of fits her gimmick of being like the Karen yeah the proper yeah, Karen punch happens to have a hard friend yeah a bit Enzo and Cass-esque yes when Enzo used to be like the crap one and then Cass yeah. would come in and Enzo and Lass Enzo and Lass <laughs> unreal very good <laughs> go on we're, we're doing a good podcast again. <laughs> oh, we finally started two hours we've in. made our comeback yeah, we're yeah. firing up when we redo the first hour it's going to be men. <laughs> Uh, in a backstage interview, Liv Morgan doesn't feel guilty about injuring Rhea Ripley. She wonders why everyone is mad at her when Rhea previously put her on the shelf for eight months. Uh, as Bobby Fish once said, folks, where's the lie? Yeah. Ripley got exactly what she deserved, but this isn't the end of the Liv Morgan revenge tour because now she's going to become women's world champion. And she should, in my opinion. Uh, she might as well. But there's not a lot of number one women faces on Raw, down. is there? Yeah, I mean, sorry, not on Raw, yeah. Yeah, uh, Becky out, Rhea out. Yeah. Uh, it's Liv Morgan's going to be a heel now. Hang on, yeah. Nia Jax is a heel. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Zoe Stark, Shayna, heels. Ivy, well, yeah. tag team. I mean, really Maxine Dupree? Yep. No. <laughs> nasty, nasty. Yeah, man. I don't know what's happening, what's going to happen there, but... Yeah, Liv Morgan's got to win. Liv Morgan holding the title for a few months until the mother comes back and then maybe it's SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. 
She gets her hands on it. And she come back to her, I am your mother, I am your mother. You listen to me. <laughs> I hate this bad song. No, they should come back what to her. It's Megan Trainer. All about that bass girl. Oh. Married to one of the spy kids. Yeah. <laughs> no, genuinely. When you say it like that, though. Beautiful hey, child. Hang on, is that illegal? What? Beautiful child. Really? Looks like a young Elton John. Oh. Could you Google that, please, Joel, to verify? Looks like, imagine in your heads now, picture what Elton John would look like as a child. And the the guy from Sky Kids and Megan Trainer's child. We can't laugh at a child on No, we're not. Just, oh. it, what, yes, we that? can. <laughs> You're right. Oh, it's so funny watching Joel type. Megan Trainer, baby. It's Elton John. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it's actually, yeah. You are not wrong. And she is his uh, mother. Kayla sees this on the TikTok fairly regularly, so I get the collateral from yeah. these videos where oh. they pimp their Elton John baby out. Oh, don't, yeah, don't the next one like along, Joel. Hey, look, the baby is back. Like Hold John. me closer, tiny <laughs> dancer. Wow. He, the, you can still tell he's the kid from Spy Kids, yeah, the dad. Yeah, really yeah. Junie. Yeah. I hope he sorted out the warts that he had. He did on his have hands, warts, on yeah. his hands. <laughs> 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 Spy Kids wasn't about... Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Spy Kids was great, but then I think I watched it back as an adult and I was like, oh. I enjoyed Spy Kids. I don't think I saw them. Alan, Com getting... Alan Cummins is in it. Floop. Oh, is he? I like him. Floop. He's, he's what? He's Fluke, the bad guy. Oh. He's like an evil Willy Wonka, sort of. Yeah. That's just Willy Wonka. I've not seen it for 20 years. Like, oh. Yeah. Well, coming soon to the that was... the Spy Kids podcast. I when I got my... I got, like, really hot. <laughs> it was later on when she was... Carry on. <laughs> when I got my DVD player, that was the... I got two DVDs. One was Spy Kids and one was Hamilton Mattress. Everybody, Hamilton Mattress? Everybody loves a Hamilton Mattress. About the aardvark who wants to get new trousers. You've talked about this before. I have, yeah. And that's the only reason I know about it. And Great I thought film. you were making something up. Joel knows, don't you? Joel, I, I only know it from you, from what you said <laughs> no, on the podcast. You, yeah, right. I'm the same. you made up this story, and I believed you. They must have been giving it away with the DVD player in Woolworths back in 2001 or whatever year it was. Got this really good deal with an aardvark company. <laughs> uh, first DVD we ever had was um, Black Hawk Down. I remember this because my, my dad got a DVD player and a surround sound system. Oh! I know, right? My dad likes his tech. So you can feel was, like you're really in. He was Mogadishu. Well, that, thankfully without you know getting shot at and stuff. Yeah. But like he was going through, going, is it on yet? Going through sub whoop and all this other stuff. Bobby Mam was on the couch. So obviously him going, I can't hear it. Put up full whack, click the right <laughs> button to go on. <laughs> oh, and we're like, oh god, we're like we didn't mean to do it, but we're like, oh, watch it seeing it, and we burst out laughing. And she went, right, and we're like, we're all laughing at you, we're all laughing at you, and she just went upstairs to sleep angrily. I thought I you were gonna say she threw away the surround sound. That would be funny. <laughs> but we respected her not. We were very happy that she didn't break anything, but it was just like, again, just a bad comedy going, oh, there it is. Just the loudest noise you've ever heard in your life. Bless your mother. Bless yeah. my mother. A great woman. She is. Mm. Cody Rizzle comes out and asks what the fans want to yeah, talk yeah. about. Cody, Cody Rizzle. Cody Matthew's Rizzle. Matthew's breezed over it, but yeah, Cody, Cody Rizzle. You did. I thought, would, I thought we'd get a laugh. Um, sadly, mistake. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> Damn it. I'm too, uh, I'm too busy reading from, was it Teddy Fizzle? Oh, God, that, oh, that's just what I do. All oh, right, that's just, oh, damn it. You've sussed me out. <laughs> Can't wait to hear us talk about Adam Pizzle, the yeah. GM. Yeah. Tee hee. Tee hee. No, 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 no. Not, <laughs> not Seth Rizzle. Yeah. He thanks Seth Rizzy for being a man of his word at Wrestle Mizzle. But quickly no, no, turns no, his no, attention no, no, no. to the Rizzle. My carnies. Let's <laughs> it, you guys. Uh, Cody says he thinks The Rock has a lot more than Hang one on. match does left that, in him. Hang on, does carny talk, is it not? Oh, is it Dizaddy? Dizaddy. Oh, I thought it was just Zaddy. Oh, it's Zaddy. Sorry, I've got the Zenith. Oh, I was going to say, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, my, that's my fault. Daddy and Carney would, I guess, be, yeah, Dizaddy, yeah. Dizaddy, yeah. yeah. But in Young Talk, it's Hizu Zaddy. Hizu is in Dizad, Dizaddy over this air. All right. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> if Rock intends to make Cody bleed again, he'll make Rock bleed with him. Oh, that's not nice. Mm. Uh, like everyone, Cody's confused about who's in charge of the bloodline before bringing out Jay Uso. Cody offers to be in Jay's corner in case the rest of JD try to interfere, but Jay wants to do this on his own. Cody understands and leaves saying, until we eat again. Don't know where, don't know where. <laughs> that's Aiden's theme music, yeah. yeah. Split spirit, Aiden Givens, that would be what he came out. Oh, walk, really? Yeah. You walk in the office some mornings and he's playing My Chemical Romance, followed by a bit of Vera Lynn. <laughs> it's incredible. He's a mystery. The juxtaposition. Um, I really enjoyed Jey Uso's nicknames for himself, called himself the Yeet Master and Mr. Yeet Down. It just sounded funny coming out of his mouth. Uh, I know it's only three shows in, but we need a bit of direction for Cody now. I think next week onwards. 
Because this felt like the yeah. same promo he's already cut three times. Ooh, Rock, I'm going to get you. Ooh, Rollins, thank you very much. Ooh. I'm with you. But at the same time, I also put crazy deafening Hogan in 2002 Montreal pop. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is getting a number one contender on SmackDown this week. Yeah. So. The Montreals yeah. love their proud American. <laughs> yeah. don't <laughs> and Adam Pearce has been allow- allowing him to come out on Raw, even though technically he's a SmackDown superstar now. Yes. So yes. thank you, Adam. Pizzle. Thanks, Pizzle. You must be on the posters and the build up for this, huh? Uh, <laughs> backstage, Nia Jax says she doesn't care about Rhea Ripley. Nobody in the women's division can stop her from becoming the new women's world champion. There are two types of people in the world, those who fear Nia Jax and those who learn to fear Nia Jax. I improved it in my... You did, actually. Yeah. yeah. But... What you type was just learn, those who learn to. She should have just said it like that. Yeah. And those who teach. But, uh... And those who teach gym. That's School of Rock. Uh... Yeah, thanks, Nia. Finn Balor attacks Jey Uso from behind to start their match. Priest watches on from backstage and decides to head to the ring. Jay wins before Priest gets there, but the champion enters the ring for a stare down. JD and Dom attack Jay from behind, but he fights back and manages to escape through the crowd. I was surprised how this went, just with, you know, how wrestling gets you like Pavlov dog sometimes. Just He's going to get beaten down here before the big title match next week. But no, it was a surprisingly easy win for Jay. And then Damien comes down. Finn gave Priest some lip, and I couldn't work out what he said, but he was like... I love you. <laughs> Finn gave Priest some lip. Yeah. I thought, yeah, was he like, oh no, I was, I'm picturing Priest going like, get in there. No, nah, Finn does, he, he says something to Priest and then starts putting the boots to Jay and I couldn't work out what he said. Hang on, wait, we've got uh, now, yeah. Finn gives him some lip. Are you I'm, reading Andrew's notes again? Yeah. <laughs> I remember this because I think, wasn't Finn, at first it looked like he was going to like, he was arguing with him, but I think he was just really fired up. Mm. Like when a footballer scores a banger, and then one of their harder teammates, maybe like a centre back or a centre mid, comes and like shoves them. They just mm. be like, "That was a disgusting goal." I hate Cole Palmer's sick celebration. Sick tech. Oh, it's cold, isn't it? Oh, oh. There's I'm a wrestler. So sick. Sorry, there's a wrestler. Cold. There's a footballer <laughs> who called Cole Palmer, but Cold Palmer because when he scores, he goes a burr. That's good. Though. I hate it's it. No, I hate it. Tech is so cold. He's very good at the minute. He's probably the most informed player in the Premier League. Well, hang on. If he plays in the Premier League, he's like, no, I'm genuinely cold, mate. No, true. <laughs> Play rubbish. Yeah, especially <laughs> waiting for the summer, aren't we, God? We are. Our global warming. Oh, Jack, stop it. Will we get some of this year, last? Because we didn't really get one last year. Did once, yeah. once June was finished, it was over. It was very quick last year. Uh, but then the cinema we get after oh, this match. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cinema. Oh. Ah, oh, Jack on film. <laughs> the camera follows Jay through the concourse to the exit, where he sees Sami Zayn looking up. It was a really funny building. camera shot first. I mean, yeah. Sami stood on his own, just looking up. <laughs> ah. nah. It was like he was walking to trigger a cutscene. Sami yeah, just stood yeah, yeah. there. <laughs> where Jimmy? Yeah. But yeah. He's walking in the same way he did. Sorry. Now he's back as champion. He's walking in the same way he did all those years ago. Sammy enters through the crowd. Well, yes, through the yeah, yeah, through the Mondrage that bit, and is it is spine tingling. Yes, it is. That bit good. where he grabs the bin and starts shouting something in French, and the crowd are going, oh! yeah. I was up and me see good. Ah, because yeah, I was home alone, and it would have been sad to be any louder. <laughs> but it was still. <laughs> he looked like a god. It was amazing. Yeah, it was one of my favorite entrances ever. I think, and it makes really, you really yeah. appreciate how just certain camera works can really yeah. like. What's the? I'm not trying. I'm trying not make this sound wanky, but you know, like come through the screen that you make you feel. Oh yeah, that was missing. Yeah, yeah, make you feel like you're there. Imagine that in the Kevin Dunn era, the 50 million. Cuts. You kind of. <sighs> they would just you get lost. It wouldn't have the same effect. So you don't appreciate that sort of camera work until you finally see it again. He must be spinning in his grave, and he's <sighs> not even dead yet. He must mm. look, like, look like a tumble dryer. He doesn't care. He's this. a millionaire. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah. Um, Wanker. <laughs> I thought it was really, really good. Um, and oh damn it, I can't remember what I was gonna say because of the Kevin. That was funny when you shout, shout out to sorry, shout out to Jey Uso as well for shoving that fan trying to take a selfie. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm on TV. No, you're not. I remember. I remember what I was gonna say. You know what? He wanted to be Seth Rollins' camera kid, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. I'll be Jey. I'll be the cut the Hall of Fame move. Come third in the Hall of Fame poll. Um, <laughs> I you... love you, Joel. You. I've. Uh... I've remembered what I was going to say and I've forgotten it again. No, I've remembered, <laughs> oh, it. I've remembered on, it. I've remembered it. Again. I remembered it. I saw a tweet that was something along the lines of like, show it was like a quote retweet of Sammy's entrance. And they said, how can you imagine that just a few years ago in the, or just a year or two ago in this company, it was like 
Vince used to deliberately beat people in their hometown rather than like he did do, the years. take advantage of this sort of thing. Yeah, it's much better. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Yep. He would look in and Jay would go, "Uh oh, we're in Oklahoma this week." Yeah. Uh, I'll lube up my ass for the barbecue sauce. Yep. So which, not which, too far. Which, that. Uh, <laughs> which friend of decades will turn on me this week? Yeah. All right, cheers. Uh, behind the curtain, Bronson Reed tells Chad Gable that whoever wins tonight won't be actually champ for long because the winner will have to answer to him. And Chad's just like, I'm, I'm like, not now, Bronson. What? You say something, I'm in the zone, mate. Yeah. Sorry. He got lost in his eyes, that big old bloody brooding zaddy. <laughs> oh, yes, he did. Zam, he zaddy. had his, his sunglasses off so you could see his eyes, I think. Got lost in them. Tremendous. I just, the timing was lost not, in <laughs> The timing was not, I agree with Chad. Just, what are you doing? I'm ready yeah. to, Why? Yeah. Go away. Yeah. And then, <sighs> Sammy beats Gable to retain the IC title. This was wrestling. This was wrestling. This was so good because it wasn't like a million moves or anything, but everything they did made sense. Like Sammy's feeding off the energy of the crowd and that. Chad, and then hurts his leg early. And I loved how many times Chad just kept going back. Why wouldn't I stop? Why would I stop no. going for the ankle? No. There was one where Sammy like was trying to hobble across with a halluva kick. And Chad did this amazing like amateur roll down to the canvas and just scooped yep. his leg. And I thought, this is the wrestling. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. I know we've had a lot of bangers these past few weeks, but we've had yet another one. Yeah. Doing that the mid-year culties is going to be a bitch. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> really camp. <laughs> you know what being really emotive when we get camp here on the show? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. I thought this had the biggest of fighting feels. Like, after Sammy's entrance, then you get Chad's entrance, where he wouldn't normally get booed at this point, but he got mm. booed anyway. Oh, I wanted, like, scene air ECW, like, people <laughs> everywhere. <Yeah. laughs> it was still pretty loud, the boos, like, and just from there on out, as Jack said, yeah, just getting the ankle, and there was an ankle slam off the top. Oh, it was yeah. just a proper yeah. big, doughty main event, wasn't it? Uh, was that the move that scared his wife? Yeah. Sammy's wife was like, no. Mm. Yeah, and Michael Cole bringing up LLQ. What does that like, mean? That's... Uh, Sami Zayn's very first promotion he started wrestling in. Oh, yes. Which I didn't even know until I would look at line and goes, yeah, you're right, mate. He did his old fake dive into the moonsault yes, back into the ring. And I think Mitch Gifts was having a look on X going like, yeah, he's doing more El Generico moves. Uh, uh, the moves that is... <laughs> oh. And then I think... I'm sorry. Pat, maybe, when, like, nothing generic about that. Hey! I love them. Just the bluntest object. <laughs> Pat McCarthy. Pat must have been a Peter Reggie fan back in the day. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah. He, uh, Oh, and also, Cole saying his first event at this arena, I didn't even realize we're talking about it. Montre uh, Montreal, wrestling, 97. Sane's first event he was there for was Survivor Series, 97. What, oh what happened to that one? Yeah. Sammy Zane's first event. Yeah, of course, that's what they were saying. I'm like, bloody hell, as a fan, showing up, go, oh boy, I hope Bret Hart wins oh that. God. Oh, How did that not turn him off wrestling forever? Yeah. Hey, imagine anyone. seeing that and staying with wrestling. Yeah. Cultaholic are the only wrestling YouTube channel out there with a documentary dedicated to that show and the main <laughs> uh, yes. match of that. It's called Screwed. It's on the YouTube channel now. It's over a million hits. Yeah, they worked really <laughs> hard on it. The boys, the boys with the talent behind the camera. They yes. worked very hard. That's us. Oh, oh you mean you Where are the other ones? No, where the hacks. Oh, I. Um, <laughs> oh, the hacks. Yeah, the hacks. Uh, very good stuff. Very good roll. Good end to a good roll. Ah, and then they shook hands afterwards. And oh, went, God. Well, <laughs> gosh, Jiminy, I didn't get you this time. You betcha. But next time, you what? Yeah, right. Uh, as Sammy is hugging and embracing his non crying wife, <laughs> Chad's like, <laughs> and just uh, suplexes the hell out suplexes of him. Suplexes him out with a hug yeah. with his wife. Yeah. Chad beats Sammy <laughs> down, puts him in an ankle lock through the ropes as the show goes off the air as referee's trying to get him off. And he's not like that. And he's just there like, ah, I hate you. Yeah. It's just the only thing, it was brilliant. Imagine if we got the shush and a thank you. That's the only thing that was missing. <laughs> if he was just like, a thank you, as the show went off the air. He's come out next week and nothing but boo is in his way. Like, a thank you. Yeah. yeah. I've asked Owen how he's doing because uh, Chad's his favorite wrestler in WWE at the minute. He, th he finds him really funny and hilarious. Now, on the stream last night, I was mm. like, how are you, Owen? And he was like, He's heartbroken. <laughs> he's like, he's so funny. I, I can't believe he's done this. Yeah. And oh, big sneeze out there. Shoot sneeze out, sneeze out there. <laughs> it's amazing to think, yeah, Chad Gable main event of the Raw with Sami Zayn. It was the main focus of it. And it just feels natural. Oh, you mean... Think about a year ago. You mean Shorty G? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A few years ago. No, I'm going to take this name, Shorty G, and lose all but one match against Baron Corbin. I'm going to embrace who I am, which is a short ass. Yeah. Yeah. which a bully was calling me that so I'm going to embrace any what a load of bollocks yeah. I t the bully was calling me that I embraced the name and the bully beat me up even more I yeah, tell you what though take, became, became king of the ring 
He, and put, he actually got a bigger push beating me <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> hmm. Take your pick out of being like nerdy Kurt Angle, like 01, or wrestling machine Kurt Angle. Either or, yeah. Just copy it. Don't mind. No one's going to care. It's going to be good either yeah. way. Yeah. Might as well copy one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Yeah. I'd probably maybe even prefer like dorky Kurt, because Gable can do that. They can probably do the other one as well, yeah. I think a bit of dorky before wrestling machine will make you appreciate him more. Mm. Not him being a machine now is what we need. Perk Gable. Yes. Can you do the Kurt Angle? <laughs> yeah. That's a big great. scream. Ah. It's, it's going to be good. I hope we get to see his heart rate on Raw. Because it's low, let me tell you. Oh, yeah, you said oh. it was like 12 30, or something. 30, <laughs> 36 or something. Jesus. I watched one of his workout videos. Must be on Seamus' YouTube channel where he's on about it. In Incroyable. Imagine having a heart rate of 36. Yours got He's a right? psychopath, right? Yeah. What? What's my your heart rate? Yeah. Get your heart rate out. Get Come my on. heart rate out. <laughs> it's gone up since you've asked me about it. <laughs> yes, yeah, me and Chad Gable were in the same divisions. <laughs> Jesus. NXT. We see some very excited bus wankers on the way. No, to that is the dream. Imagine getting a show <laughs> first service yeah. from, I don't know, a random bus stop in Orlando to the shed. Imagine bus cans on the way to NXT. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. The back seat. Yeah, all the boys. Aircon on. A mm. few tunes on there. Oh, delightful. Yeah. I once got a bus to Leeds Festival from Leeds. That makes sense. Um, where you're from, Joel. Yeah, yeah, I like Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was meeting my mates there, but they were friends from uni, so we were from like all over the country. So I, we didn't all meet in Newcastle and go to Leeds first. I had to go on my own and meet them in Leeds, which was, I was probably like, like 19, is it? But it was still like a terrifying experience because I was on my own. And I remember getting on the bus from Leeds City Centre, just sat on my own like a nerd on this bus that was like, Party, and I was like, yeah. Oh no, I hope no one picks on me. <laughs> and they just sort of left me alone. But I was, I was out, I was not in, I was left out of the fun, oh, right? Bless. That's what I want the NXT party bus to be like. I want to get on one and relive my missed bus journey from Leeds to Leeds Festival. Oh, do you not want to relive another bus journey you had? Oh. It's just what people used to say in uni. Because <laughs> the PR2 that we used to get up the hill from lectures was really vibrating. And people were like, oh, I got a bus bow the other day. Yeah, me too. I got a bus bow. <laughs> this is why they left you alone on that bus. Sometimes people would, it wasn't just me who used to make these jokes. Sometimes people would say, oh, I got a lecture bow. And they, a lecture bow? Yeah, one of my mates was, said he had a lecture. He got one in lecture, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it was about. He was a geography student. So I don't know. Oh, he lecture. Yeah. The PR2 used to really vibrate hard. Why am I playing in there? <laughs> the only match, no, I'm Darby, it's Dijak after distraction from Ora Mensa on the apron. Here, how? How is no, I'm Darby and Dijak? Well, that's crazy, isn't it? I'll and tell he... you why. Because Ora Mensa had a T bar mask on. Oh, was that what it was? I think so. It looked like a Bane mask. That made was, a lot yeah, of sense. T bar. I didn't get that. And it infuriated me. I might Dijak. be making something up because when I saw it, it was just like T bar used to wear the one down the bottom of his grill like that, didn't he? Mm. Yeah. I, I think maybe accidental because surely they would have been really heavy handed up with that one comment. Maybe it was just their right, sure. maybe it was just a metaphors idea. They just sneaked it in. Mm. Mm. Um because uh, oh, we were dressing up as him. That's why he got mad at them. That's why I had this match. Yeah. So. I am surprised did he Oh yeah. I'm surprised that uh, Dar got as much offense in and won. Yeah. I thought they were going with the whole thing like, ah, oh, he's not that good, but he's got all his mates and he's a sneaky get yeah. and all this. But his match, like, no, no, he's a he's a proper, he's proper wrestler. wrestler. And they'll point out, like, well, I'm not sure was it deliberate or not on commentary, like, well, he's sticking up for his friend. It's like, yeah, who could... Because they were taking the piss out of him the other week, so I went, yes, I, I, on behalf of our team, yes, it was us. It was me. It was very valiant for a heel. It was weird. You, va valiant, prick, cheating heel, <laughs> now I'm da. Yeah. yeah. Likes okay. football, likes Oasis. Yeah, likes his cans. Likes... No opinion of party. Likes, likes the Star Wars. He does like the Star Wars. Yeah. He came out as... Oh, um, you, can, you and him can be friends. He came oh, out okay. as Luke Skywalker once and I said, didn't he? Yeah. And Chris Tull was Yoda. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he yeah. Was. Uh, it was. Yeah, he was. It was good. It wasn't that I didn't just like, just like it. I was just surprised. Like, oh, yeah. Even with cheating, I'm like, yeah, he was still competitive outside of the uh, interference bit. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. He's such a ring general, though, no, I'm dark. Because when Dijak does that big spinny chuck over the top rope. Noam somehow manages to get his hands on the top rope to control his fall, which I didn't... I noticed that, and I appreciated it. And he also somehow, despite being a very small man comparatively to uh, Dijak, does a release fisherman buster. I yeah. often wonder... How, how? How? He's been wrestling since he was, like, nine. I often wonder how he got into wrestling, Noam Dar. They said that 
he, he, uh, who was it that did his speech? I think it was when his, his going away speech. I mean, it was when the icy dub. He said like he basically blagged his age to get into the training, <laughs> and they were open about it. And like Dallas knew and just said, "I just don't don't make a mess." Something <laughs> like that. Because the way that he presents himself and his promos and stuff, and he was in WCBW. You know, I didn't like know him very well or anything, but he just seems too much of a lad to be a wrestling fan. Do you know what I mean? Like, he just seems to... And he, Nothing seems to phase him, yes. Yeah, so. yeah, and I'm like, how did you get into wrestling and then stay into it, yeah. but beyond the point where it's embarrassing to like wrestling? I know exactly what you mean. It's funny watching, like, I want for people to watch all of the Progress shows. I know, you know, Progress existed. And... Uh, <laughs> it does still exist, everyone. <laughs> it does. Show, it's funny. And uh, now I'm Dar was there, and even with all the lads that are on the show, obviously really respected and stuff like that, now, Dar had, like, just the confidence. It's like, I'm not scared of this. Ooh, London, so what? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I think he's, he's got a lot of Kavorka. Yeah, he does. I you can think of it? any other word, but it works so well. Yeah. I just can't believe it's coming back in WWE because he had the ICW Kavorka because he was one of them. He was a Scottish scallywag, wasn't he? Like, no. um, <laughs> that's me ruffling his like, no, no, But now, I was like, the Americans are never going to get this, but it's working. Yeah. yeah. So happy from. Hmm. Uh, Backstage, Ava tells Ilya that because Trick Willie has a match tonight, she's booking Ilya in a match too. She lets him pick his own opponent, and he goes, Lawrence Olivier! And she goes, he's dead. <laughs> and he goes, all right, he decides to issue an open challenge instead then. She's a really good jam. She's really good. She's fair she and just. She's on the phone, and she's put down her phone when Did you in. see her I'm on the phone acting? <laughs> she's like, Ilya! Oh, <laughs> I, I, I was just... Uh, Doing nothing. <laughs> no, she's really good. She makes good decisions all the time. This was a fair decision. Trick's got a title match, but also a match tonight. Give Ilya mm. one. Bit of a cowardly move from Ilya, then. <laughs> Put him in there with Ober. Call yeah. out Ober. Yeah, it should or be a cage do match as well, yeah. really, shouldn't it? Yeah. 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 We get a Tatum Paxley vignette, where she talks about how the cool kids didn't want to be friends with her growing up, so she made her own friends. She made her friends, right, who she wanted to be friends, as dolls, and played with them as dolls. It's... It's something. Mm. Yeah. She reveals that she's actually been obsessed with the NXT Women's Championship all along. Not Lyra. <gasps> Lyra was the closest thing she's ever had to a friend, so she made it her mission to help her keep the title. But now Lyra has let her down by losing it, so she means nothing to take them anymore. The title needs to belong to her. Oh. Huh. I feel like we've slightly rewritten the script at the ninth hour here. The yeah. ninth hour. The eleventh hour here. Ninth inning. Month is still late. Yeah. On the second fairway. Because <laughs> uh, she does shout, Lyra, I loved you, which is what she was doing. She was obsessed with Lyra Valkyria. But then it's all of a sudden because she had the NXT Women's mm. Championship. This is a shame for me. I think she's obsessed with both. Mm. So why is she pretending that she was. Yeah, it is weird. Because she's saying, like, you broke my heart because you lost the title, whereas it should have been you broke my heart because you didn't. You didn't. You didn't. Accept her as a friend. Yeah. yeah. Or be in a relationship. You didn't with her. let me turn you into a doll. Whatever she's going for yeah. there. All right, she had the doll, but she couldn't get a hold of the real life one. At what point between Lyra's, uh, sorry, between Tatum's creepy doll. childhood and now her creepy gimmick now, at what point did she like ditch all that and just become a gym lass for a bit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, was she a, a crazy person at the gym or? No, oh. no, she was an innocent. That's she wanted right. to just be in the Diamond Mine. I'll never forget when she wrestled one of her first matches apart the Diamond Mine. She still had like the saucy stockings on. It's like her attire for Ooh, wrestling, yeah. which wasn't like, you know, very... Sorry, <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry. You look at Ivy Nile dressed like an MMA fighter, basically, with a big chain. And then she's out there with the saucy stockings on. Like, well, what part of the Diamond Mine are you from? <laughs> hey. I can tell you're in the Diamond Mine because you're a real gem. Uh, <laughs> it's not the first time you've said that, is it, Matthew? It is. <laughs> but I thought it was a wonderfully... I think this week, between this and the Ariana Grace stuff, NXT's got a new promo person. Oh, do you think? I think the promo person we've grown to know and love with the cheesy line and the music that fits the character and the line that fits the character as well, that person's got the main roster. Like Grayson uh. Waller, whoever it was. Whoever it was. The main, like Grayson Waller in theory got that cheesy line aside, that treatment. But this, it just fit more without being so blunt. Okay. I, I like the creative direction it's going in. When we get to it, we'll talk about it more, but I thought the dress bit was typically wank. Just maybe in a different... It didn't have the music. I mean, in terms of the production. Like, yeah, it was it was a different director, same script. Mm. Yeah, yeah, same yeah. writers, yeah. There are a lot of NXT, like, gimmicks where it's I'm crazy, also infantile now. It's a thing we go back to, like, yes, when I was a girl and I, I still dressed like that. one. Yeah. Apparently all NXT women are going to be Liz hot did crazy. That. She had a doll, yeah. Yeah. Oh. The whimsical Wendy Chew. <laughs> Where's she? 
she was on a poster in the trainer's room. Ah. There is a poster. I forget what it says. I've got it written Missing. down somewhere. No, it's like, it's Wendy time or something. Oh. Choo choo time. It's Wendy time. I don't have, know. have you seen Wendy Choo? If so, <laughs> please call this number. But I, I, I really like the Tate and Paxley presentation there. She fit, yeah. She's convincing in that role. She is. Direction wise, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It, sorry, it doesn't make sense at all. Sorry, I mean, in terms of what she'd be doing later on, because you're not going to be just the crazy stalker person forever, is it? She, she might be. Mm, Victoria okay. made a living off that for a couple of years. She did. You're right. I'm completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise. Retract my statement from the House of Commons. Do you see Mandy, Mandy Rose, M- 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 Mandy, uh, getting upset at not being included in the rundown of the former champions, the cool girls. Was she not included? She, yeah, she said she was uh, disappointed but not surprised. Oof. Yeah. She's mm. a miss, you know. A miss. She's... I think I you're finding something a miss about this. <laughs> I, I miss her as an NXT watcher. She was a good heel. And yeah. Toxic Attraction have lost that. No, they haven't. JC Jane saved a whole university. What am I talking about? I'm talking about No, but I get you, man. It's yeah. uh, surprising that there hasn't been any more, like, Triple H going, oh, that was the previous management. Why don't you come back? Get her back in. It was yeah. a Sean decision, though, wasn't it? I think. Uh, oh, yeah. It's been yeah. a while since I thought about it. So yeah. maybe I should stop talking and move on. <laughs> <laughs> After interference from Blair Davenport, which the referee absolutely sees, Lola Vice beats Sol Ruka. The refs wank. What the bollocks did hey, Sol Ruka do for a pose in the ring at Juno Ironman's? Oh, what was it? I don't <laughs> even, I can't describe it. She was on the mat face down and then she did some whizzle wazzle and then she was posing like she was on a surfboard. I don't know why I did that. More like that. Um, but I don't know what she did. It was like the roll back onto her. The roll feet. back and then brrr, and then back. Mm, she's, she's a freak, an athletic freak. She's a big freak. She's a freak. <laughs> Bloody freak. Freak. Get off the beach, you freak. <laughs> <laughs> but once again... In a good way, a good freak. She nailed everything in, in the match, did yep. Sol Ruka. I don't need to go through all the more because there was millions of moves that she did. Even a, She did a sidewalk slam reversal, which even looked pretty somehow. Were none of them your move of the week? No! Whoa! Oh, you. Lola did right by not trying to do anything flamboyant. Lola just kicked her, which was the right move because you're never going to upstage Sol Rooker yeah. when she's in this form. Mm. Vic and Booker were really distra- distracting during this match because they were God shouting they about were. who likes drama and who likes minding your own business. And then all of a sudden talk of Booker T, Sue and Wade Barrett was yeah. mentioned. <laughs> yeah, Booker said, I miss Wade Barrett. And Vic goes, what do you mean? You, you sued us ass six months ago. And I Googled and there was just like, oh yeah. What? There's a little, no, they're playing around. Oh, were they? Uh. <laughs> yeah, that was but, a weird thing to say. Yeah, it, uh, I, I think Vic might be like when he's going to the gym and hitting the big, big bag. He's going, "I hate you, Booker. I hate you, Booker." Yeah. Just like vent after these shows. Cause... Oh yeah, man. It's Scotty. Oh no, <laughs> this isn't something you should say. It's Booker. Ruined, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, lovely sell on the black mass. I don't know what she calls it uh, from Sol Rooker as well for the finish after Blair got down there. But then it doesn't mean the, the match was inconsequential because what happened next <laughs> is historic. <laughs> Lola celebrates doing that one taunt she does, but Natalia interrupts on the Tron. She wants revenge for last week and wants to fight Lola, quote, on her own turf, end quote, in an NXT Underground match. Natalia's gimmick, NXT Underground. Get the dancing girls out their cages. (laughs) Get Shane McMahon in there. Get Omos watching the door. Get them all back. It's Shane McMahon. Big guy. (laughs) Riddick Moss turning into Batista. (laughs) Get yes. them all back. <laughs> all the tropes Ziggler of Raw Underground. One? Yeah, yeah. Ziggler, um, uh, who's the... Oh, what's that thing? The dancing capoeira guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, Tal Ruas. Yes. Well I knew you'd know. <laughs> Eddie from Tekken. That's right. Just do that. And he'll go all over the place. That's yeah, it. we it's need all, all, all the hallmarks of a Raw Underground. Natalia's gimmick match finally here. No, Lola Vice's gimmick match. Yeah, it's Lola Vice's. It's her turf. It's her turf. She's never her rules. She's never made girl. Yeah. That's where they all they all trade in. Yeah, it I was so busy laughing at Natalia saying on her, her. I'm like, what are you on about? Oh yeah, Lola, Lola, Lola. Lola's uh, <laughs> Lola is a MMA person. Oh, this actually makes sense. Well done, Natalia. Good promo. Yeah, it was good. Natalia remains a super babyface in NXT. She's the Cody Rhodes of NXT. Historic, she is. historic, historic night there. Mm. Yeah, NXT we've Underground. Seen, is we've a seen thing. NXT Underground matches before. Have we? Yeah. yeah. Who? Uh, Gable Stevenson. Um, I need, to, go, I need oh, to see a picture. Tree, tree guy, tree man. 
Tree guy. I can't remember what that was. Tree J. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Eddie Thorpe. Eddie Thorpe? Eddie Thorpe and uh, Die Jack had one. Oh, it's in the ring. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm picturing that little warehouse I they had. I was have. confused was when, when you said it was historic. I was quite... Oh, I was like, oh. Man, that's a shame. Yeah, it's not as bad as... It's much better than a Raw Underground. Yeah, actually. that's a shame. It's more like blood sport, but... Uh. Look, at that, look at the memories flooding back there. This Come! It's the empty this warehouse. Sick. This is sick. Come was in there. Oh, no. I'm sure there was. I mean, it was an empty warehouse, and it's a long time I've just been that's Dabakado. Yeah, Dabakado yeah. for Come Tuesday. Dabakado <laughs> for Come Tuesday. All right, let's move on. <laughs> NXT Anonymous secret records a meeting between Ava and Ridge Holland. Oh, oh God. Let's, let's go back to Come. Jesus. You don't know who I am. <laughs> Scottish. <laughs> you yeah, don't on. know. He's from Leeds. We came wild, interrupts, and asks, oh, yeah, when's Ridge going to drop the act? And, you know, how he actually seriously wants to hurt people. Oh, was last week one of those accidents? It was it an was accident. An acc- it was actually These accident. These LWO pricks spreading this <laughs> misinformation about poor old Rich Holland. Rich shoves him against the wall before storming off. Ava apologizes to Wilde, saying she doesn't know what has gotten into Rich. We know what's <laughs> going into him. It's been very clearly laid out week by week by week. This segment made me go mad um, because I've come up with, so we know the bait and bait now. Which is an NXT uh, term for no, it's not a Tower term for um, <laughs> when it looks like something might happen next week, but it would surely be too obvious if it did, and then it does. Carlito's situation is a bit of bait and baity on uh, SmackDown, as we said. And we've got the Fed herring, which I've tried to coin, it's nice. which is where it seems like it's going to go one way. Surely they'll have to save the university in a wrestling match. No, no, calendar. That's a Fed <laughs> herring. Um, and now I'm, I'm calling this one tuning down the band because Ridge it's good, that. went mad and injured the champion. Then he couldn't handle the guilt. Then he went mad again and beat Joe Gacy down with the chair. Then he <laughs> then he trapped a man's hand in a door, and now he pushed someone lightly against a wall. They're acting like it's getting more and more serious, but they're actually tuning down the band, and I don't understand what's going on. They're going backwards. You could call that an in-your-house fire, because it's like your house has caught fire, and your favorite book has been burned but only the first few chapters have been burned away. Right. So you think the middle of the book is actually the start of the book. So what we saw here is the middle, but it's actually the start. Right, okay, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> when you said, in your house fire, I had, like, Todd Pettingill going, in your house fire yeah. this Saturday. <laughs> Cheaper than a good one. <laughs> Cheaper than a good one. Because it just ignored previous chapters. Yeah. They're but acting like... Ava's like, I don't know what's gone into him. Have you not seen? Like, he retired a week ago. Yeah. Half an hour he stood there for NXT stand and deliver the pre-show going. He stood. E, e bag gum. I can't believe it. I just, oh, just glad, bloody to hell. Still, glad to still be involved. It's so nice him. of you to invite me back. Hey. I gotta go and see my wife and my kids <laughs> and online magazine called on. <laughs> and then he then he beat up Joe Gacy with a chair. And then everyone went, You should really say sorry, and he did. <laughs> and it was fine, and now people are going, I don't know what's got into him. <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. Joe Gacy's the only man alive who can say it's not an accident when it comes to Ridge Holland yeah, doing yeah. things. He didn't look it when he was closing the door. No. Wacky and Wild, by the way, he was in out of order in this segment. He came right up to him and went like, ooh, you're a wanker, you. And then yeah. he pushed him. <laughs> yeah, basically. And he pushed him, and then Ava went, I'm so sorry, Joaquin. I don't know what's gotten into that prick. <laughs> yeah, how dare he respond with violence? See you, pa- see you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, not again, not again, not again. Ariana Grace meets up with Gigi Dolan ahead of her makeover. Yeah, that's Georgina, actually. Yeah, Georgina. Big fun. Ariana wants to go dress shopping, but Georgina reluctantly says they might as well get it over with. She suggests buying a black dress, which horrifies Ariana. Grace tells uh, Gigi to follow her guidance, and she'll be looking for a beauty queen and no, like, looking like a beauty queen in no time. Gigi is unenthused. We'll get more on this later on. Sadly, yes. It's a fantastic... Irene Grace's promos are spot on for what the gimmicks yes. that she has. As I say, the, the production's different, but the scripts are the same. Mm. I like the change in production because even the music in the background just feels more... It feels more like a film. I feel like I'm watching <laughs> a 1990s... You Mrs. Doubtfire type film. Oh. You're Richie Riches. Yeah, I know what you mean. Oh. That kind, of, that kind of that kind of very bright, wasn't it? Very yeah. bright daytime scene. Yeah, it's like when it's like when you rarely see like the friends outside of one of their flats or <laughs> or the coffee shop. And you're like, oh, they're on the streets. Yeah. Jesus. You ever watching something like Only Fools and Horses back in the day? And they go outside, and the film start changes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I, I, like, I, oh, I, they're outside now. I've never really watched Only Fools and Horses much. I only know the the big scenes. Oh, okay. But Forty Towers was the same, wasn't it? Yeah. Basil's running to his car. Oh, sorry, these cameras can't have that same. Type it looks of like thing, there's yeah. a Pruder film. Yeah, right. Oh, nice. Sorry, no, Stop I don't the know. Sabruda. 
God. Uh, but the thing is, haven't we been teasing this for months? Are we finally getting round to it Again, now? yeah, you she's been call, gone for ages, Gigi. You could call it an in-your-house fire because we've, <laughs> we've skipped to the middle chapter. We've missed the, the weeks and weeks of Gigi doing, looking like a dick have just been skipped. Yeah, yeah, this is what it's supposed to go up to, right? But yeah. then it's... Anyway, we'll get into it. This is the part where Gigi's, you know, she's taking her medicine and then she yeah. goes, well, I'm going to be myself and make a raunchy green dress. Is it raunchy? Yeah, I guess it is. We'll get, kind of. Yeah, it, it does. <laughs> well, she doesn't really... This was so written by middle-aged men. Anyway. Yes, it was. <laughs> so, tomorrow I'll leave them. Rich Holland offers Joaquin Wilde a handshake at the start of the match, but Wilde attacks him. Wait. I don't know what's gone into Rich. I'm so sorry. Sean Spears <laughs> comes out to watch the match midway through. Rich wins and stares at his own hands. Unable to come to terms with the madness and horror he continues to unleash upon NXT. Is this a dagger I see before me? Mm. He barges past the laughing Spears on his way up the ramp. <laughs> it's funny you read it like that, because I've got written on my notes, Vix obviously got a gun held to his groin under the announce table by somebody when he said, Holland's actions speak louder than his words, and I fear that he's facing demons in the darkest corners oh of his soul. God. <laughs> That's from a Peter Drury, that. <laughs> the Red Devil's dancing with delirium and delight. <laughs> I'm not, I'm falling off the Peter Drury train. Yeah, it's funny here every week. It's a bit much, uh, isn't it? Oh. Uh, but... This segment started in fantastic fashion. Booker T just doesn't give a toss. He sees the new CM Punk action figure, and he goes, <laughs> Punk's looking real jacked. <laughs> <laughs> really good from Booker T. Um, I didn't think Ridge was on very good form. To bring the discussion back to a more serious manner, oh. he was stuttering and taking that half second too long to do certain things, and it really made the match suffer. Isn't that supposed to be his... Oh, I hate him. He's not meant to be crap. Am I supposed to be different? Ah, oh, but he's battling the demons he's, in his soul as well not, as his oh, no. He's not doing it as if, like, oh, no, I shouldn't really hit him, but I'm a wrestler, so I should hit him. He's doing it because he's not very good at wrestling. <laughs> He was better. Well, they give him a good character. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he's just had an off week. Yeah, yeah he's had an off week. He is, normally, just... he is normally better than this. Yeah. Is that why Vic was getting yelled at? Say he's possessed by his devils. <laughs> That's why he's rubbish. Because if he was going like, oh, no, I'm so conflicted, bosh. That would have worked, but he was just going like, oh. oh, 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 oh. I think you're just off. Yeah, off night. We, from... we always, oh, I feel so bad sometimes. Oh, you're coming like... in and do a podcast possessed by devils and CD. Uh, sometimes we're like, oh, it's so, oh, it was crap match this week and that. And then sometimes I think, God, when wrestlers are like feeling ill and the last thing you want to do is like, get out of bed and do your job they, that's their job they've got to especially run around. with the mental illness you got with all the people in the NXT locker room thinking you're bad uh -huh. you're hurting people deliberately <laughs> when it wasn't there it wasn't his fault he put the bloody fingers in the doorway I remember asking Joe Henry once I was like what do you do if you're like really ill and you've got a show and he was like drugs wrestle the wrestle no Joe Henry's clean as balls Clean as balls. <laughs> um, Whose balls? Clean as balls. A very clean man's clean balls. I mean, if that's an advertisement for yourself, Jack, then uh, fantastic. Um, <laughs> but I was like, what do you do if uh, you feel really crap and you're really ill and you can't, you've got a match? And he went, do the match. And I was like, oh, it's not the job for me. I gave up on the dream there. No. <laughs> Well, as I sit here with my ear infection, I thought we're <laughs> off to the races with the storyline because well, How Ridge... would you hear spots being called? I can barely Watch the hear clothes you, line. Yeah. Um, Ridge did a shoulder barge, went for a pin, and then picked him up. So I was thinking, right, Sean Spears, who was at the top of the ramp, he's showing him his evil ways without overtly doing that, but Ridge is now going to be an evil man. But no, he went back the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's right. a rubbish storyline, a rubbish character, poor old Ridge. A rubbish wrestler. Mm. Well, he had an off night here. Are you willing to... Oh, all right, when was his last on night? Hey. Involved Pete Dunne and Sheamus. Hey, now. Nah. Are hey, now. Nah, hey, I'm having now. to watch this. Nah. Are I'm... you willing to admit yet, Ross, that this is no longer the best brand in WWE? Oh. Because now that the Raw's got really good. I've never said it was the best. I said it was the most fun. I'm the you must have said oh, it was the best. Right. So, yeah. There's some Jimmy like... rewriting here. No, no. I've always said it's the one I most enjoy watching. You've probably said it's like the number one brand or something. It's you know? all a sports entertainment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 got its peaks and its troughs, yeah. as everything does. The pay per views obviously the peaks. You're telling me. Drops as everything knows. Jack made a comparison to AEW yesterday, saying that, like, obviously the weekly TV doesn't always <laughs> I didn't. slap. I said but that always the, the, I said the, that the AEW. So I was looking forward to Dynasty because even though AEW's TV's been ropey, it, the pay per view's always knocking out the park. And then, like and then I Ross said, made the comparison yeah, yeah, yeah. to NXT. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ross said, yes, because obviously NXT is the number one brand. In the, the, right, I, that's yeah. right. I was there. Uh, I am, I am just on a, on a state of the union address sort of thing. I am worried about the future of NXT because they have said they're going to try and make it the third brand again, and I hope it doesn't lose. We all know what happened. But they last have time. been doing that. No, but I don't, I hope what? Like the developmental. 
I suppose. Do you know what I mean? Between I mean, they've been doing a good job of mixing the two. We've had like, all the guest stars come out and go and bloody Natalia and Ivar. We don't want to go back to Killer Cross. Don't want to go back to 2020, 2021, do we? Yeah, we're, that's when no, Matthew we started to really hate it. Exactly. We all kind of did start to hate it. Because well. it, it also it has to be said, on Wednesdays, it was like, okay, AEW, fresh, vibrant, you exciting, dub the B, NXT, everybody doing the exact same match. I would... Kick pads. Yeah. I'd rather it either... When oh, it is going to be that, because Cross is back at NXT. Oh, it? don't. I'll be oh, so sad. no. I might retire from NXT's the NXT's final testament. That's... <laughs> oh. I'd rather it actually Makes stay the now. same than... Then go back to the weird hybrid. As much as what I bitched about, like the thing we've just been talking about, yeah, I prefer seeing that. I'm with Ross. At least there's the funness of going, what the hell is this? Because yeah. it's all about variety. Can't just watch the same, same type of match over and over no, again. Yeah. It's like the same type of wrestling. It takes you back to being a child in the 90s, doesn't it? Yeah, I watched some crap as Your a kid. TL in the 90s. Hoppers and all that. Bring them back in NXT. Up the TL Hopper. Up the TL Hopper. <laughs> <laughs> the Goon. The Goon. <laughs> Bastion Booger. Anyway, not him. He's terrible. Him <laughs> with his with his uh, oh, what was his finishing move called? That was about like a, a clinker on the bum hole. Oh, oh, what was it? I can't remember the name of it, but it wasn't. But <laughs> it didn't another, do anything for anybody. Yeah, another word for a, p- a piece of poo that was stuck to your bum. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. Oh, like a dingleberry. Yeah. That's like a, that. Oh, the dingleberry. When he did Bastion Booger. That tea bag finisher, whatever that finisher was called, was a d- another name for. Yeah. I still don't know what a dewdrop is, but I know it wasn't a nice name for Piper Niven to be called. Even Marie gave it, didn't it? Made, made Vince, sense. Vince McMahon gave her the name. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, backstage, the doctor cautiously clears Josh Briggs to wrestle, but advises him to take it easy. So don't clear him then, yeah. Doc. Yeah. I can't can't doctors. Run, Hello, rubbish. doctor, I can't breathe. Oh, you've got two <laughs> broken ribs. You're fine to wrestle. Just take it easy, though, if you want, yeah. but who cares? And it's, it's almost funny, isn't it? Just, yeah, it's all right, take it easy. Ivar arrives. <laughs> <laughs> and agrees. He thinks JB should wait before going after Oberfemi again. Oh, but he has a proposition. Since Ivar beats... Sorry, wait. What was it? Once Ivar beats Ober and becomes North American champion, he'll give Brex... <sighs> hey? It's a long time since I'll be breakfast. Briggs, <laughs> the next title shot. J- <laughs> JB doesn't like the sound of that. So instead, they agreed to have a number one contender match tonight. But you have, you'd have more time to recover. It's Ivar the Crafty Viking. That's uh, what it is. Yeah, and he's been a crafty saying, You don't need to read this, Matthew. Because just, just. he's saying, like, oh, take some time off so I can have Ober. Oh, you just get to the back of the queue there, son. Mm. Pressuring him into having yeah. the match now. Reverse psychology. You jump off that bridge, JB. Ivar the Cerebral Viking. Yeah, he's very <laughs> cerebral. Time to row the ship. But this is where we saw <laughs> evidence of Wendy. It's mead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Wendy Chew still alive because there is a Chew Crew picture in the background. Ah. That's what it said. Chew Crew with a picture of her going. Hey. Who's in the Chew Crew? Was just that her, her fans? Just, it was just her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Where is she though? Don't know. Oh, she's plotting something big. Yeah, she's l- bought a mansion and she's kitting it out. For loads her. of balls falling from the ceiling <laughs> and that. that's her sort of thing, isn't it? Space hoppers. <laughs> just a Mr. Beast episode. Right? Yeah. Brindley <laughs> uh, Reese. Oh. Leads Malik. <laughs> Every segment I was being Reese with that. Oh. Rini Reese leads Malik and Edris in a TikTok workout as they prepare for their match against the AOP. No, not the AOP. The Alp. Alp. The Alp. <laughs> it's funny when our truth does it. Yeah. <laughs> She's very excited, but they don't want her at ringside. Yeah, and Idris oh, also just never thinks. His gimmick now is that he never thinks they can win. He's always like, "Oh, we're going to get battered here, Malik." And Malik's like, "No, come on." But why Why are these three friends? I know why uh, Malik and Edris are, but where, where's Bryn fit in? Yeah, Bryn, I don't know why they still let her like hang out with her. The, the start, they're walking with her to the gym. Yeah. Leave. Go uh, away from her. So obviously she came around when they were trying to find confidence when they were facing who was it a few weeks ago. Yeah, well, they lost anyway. Yeah, they, they lost the game. Yeah. So just get rid of her. Get rid. Bryn fit. Maybe one of them fancies her. <laughs> The Hale Lando Chase meet backstage. Oh, this was emotional. <laughs> Again, another off. Chase admits that JC was telling the truth last week. He really did bet on Hale to win the NXT Women's Championship. We know. You said that last week, Andre. We didn't need you to say it again. Which is because she's she, exposition. Last, last week yeah, she stormed off. Exposition 101. Yeah, yeah. It's a course he teaches. D Exposition X or something. Hey. But he couldn't bear to see her suffer and threw in the towel, no matter how much it cost him. Thea asks why he didn't tell her this when she was rebelling against him. Andre says because it was written last week. Oh, sorry. Andre says it was his mistake and Thea didn't sign up for any of it. Thea says she's sorry for ever dying, Mr. Chase, and they hug. 
I still think Mr. Chase is a sussy boy. I do. No, no, yeah, he's too. just no. crap. He's not sus. He put the future of all of his students in, at risk, and he and he's been forgiven this quickly, has he? Because he got the money back, didn't he? She was on the brink of dying. Was Thea Hill? Yeah. And despite all the monetary, you know, ramifications of what he did, he put her health first. Yeah, but he should never have put the bet on in the first place. He shouldn't have. But we do all make mistakes in life. That was a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we made plenty of them on this podcast. But Who's imagine, imagine being Thea Hale uh-huh. and knowing that he put all that money on on the line, and then just said, "To hell with the money! I care more about you." You'd feel like a god. <laughs> You'd feel like you were ten foot tall. It's great man management from Andre. It is really good man management. <laughs> you just got to know sometimes when to put an arm around somebody Ooh. and when not to bet hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> You're singing Kenny Rogers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to know. And I always think Kenny Rogers needs a good cough before he starts singing. A good cough. Mm. Kale is always like, oh, he sounds brooding and sexy, doesn't he? I'm like, no, he just sounds like he needs a good, like, <coughs> you know when to hold him. You know, he does that voice at the start. He's like, when the cold well. <laughs> What are the Kenny Rogers songs, are they? Because my brain started going uh, like, danger zone. But that's obviously Kenny Loggins. I'm, oh, is that Loggins? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, yours is Kenny Rogers. Yeah. My brain started going like, highway. I was like, no, no, wrong one, wrong one. He's yeah. not. Yeah, he's not the gambler. It is Kenny Rogers though, isn't it? Kenny Loggins does the Top Gun stuff. No, no, yeah, we're not Tom. Tom. I, I, was I know uh, that was my. Yeah, I was oh, street, okay, yeah, yeah I'd be freaking out going. Yeah. It is Kenny Rogers, though, isn't it? I learned recently. If I, I ever thank God for that. Obviously, you know how like, you know, like Orson Welles uh, did a. Didn't he do like a radio play when he was before he was big? Awesome. Well, like he did a War of the Worlds on the radio. He did. He and Americans thought one, yeah. some Americans thought it was real. Yeah. And I and my brain's never gone. But that was H.G. Wells who wrote uh, War of the Worlds. I've, I've made that mistake. So I've always just been like, wait, did Orson Wells also write War of the Worlds <laughs> when he was like 20? <laughs> but no. Oh, bless you. Uh, it's my goal to look like Kenny Rogers in 25 years. We'll do a, a cultaholic, like, you know, meet up again after... He looks like Paul well, Hollywood. sitting at the table. Yeah, and I'll... <laughs> I'm going to come back looking like Kenny Rogers there. Is he oh, deliberately you, dressed you, like you Gandalf there? Gandalf? Gandalf the cowboy. <laughs> Oh, sorry, the, the shadow... Remember we shot Sauron with a magnum? <laughs> the shadow cut off the back half of his Stetson and it just looked like a pointy <laughs> wizard's hat. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you tell yourself. <laughs> yeah. Kenny Rogers, the wizard. <laughs> he doesn't concern himself with cheap tricks. <laughs> right, but I... Cheap t- tricks, it's just him doing card tricks. <laughs> I'm Is this glad- your card, Soren? Whoa. I'm just happy that Thea Hale and Andre Chase have, have reconciled after last week. Because I <laughs> thought she was very hasty in running away. But she is a child, of course. Of course she's a child. Yes. Yes. I'm not get- sure where this is going, though. Can't I've wait. written down, I hope they get married. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's a... It's, mm. <coughs> I, mean, I, I appreciate you. What would Riley Osborne say about that? <laughs> She's my pocket rocket. Oh, crikey. It's a... Are they just friends now then? I've used all my pocket money to buy you some out. <laughs> it's, a, it's a refresher bar from it's shop. A, it's a copy of the dandy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. The, uh, have you thought this... Uh, what an episode of NXT <laughs> this was, because this, this is the main event as far as I'm concerned. The D'Angelo family made their way to the ring. Oh, I hated this segment. I'm going to read, do the read. Oh, Ross, I did. I'll do a Thea Hale in this podcast. I'm about to storm out in a huff. No, this was really bad. All right, let me read the entire thing out. I'm sure we've all got thoughts, and then we'll come back to it. Tony says, despite not becoming NXT champion, he's in a better place than he was last year when he faced some pretty serious allegations. He puts over the other members of the family, but is interrupted by the no-quarter catch crew. Charlie Dempsey isn't happy that their secret meeting last week was made public. Tony says it's not his fault they couldn't get the job done themselves and had to ask them to take care of one of their own. Okay. Implying that the D'Angelo family have killed and murdered <laughs> Drew Gula. They never killed and murdered? Yeah. Killed <laughs> and <laughs> murdered. What was I on? Unalived Brian. Drew Gulak. Brian Alvarez, that one for sure. Killed sure. and <laughs> murdered. Just to make sure he's not on the show anymore, they, got, they paid him twice. Tony wants payment for the murdering and killing, but Charlie didn't realize that was the case. He thought Tony just wanted to help the crew for the good of the business. Luca Crucifino says they can settle the debt right now, or the family will handle this the way they always do. Either Charlie or Tony forget their lines and stand awkwardly for a bit. Honestly, this was. <laughs> yeah, then thought, Tony finally well. reveals. <laughs> Charlie goes, 
Have you got anything else you want to say, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> Prompt. Then Tony finally reveals he wants a shot at the Heritage Cup. Charlie refuses, so the family attack the crew and clear the ring. Well, go on, Ross. I know you want I'll to let Jack something. go first. Jack seems to be up in arms about a great segment. <laughs> it went on for <laughs> so long with neither of them saying anything. I don't really have a problem with the Gulag stuff. It's a funny way to write him off if they want to write him off. But the the bit where I'm waiting between... I'm waiting for them to get to the point and that Tony wants to go to the Heritage Cup or at least they want to wrestle each other and they're just for ages going like, how dare you deal with the mob and not expect to pay for it? Which is true. Charlie's the biggest idiot in the world. He didn't mm. deal with the mob and didn't expect to have to pay. Um, and then they're going, well, uh, we're strong and proud wrestlers and we're pro And then Tony's going... Will you dare interrupt me in the middle of my promo? And then as as we've said, Charlie then goes, out else, mate? And Tony goes, yeah, I want their cup. <laughs> maybe it was a bit, maybe it was because, again, maybe I'm thick and old. I didn't know what they were referring to about that thing that we did because I thought, oh, they're going to be talking about something and well, next week it's going to be revealed. It wasn't until I went online and went, people, then people going, I think Sean Rossap going, yeah, they've killed Gulak. I'm like, oh, yeah, because they've done that with... Uh, two dimes. Two dimes, Did, right. They had a meeting last week backstage, Matthew, where they, took, yeah. they spoke about it. It's not, it's no, but it was... It's it not was, their fault you can't follow along. Because <laughs> they, they never said what the meeting was about, though. But because <laughs> if they're being deliberately vague because they don't mm. want to go, don't worry, Drew Gulak's yeah. been accused of something, so we've killed him. So they're being very cute about it, going, that thing, you know. No, but Which, they, coincidentally, was how mobsters used to say things because they didn't want to say over the phone, mm. I've murdered that person. So they go, <laughs> the thing... But, okay, so well done for sticking in character. So I'm like, all right, what thing are we talking about here? Not realizing they're actually just doing that in kayfabe rather than just ignoring it. No, and, but uh, why would they admit to doing a murder on internationally broadcast television? Well, Tony but, Yeah, good, but then I'm like... Tony kept going like, whoa, 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 yeah, yeah. no specific. The thing, the thing, yeah, so I'm Wait, like... why am I gonna... defending the second? Because Char <laughs> Charlie says there was trash... Charlie it... says... <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. Charlie says there was trash and that he'd be taken care of, and you did the industry some good too. That's why he didn't think he had to pay. He didn't think he had to pay. Because this is the mob! Because the industry is now better off because of Tony's family's actions. Tony. But I fully understand that Tony would want payment for such a thing because that's what the, the done thing is. To me, that's so big. It's like, oh, it's, it's setting up. What is the secret? And I was like, no, there's someone Drew Gulak. I'm like, really? Well, I didn't watch it from that perspective because I'd already seen the reports before. Oh, all right. Well, we watch you about looking. I'm going, I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Uh, oh, God. Drew Gulak straight away. He wasn't there. The, the no quarter catch crew came out. He wasn't oh, there. He must not be there. They must have killed and murdered him. The mobster must have killed and murdered the guy who wasn't there who they're referring to without overtly saying. Well, I saying. mean, if you want good meat, go to a butcher, so... He even addressed the rumours from this time last year, because this time last year he was getting accused of murdering pretty deadly. But the lake, as we all know, was shallow, so they got away. That was never... It was oh, never, I thought they were talking no. about the bloody... The, the gallus thing. That I went thought on. Yeah, they were no, talking no, about the, no, they no, talking about the gallus thing, because... We can't again, we'll make this we, even longer we than never, last week's We never found out what he was in jail for with the Joe Coffee feud. That was just for crimes. That, that, that was that was a silly fake thing. This is a... No, no, we've really got rid of someone yeah yeah they've actually killed Drew gulag i'm surprised oh. you two didn't IRL. like it because there was a apparently there was a film reference where he says are you talking to me no, that's oh, actually, i've never seen it but yeah. Yeah. i thought you would like that uh, uh, I just like the bit where no they... john michaels likes watching films goes we're gonna put that <laughs> next thing next thing we'll shove that in i didn't like the bit where the two of them literally forgot their lines and just stood there uh, to begin with, I thought, oh, that's good. They're building tension. Oh, so what? I'm thinking, oh, that's good. The card lads are going to go, well, come on, mobsters. Ooh, mm. we're scared. <laughs> and like, oh, they're forgotten. Charlie right. gets the mic and goes, sighs into the mic. He goes, is there anything else you want to say? And I don't know whether <laughs> Tony forgot that he was meant to challenge for the Heritage Cup or whether Charlie has missed a bit in his mind and thought that, I don't know whose fault it was, but... I hope that whoever's fault it was feels It didn't silly. take away from the segment because it was already a crap segment to begin so with. Bad. No, I appreciated Charlie's Kavorka because uh, last week we saw, two weeks ago we saw Ilya Dragunov. He could have been killed if Tony wanted to, but he didn't. He took it for a meal instead. Yet Charlie's there calling him a scumbag and a two-bit gangster in wrestling boots. I appreciate that Kavorka. Okay. And so he doesn't what? want to just besmirch the Heritage Cup by... Yeah. But then again, Tony could win the cup and because it's gold, 24 karat gold, I assume, he could pawn it. And get his money that way. 16 karat gold. Hey, oh, he's, he's German. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, at bloody Stand and Deliver, the evil mobster who was threatened to kill and eat oh, earlier. Not this again from he's you. He's like, no, not I want to do again. it the proper way. Capiche? And now he's back to, oh, I killed that lad. 
Matthew, you just need to accept. Oh wait, no, he is a face if he's killed Gulak. But it's the mo- it's the motives. You're not going to kill the world champion and then get the world championship, oh. are you? You got to win the world championship to get the world championship. You can kill Drew Gulak. He didn't have a title. He's just one of these good old fashioned mobsters back in the day with it's just kill lads. Yeah, that's how wrestling <laughs> works. Yeah, to win a title, you got to wrestle for the title. <laughs> unless, kill a bloke. Unless you're Triple H. Why would I cheer him? Why would I cheer him? His family's <laughs> murderous. Family, because they're doing good for the business. They're getting rid of weirdos like Drew Gulak, allegedly. Is this allegedly or is it? I don't know. I can't believe allegedly murdered or allegedly. I can't believe the weirdo. So long on this really bad. Yeah, anyways, move on. They've murdered the podcast. I'll say that they have. Honestly, Ilya Dragunov uh, comes out for his open challenge, and the locker room empties to try and run away. Sorry, to accept first. Uh, Javon Evans comes out from the crowd and springboards into the ring so the match begins kind of hey up. they did this before didn't they I was they've done to... it with Nathan Fraser I think that was but it. it kind of backs up Ross's point that Ilya's a coward <laughs> by doing an open challenge because the he's, youngest he's in the rookie. rookie the roster yeah, yeah. What, what's he supposed to say nah you're, you're too young I don't want you he's, he's a coward just, he should have challenged Oberfemi exactly <laughs> or at the very least Ivar <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was watching everybody this week. Uh, Ilya wins after valiant effort from Evans and the shake hands. We need to watch that entrance for Javon because he uh, there must have been a trampoline on the floor because he can't be that bouncy because he comes between the announcers over the announce table and then boings onto the ring. That can't have been without a performance enhancing trampoline. No, <laughs> <laughs> who was it? Trampoline on PEDs. <laughs> who used to use that? Was it Sincar? Sincar, yeah, Sincar, absolutely. <coughs> Scripts maybe as well. Scripts has had a couple. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought. Elia in the early going made that boy pay his dues with the big chops because they were very spicy. And then Javon, unbelievable scenes. Just the moves he did. I don't need to list them all. The shoot Spanish fly out of nowhere was uh, my pick because Vic audibly almost pissed himself on commentary. It was fantastic. Um, a massive chop and a knee and a kick out. It would have been the worst thing if the match ended there, but it didn't. Uh, but a, a deadlift bit, which looked it made Elia look very hard, I thought, even though Javon's quite slight for a wrestler but still the fact he deadlifted him before doing the old torpedo in Moscow of Moscow Moscow looked very good that's how, I think that's that's how we should pronounce it it yeah. just feels yeah. weird being in English and going Moscow yeah. Glasgow Birmingham oh I get you if you're Birmingham like Glasgow, yeah. Alabama yeah <laughs> it's in the Midlands man. what are they on about yeah weirdos uh, that was a lovely description of the match I thought it was very much like Angle Cena from 02 like that type of like yeah, yeah like the it. slaps at the start Yes. He's okay, got... kid, let's see what you're made of. Yeah, I liked it but, as well. you know, from a big old Russian-German lad. I'm excited to see what Javon does in the future. And I bet heels are queuing up to wrestle him because he makes people look really... He's like Springy Ziggler type seller. Yeah. From yeah. The... yeah. He's coming to beat him up. Mm. Backstage, Carmen Petrovic is interviewed by Rancid, Kelly Clancid. She stinks. <laughs> She's going to train Natalia Phoenix in the underground match against Lola Vice. She loves Scar Punk. Lola interrupts and says it doesn't matter how much Carmen teaches Natalia because she has someone even better in her corner. Here comes the money! Is that who's going to be? It's got to be. Come yeah, on. Yeah, 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 it's got to be. Right. Although, I mean, I was saying that under the guise of forgetting NXT Underground was already a thing, so it's not going right. to be shame of mine. Who is it going to be? My dreams have been tarnished already. Can't be Electra Lopez because they turn on each other. Beth Phoenix. <laughs> Ooh, that would make <laughs> sense. Know. I'm trying to think the, the ying to Natalia's yang. Or the Yang uh, to Natalia's Ying. Charlotte Flo, but that's not going to happen. No. Who's tied to Lola Vice? Electra Lopez was for a bit until they fell out. Yeah. Mm. Um, I honestly have no idea. Brett the Hitman Hart. <laughs> <It's just> Brett. <laughs> She's got Brett with her. Yeah. What? He'd love NXT. Was Brett a shooter? Uh, he, he did on Vince, according to him. <laughs> I remember people saying that if, if the screwjob had gone wrong... For Sean, then Brett could have battered him if he wanted. Yeah. Okay. I can't imagine Sean in a real fight without flopping around and just <laughs> <laughs> taking one punch, you won't go and do the roll of the floor. Yeah. 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 Tatum packs the. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, big pardon. In Neva's office, Saul Rooker is sick of Blair Davenport. Here, here. Saul asks for a no DQ match against Blair at Spring Breaking. Ava asks if she's sure. Saul says yes. She won't stop until Blair has to be carried out of the arena. Like Brian Danielson. She's such a good GM. She's really good. Consider it. Normal GMs would go, no, it's my job to make the matches. You be quiet there, subordinate. But Ava's <laughs> like, eh, you do me job for us, fair enough. But later on, when someone got too big for her boots, Ava went the other way, and rightly so. She came down hard and fair. because <laughs> yeah, she was massive compared to her. I wrote that Ava down. Ava should challenge for the yeah, NXT oh my Women's God. Challenge. <laughs> 
<laughs> is Ava the Uber? Potentially. Ava, <laughs> Ava. <laughs> oh, she, she'd bad Adam Pearce. <laughs> I'm sorry, Roxanne, I've cancelled your scheduled match and your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> it's me! The final boss! <laughs> the tribal chief! <laughs> Why has she called herself the final boss yet? Yeah, she's literally the boss of NXT. Yeah, yeah, she's she's the first boss. Yeah. <laughs> she's the end of level three. <laughs> she's, she's the training segment. Oh. Oh. You bitch. Yeah, oh, yeah I am a bit. Um, <laughs> Tay and Paxi wins a match against Thea Hale after interference from JC Jane and Jasmine Nix. Thea dives on JC after the bell, and JC have to drag her away. Back in the ring, Lyra sneaks into attack Tatum, and they brawl as refs try to break it up. Mm. The highlight of this for me was Booker trying to explain his th- thought process to Vic and saying, "Well, have you ever heard of a? Uh, you know, I think she's like Buddy Landell. Have you ever heard of Ric Flair?" And Vic just goes, "No, Booker, I've never heard of Ric Flair. Who is he?" <laughs> <laughs> Completely sandbagging him. I appreciated Tatum's little bits in between the moves. A okay. little bits of character. It's the little things AJ Styles told us once upon a time, and she was doing them. She'd been watching tapes of Victoria and doing it better, by God. But my move of the week, Joel, I've done the thing in the wrong order, is the chin tarantula. Oh, my. Oh, oh baby. I've said that wrong, haven't I? Chin. Oh, I know. Uh, I don't know what that <laughs> So well, she, she, like that. she mounts yeah. her. Uh, Tatum mounts her opponent and then flips her over and does like a tarantula on her back while hoisting the chin backwards. Oh, the face. The, it yeah, looked, yeah. It looked gnarly. I don't know what it was, but it looked like it would hurt. The only reason I know that hold is because Mil Mascaris used to do it. Really? Well, I, well, I never. I couldn't tell you what the hell it was called. Like, Tatum packs. That's what we're talking about. I've no. never seen that move done before in my life. Do you think she can do it on... Do you, think she can only, do you think she can only do it on someone as small as the hell? Do you think she yeah. can do it on everyone? Oh, she's in the diamond mind. I reckon they would do some. Yeah. You know. I said it was a move that you do, like, like, maybe it's just my family, but like if your grandparent had a family? baby. Family? <laughs> grandparent had a baby, they'd be like, eh, in a similar position. Okay, yeah, okay. I wouldn't lock their face and try and rip it apart. No. <laughs> Depends, man. I'd just hold them yeah. up the arms and go, we're not your rats. No, I'm not watching Noddy. <laughs> <laughs> up the Noddy. Great guy. Um, Jasmine Nix I thought was interesting in her attire because she was sort of dressed like a student yeah the, the distraction from the world's smallest slam by Thea Hill it's, see how it's writing like that it makes you a fan of NXT Jasmine had, uh, <laughs> she'd you been hanging out so. with Ariana Grace because she'd been styled differently mm. okay okay sweet okay. silence I, awesome. had, I like the heat being returned to the JC Jane thing because that's who she went for straight away as soon as she saw it, which was good and then Lyra's in there as well it's a tangled web this NXT malarkey. It is. There's, there's action popping off all over the well, place. Well, this is the bit I'm not interested in seeing where it goes. So Everything yeah, weaves together. Yes. Tremendous. Why did Chase you keep stopping Thea from kicking ass? They were dragging her because off. Because he's concerned about her. It was all of them. They're the, all concerned about her. The MVP was there. Riley was there. Get off her, me little pocket rocket. <laughs> Come here, you. Yeah, go on. I've got you a Calypso drink. Yeah. From <laughs> this shop. <laughs> Don't squeeze it too hard or the juice will come. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! No, I'm sorry, I didn't. I'm sorry. The children, for goodness' sake. <laughs> They're not, but also, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> the backstage interview: Roxanne Perez is content to let Lyra and Tatum destroy each other rather than focus on her title. She'll let them beat each other to a pulp before easily defending the belt against whoever survives. Roxanne doesn't see how Ava, the title screen job, is so hard, but Ava overhears this. She books a triple threat match at spring break and instead Perez is fuming. Yeah. But she doesn't say out because Ava's massive. <laughs> yeah, that was my first yeah. bit. Ava is so tall. You know when Gandalf stands up and say, <laughs> Bilbo Baggins. Uh, <laughs> she also said womp womp. She yeah. did say womp womp. So sometimes she says things that show that she's like, I was going to say down with the kids. She's one of the kids, isn't she? She's very She's a kid, yeah. yeah. Oh. So I think it's like, Oh, womp, that's womp. a shame. Womp womp. That shows yeah. how old I am. I thought I was just going to be directive on like on the script, going like, ah, oh, womp womp. It, I think For it's... her not to go like, womp womp. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. right. She's actually saying it, but, it's, but people do. I know it from Archer, well, uh, and I started doing it oh, for a bit. Archer. I, I think I've, I'm, it's only just recently I've stopped doing it, I think. Emissary of the Gorgonites. No, no. Oh, different Archer. The James Bond type man. <laughs> well, <that's... laughs> Cartoon. That was good. That wasn't. Yeah, it was great. But like, did it get bad? It just got uh, like. I think they got bored of doing a spy show, so it's like, on this week, something different. You're like, no. Nah. Didn't they turn into like guerrilla fighters in the jungle? Yeah, like, okay. and then they were 
doing a detective agency. Okay. I'm like, okay, you, I'm, I'm lost here. But yeah, they would go like, oh, that's bad. Womp womp. Like, okay. it sounds like you're just saying a sound effect. Like, yeah. oh, no. But I like the Kavorka of Ava because obviously Roxanne was angling for a singles match. And she was like, eh, eh. Yeah. You heel. Ava never gets anything wrong. She's like... What is she like? Barack Obama. <sighs> Sir Gareth Southgate. <laughs> oh. Can't wait for Phil Fun to be on the bench in the summer. Can't wait for us to win the Euros <laughs> and for you to be silenced. And all the other critics of Gareth. That man's a saint. Yeah. Hey, football's coming home again. You found the Dury Gareth, right? No, no, Southgate. No, no, oh, no, 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 so easy to get the two mixed not up. the Twitter man. <laughs> Who's the Twitter man? Some guy called WWE Gareth who always tweets, like, he's one of, like, the tribalistic... Oh, uh, arsehole. Isn't he? Have I got that right? Oh, sorry, I was just trying to do a little joke, yeah. I okay. think so. But... I thought, oh, is he one of your it's friends? It's not gone well, really, has it? Uh, yeah. I've got... Oh, Roxanne... is he one of your friends? No, I don't think so. Okay, oh. fair enough. I've not met him. Yeah, he's an arsehole. Maybe I've met him, I don't know. Um, I know, sweet, people that fans... People that fans... People that shows where there's fans should have, like, a little thing going, what your username is... Anyway, no, they shouldn't because Twitter's not real life. Yeah. Damn it. I keep on forgetting that. <laughs> uh, Prez ruled here. Hey, I defended my title easily. Why is Lyra always complaining? I knew you would like this bit because you like when a heel thinks logically. Yeah, she sounded more like Ilya here than ever, which worked really well. <laughs> She's getting good. Yeah. She's getting better. She's, She's finally so getting much good better here. when it's not a really tightly scripted in ring. Right. Thing. Backstage, yeah. away from Shawn Michaels' script. Yeah. She must have hidden from him. <laughs> they waited for him to go by and go, I'll just add a little bit. And she uh, sounded really good here. After this, Booker, uh, Vic goes, Well, Booker, looks like Roxanne's getting a taste of her own medicine or getting her just desserts. And you wait to see what Booker's got to say about that. But because it's his daughter, there's just dead air. <laughs> say no, he went, Just desserts. Oh, you know what? I'll go for some Bonoffi <laughs> pie right now. Round the Uber Eats. Not biscotti. Biscotti. No, I don't, <laughs> don't want to drag it in there. Um, the AOP win their match against Edris and Malik. Aop! Yeah. But the funny thing is, I don't know if this meant anything to anybody else. Booker said this match was announced, quote, on 411 Mania earlier today on the internet. Did he? And I went, what? 411 Mania? 411 Mania? Normally they'd be like, ESPN have right. said this. I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> Completely out of left This field. got announced on the EW Battlegrounds forum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm one of them from back in the day. On crazymax.org. I don't know that one. Ah, uh, that's a bit more uh, okay. obscure and silly. But yeah, it was just, all right. I'm, yeah. I'm very out of nowhere. Reference to 411 Mania, where I used to get all my news and stuff from. Have, the rest I, of them. have I been pranked by the cool Twitter kids, right? Or did someone... It was like the Amy Winehouse biopics coming out soon, right? And people started tweeting. No, about, it's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that real? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Amy Winehouse was a big. It doesn't seem real, does big it? Big internet but... wrestling fan. Yeah, because um, Ian, Cl- Ian Drew Ice. Cl- I can never say that play name. Yeah. He found the her account. It was just like like so and so. And there's that footage of her driving by the WF New York. He's going, oh, the wrestle there. And whoever's doing the coordinates. So she's not actually... goes, there's China wrestle. But there. not just like. And a... she went, yeah. He went, cool. But she wasn't just like a. WWE, she was an online. Yeah, right. Board There's a difference member. between, oh, yeah, I watch it on TV, so you're on Figure Four Weekly. That's crazy. She was that. prime oh. age, though, wasn't she, for like the, the big pop, 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 yeah, of the, yeah. pop of the business. Pop, 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 pop. But still, it's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Anyway. I wonder hey, if she watched Santino. Is it the driver? Oh, what was it? Is it trying to make you watch The Condemned? I said, no, no, no. It's. <laughs> Mm. Do you remember Santino? Like, <laughs> oh, really? No, oh, I thought no. it'd be right up your alley. Oh, no. He started mocking Austin's crap film, The Condemned. That does sound good. Yeah, well, I think it was during my time off. That. That's that's oh, like, yeah. it was like a really good bit. It's a sad fact. Austin can't act. <laughs> oh no. He'll get a oh, well, whatever. Austin must have taken that to heart. He'll yeah. get a stunner from that. Yeah, he didn't take a and stunner. A scratching but Santino, like, yeah, people are like, yeah, you're really funny. I get mauled Ooh. by Poncho. <clears throat> what a little rascal. Yeah. What do you think of this match? I thought the AOP looked amazing here. Yeah. Everything they did looked very stiff. There was an elevated throw into Rezar, who just thwacked Edris into the corner, oh, which was amazing. Uh, the assisted go to sleep they did, that's what I called it, where they, one of them threw and the other one did a knee. Yeah. Uh, okay. It was very, very good. Both the commentators got their serious voices on and went, oh, he's dead. <laughs> oh, he kicked out. Oh, hey. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Then we get to the bit where Malik is being thrown into Edris while Edris is doing a toe pay. Yeah. Oh, Booker's like, Charmel, put the kids to bed. <laughs> Did they, is, is this the match where someone did a dive and got caught in midair? That's what I was just saying. Yeah. Yeah. And then they used him to... Yeah, yeah the ball gave him another dive. I don't think the camera's really captured how cool that looked. Yeah, because he went... Just yeah. spiked his head into the yeah. paper. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was going to be your move of the week, actually. It wasn't. Oh, it should have been, but yeah. it wasn't. Oh, it could have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Instead, I gave it the weird last doing a tarantula on the mat. That's all right. Um, but yeah, they looked amazing there. They should be on the main roster. It's a shame they're shackled by the final testament. Yep. Yes. yes. And then Nathan, every week. And then Nathan Brazier and Axiom arrive and talk trash from the ramp. Uh, thankfully, we can't hear either of it. <laughs> holding up their tag belts. Oh, I don't mind them now that they're just wrestler lads and they talk less. Yeah. Sounds harsh, but... I oh, know I'd love to see Nathan say something and the AOP just flatten them. Oh, yeah. they're right behind me, aren't they? Both of them. Oh, no. Now, listen, smack <laughs> Uh, AOP, I think the, the P would stand for piss. Huh? Uh, uh, How old are you? You could be OAP. <laughs> oh, uh, that's a lot more clever than what I'm 23. <laughs> oh, it doesn't work, does it? Akim and Razor. And, uh, plus, you look way older than me. Oh, yeah, that's Akim true. and Razor are younger than me and Ross. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course just, they are. just look at them. You're like, what? what? Just look at me. We well, we've got our fathers to blame for that. I'm sorry. That's, we have our fathers to that's blame. Just, <laughs> that's proper genetics. You said your there. brother's like six foot five. He is, yeah. That's oh. my father. Why do you give all that semen to him? Hmm? Yeah. <sighs> that's how it works. We join Ayana Grace and Gigi Dolan in the dress shop. Grace picks oh. out a green dress. Gigi hates it. She forces her to try it on. So Gigi customizes the dress, making it all cool and emo. Ariana <laughs> drops her handbag in horror. GT <laughs> feels confident ahead of spring break and tells the cashiers that Grace is paying. Then Grace says, do you take card? And she had like is it eight cards. This Classic. is not what I want expected from an NXT forfeit match stipulation. I thought we were going to get Tiffany Stratton in the ranch. Yeah. I thought we were going to get Gigi done up like a, a lady and hating every second of it. And right. then eventually the next week she can get revenge or whatever. But instead, fed her in. She just... She was just enjoying it. She made it her own. And that's heartwarming in that. Mm. Great, good for her. Where's the jeopardy? Where's the stakes? Right. This was an Ariana disgrace. I can't believe the attractive woman looked nice in a dress. <sighs> I'm fuming. <laughs> They've skipped several chapters here. Yeah. We've missed off a big bit where Gigi's making the, as Jack said, wear stuff she's done want to wear. I find it an astonishing achievement that she managed all that in a, in a changing room. There's no sewing so, so machines in there. You heard this. She had some scissors. All she had was a pair of scissors. <laughs> Where did she get those from? Glue, I guess. I mean, it's an yeah. astonishing achievement. If Gigi, if the wrestling doesn't work out, become a seamstress. That's what I would do. That's the advice I would have for her. That was almost like an insult, isn't it? The, you old seamstress. The, <laughs> the men in their 50s who run NXT have just realized that girls can be goths as well. <laughs> that's what's happened here. No, I think like men in the 50s, they think that's how they change dresses. It's like, oh, I like this dress, but let me just modify it. <laughs> with the sewing machine we bring with us. It's like Grand Theft Auto. Shopping like out. Going into a Grand Theft Auto barber shop. He's coming out with <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Having no hair. Yeah. yeah. Coming out with hair. Yeah, it's a uh, shame. That's the. It's a shame. It's not been done properly. And I've got to call it out when it's not good and this wasn't good. Oof. Oh, you feel so, uh, This the, was the bit that wasn't good. The pain in your voice. You have to say something <laughs> critical at NXT. Because it's, it's, it's an open goal and they've put it wide. Yeah. They've Diana Rossed it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that as a verb. <laughs> Kamala Hayes is interviewed on his way. No, no, no. no that no, World no, Cup no. ended with a missed penalty as well. Yeah. Oh. Began and ended with someone. It's like poetry. Yeah. Ivar, a Viking, once again, beats Josh <laughs> Briggs. Bad ribs. Obafemi is interviewed backstage and says he finds Ivar's performance interesting. He leaves, knocking down Oromensa again on the way. I find it very interesting that rancid Kelly Klanske can just waltz into the men's locker room like that. <laughs> Anyone could have been it naked. She might have been hanging out with um, Elton. <laughs> Prince, not... Oh, no, he's not. He's, he's on not the main there. roster, man. Yeah, what am I talking main. about? Sorry. Yeah, she needs to be a bit more careful. Um, Oro, that, that callback was nice from Stan and Deliver, where the door shot took him down from over, and it's done it again. As for the match, Ivar was wrestling like he'd left the oven on. He was going that quick. There was a nice side slam from JB. He then did a splash afterwards. Think more. This yeah. is my main thing with Seth Rollins. I'm going to compare. I'm going to speak about JB and Seth Rollins in the same sense. We're not about their wrestling ability. Wow. Because they always forget about their injuries. Yes, and I say is. always for JB. This is the first time he's done it. <laughs> but I'm going to paint him with the same brush I paint with Seth Rollins. If you've got injured ribs, don't do a splash. What's that well, so song that Nelly and Justin Timberlake did in the video in the Playboy Mansion? Uh, Because they reference it. It's good and hard. But no, it's just Nelly. Like, um... Strip, naked. That's because when Ross naked, said naked, strip. that's what I... What is yeah, it? what is that? Oh. I, I'm going to Google I said it. naked like that because of Billy Gunn. I, I know you said, said yeah, Billy Gunn, I can hear you I, shouting, I, nah. I can't remember anything about what the song is, but I remember it being an alright song. I remember having to turn the music video off when my mum came in. Yeah. Because it's like a classic naughty music yeah, 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 yeah. video. Yeah, well, there's Playboy Mansion. I mean, I'm going to do chess, are you? But oh, what was the song? It's on my I do. know. Work it. Work it? I just want to see you working for me. Uh, 
Show uh, me something. Oh, oh, don't say nothing. Don't you say a word. I just want to <laughs> see you. I just want to see you working for me. Wasn't that good? I liked it at the time. Yeah. Right. Oh, I'm glad we've got to the wow, point. Wow, that was yeah. cool. How do we get that? Oh, because the way I said naked. Yeah. I've, <laughs> uh, I've always good as much, uh, but I just thought, you said the bit there, like, yeah, I like to beat Norman's over the door, but I imagine if, like... <laughs> Why don't you do it? doing it? Knocking over. Going, hey! Ridge Holland does it. Oh, Ridge, we need it to be before. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. It was like when Jack Atkins ran into Kenta at the Progress Show in London. <laughs> what? what? You knock, did you knock Kenta down? Was... Not down. <laughs> Why oh, wouldn't no. you assume that Kenta, the hard, scary wrestler, knocked Jack Atkins down, Matthew? How have you correctly assumed that Kenta came off worse in the, in the situation? Atkins is scouse. Yeah, Kenta's quite small. Not small, but... Shorter than Atkins. We were backstage. It was. It was. They were doing a show in the electric ballroom, quite small, narrow corridors, yeah, and that. Yeah. We were doing interviews and stuff backstage. Atkins goes to open a door. Who's on the other side of the door? But arguably the greatest wrestler of the two thousands, Kenda. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> door into Kenda's shoulder. Kenda's just finished wrestling against Mark Haskins. He's still in like his gear and stuff. I think I can't remember. And Atkins goes, "What else can you say? Sorry, Kenta." <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very good. Uh, yeah. Part of this match, though, yeah. when Ivar did the sit-down teabag thing he does in the corner, that should have been the finish because of bad ribs. Yeah. Tell a story, Sean, you prick. Hell of a spinning slam from Ivar, followed by the set power powerbomb, and he still can't win against the guy who's got two broken ribs and can't breathe. Uh, ribs first into the steel steps from Ivar, still can't get him beat. Fair play for JB taking that moonsault at the end, though. Yeah. Eventually, it I ends. Think it was one of those where, like, you know, when a wrestler apologizes just as they do the pinfall, it looked like I've always like, you all right? Land on his head, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, nearly. Uh, mm. But yeah, they, it should have ended a few moves earlier for me because of the two broken ribs and the inability to breathe. Yeah, was JB a... was reminding me of Kyle O'Reilly, uh, Kyle Fletcher, because he was kicking out of everything. Mm. Was it Kyle Fletcher? Yeah, yeah. that match against Osprey. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. No, nah, I'm I'm with you. Four minutes, and that still felt like a long time if you're taking nothing but bumps. I but, guess so. But then he's like, oh, but it's all right. JB's lost because he had bad ribs. You're I'm like, glad that. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that it, they gave the win to Ivar because it makes sense yeah. that JB would lose. Because I was worried that JB was going to valiantly fight through and then get a rematch against Ober. But I'm not ready for that yet. Let's let Call the Police to <laughs> just exist for a while in the memory because it was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Kamala Hayes is interviewed on his way at the ring. He says he'll make sure Trick isn't able to have his title match next week. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Despite mm -hmm. interference from Melo's security team, Trick wins the cage match main event. He celebrates on top of the cage wall and Ilya Dragunov stares at him from the platform. That was a cool closing shot. Mm. But the, I was again a bit whelmed. Not That's good. That's probably usage of the, the term, yeah. Of, yeah, I was just whelmed. It was just good. It was all right. Yeah, I said like the pay-per-view match, it was not a long match. Nothing wrong with that, though. No, but the way they built it up, that's the only thing. It's the same. I think it's the same as the pay-per-view. Like, Trick Willie and Mello are clearly very good friends behind the scenes, I've learned from this. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm jumping to this conclusion. And Mello just wants to put over his friend very conclusively. Yeah, it was fair. the same as the pay-per-view match. There wasn't 10 kickouts from Mello. Towards the end, the final quarter of the match, he got like two or three moves in just hanging on. Yep. Trick was doing all the moves, like the rock bottom um, off the ropes. I think Mello just got one DDT in within like a 10-move stretch. Mm. And then he blocks the big bulldog, does uh, Trick Willie, does the big kick. The guards then stop him. But then it was one finisher after that. That was the end. Just another conclusive yeah. win. He's on his way to... Greener pastures. There's yeah. no reason for him to be but making that look, uh, make, kicking all this stuff out. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough, I guess, yeah. Yeah, just made him a win. I guess yeah. maybe I'm just still more confused about the pay-per-view match then than the rematch. Because this was more apt for a TV main event. I get you, man. I get you. Yeah. But the pay-per-view one, nothing against either guy because they both did well in the match. It was just, just compared to the build-up, it just felt quite straightforward. It's weird. Learned what a billy club is this week, though. That's what. He's uh, passed him that billy club. He got him a billy club. Through the bars. Never boop, heard that before. Boop. I would have just called that a bat. That was, yeah. that was a Billy Club. It's an American thing, that. Yeah. It's a Billy Club, yeah. Hmm. Weird NXT. I As always. Mind just Very a, weird. A quick breather, yeah. if that's all right. Because I'm warm. Ha. AW Dynamite. John Moxie opens the show as the new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion of some lineage. Aye. Yeah. Uh, he says he's never ha had help in the wrestling business, but continues to climb mountain after mountain. He's been chasing the IWGP title for five years, oh. and now he has it. He mentions the Don Callis family, a group of talented individuals who have fallen under the wing of a creep. Moxie wants revenge for the family, trying to injure Brian Danielson. He wants to target the biggest one, Powerhouse Hobbs, and challenges him to a match on next week's Dynamite. He's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I guess. 
Also, um, also, AEW is really cool. He's such a natural promo. Hell of a promo. So. This got me reacting not as hard as Sammy's it. Not as vis, vis Oh, God, I've had a stroke here. Not as hard as Sammy's uh, entrance, but in the similar vein of like, yay, come on. Passion. Visceral. Smash it. Visceral. Visceral. Thank you, Joel. You used to team up with Midian. When I said hard, I was like, oh, I'm not sitting there with a stiffy watching the promo, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> he looked great. I was. He had a nice yeah, jacket yeah. on. Yeah. Nice. This was way better than the other ones they've been trying to force into this. Let's from Thunder Rosa and Copeland. Boy. Hey, guys. AW's all right. We wrestle here. He's just like, I've, I've worked for hard for a living, worked so hard for the money, blah, blah, blah. I've gone to Japan. I'm mint. Screw you all. That's what we want to hear. Yeah. Yeah, that, so, that's the, that's the Kavorki He's want. so cool. And I'll put Moxie, the new IWGP champ, stepping in the footprints of greats like Brock Lesnar, Will Ospreay, and Bobu Sapu. Yes. <laughs> and some Japanese lads as well. And some quite, Japanese quite lads. I've <laughs> never heard of them. Uh, backstage, Mercedes Mane wonders who attacked her last week. It could have been Julia Hart or someone trying to frame her like Willow Nightingale. That, so Should it's watch- not that then? Because mm. she said it out loud. She'll be watching their mixed tag match tonight and there'll be a price to pay. I bet it was a bloody cameraman. For it's got to be the me. alien. It's got to be Chrissy Startlander. Yeah. Or as Ross called her recently, Christopher Startlander. <laughs> Christopher Startlander. <laughs> Christopher Startlander. Uh, could be Athena, just to put that in there. It could be Athena. <laughs> that would be nice. I want it to be Athena. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Athena versus Mercedes would be quality, man. Uh, uh, did you know that Mercedes' nickname is the CFO? Or the CEO. CEO. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? No, CFO, I didn't know that, CFO, Ross. The CFO dollar sign. CFO? Oh. Because <laughs> of the money. I've had enough CFO. today. She's the CFOS. <laughs> Retake. Yeah. Did you know that Mercedes <laughs> Money's nickname is CEO? I did know that, Ross. She says it 50 bastard times in this promo. <laughs> but not enough time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Look at that one up. There's a stable CFO, LA Styles. They're all there. Hi, CEO. She yeah, said it a lot, yeah. didn't she? Yeah, she yeah, did. she did. Money changes everything and all that. Yeah, <laughs> yes, changes letters and everything. <laughs> Adam Copeland arrives the mixed tag match, but Willow has been attacked backstage. Will know. Yeah. Brody King attacks Copeland from behind, and the match begins. Willow bravely tries to compete anyway, but Julia hits her with a chain behind the referee's back. The bad guys win, and Julie keeps Heartless supplied until Mercedes Monet saves the day with a chair. She shakes hands with Copeland, but things are uneasy between the CEO and the Will EEO. Oh, no, I didn't, <laughs> did I? I did do You're putting brackets rubbish. I like that. Oh, I'm sorry. Wheelo. The Wheelio. I, I thought this was good action, and the crowd were into it and all that, but doesn't Willow have a match on pay-per-view that doesn't involve Julia Hart? No, she's wrestling Julia Hart, isn't she? Yep. For the TBS title? Yep. So I'm assuming she's going to win because she lost this one. Well, I was thinking, why is she coming down? She, she oh. got obviously battered in the pre-match angle, but then came down anyway and got choked out Yeah, days before the pay-per-view match. I was thinking, baby faces don't have to be silly. No, no. Yeah, she's, she's brave, gonna... though, I guess. Yeah, she is brave. Nice. Brave and stupid. Yeah. She is brave. She is brave. Uh, I like Brody like King. Brody, yeah. There's my analysis. I've got it. The he is one man. of your boys, yeah. The turtle mm. man. That, oh, Brody King, that, you are brave. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, the time on that. Has Brody, has Brody ever... Brody King, turtle man. <laughs> has Brody ever wrestled the butcher one-on-one? Oh, that would be yeah, a good match. That would be hard Ooh, for that one. Yeah, yeah. Two, I'll get two turtles out of five. Um, <laughs> I like Julia getting involved from time to time in the match with Copeland. That stretch there. Excalibur telling us Brody broke his jaw five years ago which and had a wire shut, which is why Copeland was repeatedly going after it. Okay. Good. Well done, him. Well good. Um... Again, like AEW Cody Rhodes was Willow at the end there, coming out in the injured slot angle. I can't speak anymore. I've had enough. Um, <laughs> I just thought, yeah, they did a nice job as well. I thought of building both views because, as I said earlier, me and Jack were speaking like Mercedes versus Willow is a foregone conclusion for double or nothing. But coming out of this angle, you're wondering if it's going to be Mercedes versus either of them. Mm. It's not clear. It's not. No. It's I'll, not clear. I'm, a, I'm just purely because Julia got the win here, though. I now think that Willow is going to be the new TBS champion yeah. on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. 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 Rene has a sit-down interview with Samoa Joe. Joe doesn't think Swerve is a potential champ. He's just a punching bag. Joe says he thought about disinfecting the title belt after Swerve and Prince got their hands on it last week. Quote, Prince. you know where Nana's been. <laughs> Prince got his hands on it. Never met a car, you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, you know where Nana's been? I'll put, yeah, bingo. Swerve full rain. Oh. A no, dynasty. no, no, come on. A, a come dynasty. On, Joe destroy his opposition and cement his legacy as the greatest AEW champion of all times. Swerve <laughs> is a choke artist. 
and he'll get choked out on Sunday. Oh, he's always got a good, a memorable line or two in every promo. Beautiful, beautiful. This one for me was uh, like getting back up when you've been smashed. It's not the prerequisite for a champion. It's the prerequisite for a punch bag. Fantastic. Great. Almost. I do want Swerve <laughs> it's to... It's not a punch bag. It's one of those clowns you punch as a kid. Well, you put the foot down on the thing. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, an actual clown. He used to come around our streets. <laughs> <laughs> I do... I do... Um, want Swerve to win. But every time Joe cuts a promo, I'm like, can he just be champion forever? It's so know, good. Right. Yeah. God. It's almost like he's a really, really good wrestler or yeah. something. And we're getting an FTR video package. But the young bucks and Okada <laughs> make Tony Khan cut it short. Oh, those wascally wabbits. The books are confident of winning at Dynasty. Nakata says Pac is a dead man. They head off to make their entrance. And Tony, okay, goes, like Tony goes, play the music. And, and then they and wait. an awkward few <laughs> yeah. seconds where Tony D'Angelo remembers his line. And then they play. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the calling off the promo package. Just going, this is crap. Get it. Yeah. We've had a bump. It. We'll put it on social. Good Kavorka from the books again. I really like Nick just going, we're about to beat your friends in this cool six-man tag. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they're like, ladder match. Ooh. Yeah. Like, they still haven't missed those boys. Yeah. They're not the greatest heels. Yeah. Because uh, it's just them as faces, but tilted slightly. The Elite win a six man tag match against Garcia, Pac, and Penta, with Okada getting the pinfall on Garcia. They beat down Garcia with a ladder afterwards, but Pac chases them away with the timekeeper's hammer. Hammer! Mm. Do you remember that from back in the day? Yeah. I <laughs> lose the <laughs> hammer. Is that what he's telling Death <laughs> Triangle? Yeah. Ray. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, use the hammer, Ray. I can't believe you used the hammer. Oh, what the hell are you saying? Was that the feud with the elite that they actually won? Yeah, was, Everyone yeah, was like, oh, yeah. these lads are losing. And they won. We were like, oh. I'm the final match, right? I think they won the best of seven series. No, they lost. I thought they won. Or I, did they, I don't no, know. They lost six, <laughs> because they lost the six man tag titles to oh. House of Black later on, didn't they? The boxing. Oh. God. Right. Don't know. A meeting of two great wrestling minds, and I've got a front seat. <laughs> front row seat, I butchered that as well. Anyway, um, can we stop butchering moves? What was good for this? All of it, I thought. Every man in the match looked good. I really enjoyed early on, Garcia, early ish on. Garcia goes for the face, humping in the corner, yeah. and it's shot so you can see Pac in the background and just is disgusted, like, wait, what the <laughs> It was very good. Um, <laughs> I like both uh, books taking the piss out of the hair humping gimmick and then Nicholas shouting down the camera, this gimmick sucks. Uh, they've got good Kavorka they have. I've just said that two minutes ago, but you know what I mean? Uh, the commentary gimmick from Matthew was good, I thought, because yep. that can go flat very quick, but the way he did it kept it alive. Penta looked good in there, as well as uh, Okada did, doing the shoot tombstones over and over again. It just it did what it had to do, I thought, the match. You've written Hammer as well, like I did. In Hammer! The, yeah, yeah. yeah. H-A-M-M-A. Mm. Yep. Or as how much I liked the books doing this. Because originally I was like, oh, why are they doing this? Why are they beating Garcia? That's stupid. But I'm like, no, that's that's actually fine, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Especially because Garcia is not on the card, is he, this weekend, is he? Oh, God, no, he's doesn't... not. What? Garcia. Garcia. You say Gar, yeah. I uh, don't think he is. No. Uh, I can't wait to see what the actual card looks like. Because I'm um, getting it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Next segment was fun. Oh, boy. Yes. Uh, also, yeah, the Elite did win. The Escada del Mute match was also the seventh and final match of no! the best seven series. I was right. Then lost House of Black. Yeah. Maybe um maybe the the Death Triangle won the first one and that shocked me then. And I don't know. Maybe that was it. No, they, I think they got a good lead. That was it. Yeah, okay, fair yeah, enough. They did get a good lead. Because they kept using the hammer. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And then they dealt with it by just no selling the hammer, mm. which annoyed the hell out of me. Uh, I'm, I'm over it, obviously. Um <laughs> Oh, I know what's next. I'm trying to guess from memory, even though it's only early today. Watch this. Taz hosts a meeting between Hook and Jericho in the ring. Jericho thinks Hook hasn't been listening to him as much as he should be, which is why they lost the six-man tag last week. Jericho takes credit for the success of MJF, Orange Cassidy, Eddie Kingston, Daniel Garcia, John Moxley, Will Ospreay. I found that bit... The of, Undertaker. I found that bit quite funny because he gets, he gets less and less relevant yeah, with each one. That's and he ended that little bit by going, they've all reached the next level after entering the Jericho Vortex. The vortex yes. So. Uh, it wants to take Hook to the top of Wizard Mountain because it's all hashtags, this bloody speech. Hook says, nah. Jericho tells him not to be stupid, so Taz interjects. Jericho says he's just trying to do what Taz should have done years ago. He said like 30 years ago. Yeah, Hook's not 30. Like, he's 24. 30, yeah. right. Okay, man, okay. Give his son some guidance. Jericho says Hook isn't as good as he thinks he is and shoves Taz over. Hook grabs Jericho and tells him he'll face him anytime, any place. He tells Jericho to get out of his ring. 
Jericho leaves really slowly because he's old. Yeah, and he's trying to look hurt as well. Well, Taz has got knee issues over the last few years, which is why the push was so devastating. Yeah. Um, that was the only bit that made me feel anything. I thought I was waiting. The more Jericho was going like, you're not actually that good, Hook, like you're crap, mate. I was just waiting for Taz to just get behind him. Cash just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I wanted it to happen so much. It, the stuff with Jericho now, it's so bad. You're like, is this supposed to be making fun of something? And if it is, what's it making fun of? And then just, or is it Jericho making fun of Jericho? Or am I going, no, he wouldn't do something like that. It's just crap. I think they just get into the heel turn. They're just kind of speed running the storyline, aren't they? It's oh, weird. he's heel turned already. Well, yeah, he's I saying think the, the, people aren't with, tree and... the people aren't with it because it's not very good. Yeah. Right. Because he walks out the baby face tunnel, not on, ironically, and then gets no reaction at all walking out there, starts talking and gets booed. Mm. I quite enjoyed the learning tree line and the line about the, the wizard mountain and stuff because it is naff in a good kind of way. It's just the fact that it just, it feels like Jericho is just anything just to get on TV at the moment. Yeah. I think he needs a bit of a breather. He's, like I need a breather from the podcast. <laughs> He's doing the naff Jericho stuff, but without yet fully embracing it again. So it's like, mm. it's just weird. Um, if he beats Hook in the first match. Oh. Also, noticeably, Taz, who we all laugh at being small. He, he, he. Who you? Uh, we all laugh at Taz. No, no. All of us, every single one of us. No. Joe's got footage of us off camera doing it. Um, if I'm going down, take these words. Uh, Jericho, only a few inches taller than him. Taz isn't that short, yeah. Not compared to like... Yeah, why would you pick the Umba Lumpa of all things to compare Taz to? I know. You're the one who's... <laughs> small and orange, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Socrates, it's not. <laughs> um, yeah, it, I hope it ends with some sort of... Well, Hook should... Andrew had a good pitch, which was just that Hook should just get a decisive win over Jericho, which we want to see. But if it is going to have bollocks involved, I'd quite like to see Taz... Do you when JR smashed the glass of sweets over Taz's head because he was yeah. battering Lola? Yeah. <laughs> I always find it so funny because... You hear JR in commentary start to panic when his mates get invaded by Taz, and he goes like, he's strangling the king. <laughs> and then it cuts back to JR, and he's there just like looking gutted. And then he does the thing, and it's just a brilliant moment. Yeah. If Taz does that, he's now the goody doing it. That would mm. be brilliant as well. But if Jericho wins, then I've lost all faith. And I'm worried he will actually No, no, win. we've been through this. Hook will... Oh, no, Hook has beaten him already. Oh, God. Oh, oh yeah, this winning. is the, the consolation goal, which means Jericho wins the fuse. The getting, new stable. Yeah. <laughs> the learning tree, the new stable. The vortex. Oh, yeah. yeah. Any, any of them. Wizard it's, Mountain. It's called Vortex because it sucks. <laughs> hey! <laughs> yes. Kill him, yeah. Matthew. Rene interviews oh, Swerve. Dad, dad. Who <laughs> talks about coming back from big losses? He says his military upbringing has taught him to never give up. Also, loyalty, respect, <laughs> says here. Swerve should tell Rene that why he's so confident about winning on Sunday, but he'd rather tell Joe to his face yeah. later tonight. I like the line, he's always been stumbling his entire career, but he's always fallen forwards. Yeah, that's good. Good line. Yeah. Good promo. Yeah. This feud's been good, just quietly good because of all the CM Punk stuff is over. I, I, I agree, him. yeah. I yeah. hope they have a banger match. Of course they will. Diana Perosa beats Mariah May in a singles match, but Tony <laughs> Storm attacks her after the bell. Thunder Rosa saves the day, but Diana isn't grateful and argues with her. Mariah pulls Diana out the ring, and they fight on the outside while Tony tries to ambush Rosa. Doesn't work, and Rosa wins the brawl, after, uh, not before scrolling all over Tony's face with lipstick. Yeah, I like that. So looks like Mojo Rawley. <laughs> <laughs> it did, yeah. Do you remember that with his broken mirror? Yeah. yeah. Miro. Oh, weird, wasn't Mirror. Because it? it was like <laughs> purpley, wasn't it? As well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm a freak. And then he lost every match. Like a big, <laughs> big veiny dick on his face. <laughs> I, did, <laughs> I did like um, Joe. Joe had that as well. Broke. So Joe had that for a while as well. Who? Different type of dick, but he had a dick on his face for a while. Joe. He had a bendy one, didn't he? Yeah, it was like not right under. Bendy one. one. Ooh. A bendy dick. Was that before or after he got kidnapped by ninjas? I was after. <laughs> the ninjas transformed him. And yeah. then it was implied he'd killed Scott, uh, Scott Steiner, yes. rather like the Tony D'Angelo family, Tiana. with a big knife. Um, and then Scott Steiner showed up with a mask on the week after, and then two weeks later he showed up with no mask on and no scars anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and it was never mentioned again. They were Mendel scars, like Kane. Um, I like Tony's reaction when Thunder Rosa grabbed her. She went, what? Unhand me. Like, Tony's always in character, which is good to see. 
I'm curious to see how the match is going to go because you've got the ultra serious Thunder Rosa and the ultra not serious Tony Storm. Yeah, mm. but Tony just had a serious match on Collision last week. Yeah, that, it, it got serious, well. didn't it? Yeah, it got serious. Yeah. So it can't it can't be done. I've not got much written down about this match because it was just two good wrestlers wrestling in a snuggly manner. Mm-hmm. They were yeah. laying it in, so they were. Uh, I really enjoyed Thunder Rosa with the shoot attack on Luther on her way down to the ring after oh the match. Oh my god. Like a bowling ball, you she can was. Tell it was a proper smack because commentary laughed. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Taz lost his mind. Yeah. It was, yeah. Uh-oh. Thunder not beating those stiff, can't work allegations. <laughs> oh no. I, Damn you, Britt Baker. I rewound it a few times with that in my head, yeah. thinking, has she just oh. stiffed him? <laughs> yeah, I'll it. show you days before the pay-per-view. I bet that'll pop the boys backstage though. Luther taking it. Popped yeah. his orbital bone as well. <laughs> yeah. I felt ba- I felt bad for Luther. <laughs> that cowabunga, man. Yeah, that surfer <laughs> dude. It's like, wow, I'm so happy to be the manager and not take any bumps again. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he should manage Sol Rooker, really. He should yeah. jump ship. Yo, be dude. her father with long, blonde, so flowing close. locks. This is purely because we heard Luther's real voice and we were like, what? Yeah. He sounds like a 20 year old. Yeah. Anyway, I like that. <laughs> the doctor ang- of the yeah. angle at the end where obviously the lipsticks is put on, lipsticks put on the face, and Tony's giving it the, her reaction when she gets her own little mirror out is fantastic. Yeah. I'm intrigued to see how this one goes because, you know, it is going to be either. A bit of silly, a bit of stupid, or very silly, or very st- not. St- yeah, thank either. you, that Ross. Honestly, my ears <laughs> could be anyway. Oh, Bless you. At least uh, you got an excuse for soccer. <laughs> I'm just me. Like Ridge in his match. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because he was thinking. You've got about... the mental yeah. uh, ear. The mental <laughs> ear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know when they got like that in the old TV shows and films, it's like the head going past going, do it. Oh, do it. The You've men- got an ear. The ear. Yeah, yeah. Why am I going, ha ha, <laughs> say some <something> stupid, Ross. <laughs> Mr. So Jar Jar Binks so says the ear. Are you, due, are you due an ear draining or have you just had one? I had one two weeks ago. Right. Last week. Yeah, last week. Make sure they didn't fill it up accidentally. Yeah, uh, it must just be there's nothing there. It's something just flowing in. My, like a little bird. Oh, my, oh. my ears off. T- oh, no, I'm not going to say it. Sorry, carry on. Ooh, no, because okay, it's leave. about someone and it's nasty. I'll tell you after. Oh, oh go on then. I can't wait. I'll tell you. Hey, after. Can't can't do that. AW Dynamite. That was alright, wasn't it? We'll have them. No. Okay, for them. Orange cast. Sorry, not big fan. Renee interviews the Bang Bang Gang, who have been having a blast these past few months. Apparently, Jay White wants to put the Ring of Honor six man titles on the line. What's that? Against the acclaimed and their AEW Trios Championship. Winner takes all. Okay, that's a good idea. The acclaimed and Billy Gunn respond for promo of the own. Billy says he's already beaten the life out of Jay White, and he's been beating the hell out of the guns since they were little kids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Ah, proud baby face. No wonder they left you to yeah. join the Jay White gang then. Ah, it wouldn't have been bad. Just a twank on the bottom, as me gran used to say back nah, in the day. No, fame massa. <laughs> Super king. <laughs> Chair shot with the head. <laughs> he makes one of them stand in the corner to so get his big splash. <laughs> Oh. They accept the challenge for Dynasty. The claimed also want a tag match against the Ass Boys on Collision. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, I, I've only got one note about these two promos, and I like the way that Austin Gunn said Bang Bang Gang. When they're like, <laughs> say it better than that, Renee. And she doesn't. And then Austin goes, say it like, Bang Bang Gang. I was like, that's good. I like that. You know, like the line from uh, Anthony Bowen, I think it was, saying uh, he's the Scissor King and he's got a big gold bat you can choke on. Okay. Shades yeah. of gold member there. Mm-hmm. He's got the Midas touch. His touch is too much. Yeah, that was good as well. Twink Blade as well was mentioned by Max Castro, I think it was. Yeah. It just, it feels... Shut up, Max. It's a weird one. You're not allowed to say those gay terms anymore. It's a weird one, because um, <laughs> we, the LGB2 division, have taken that away from you. Ooh. Jesus. I said two then, LGB. That's such a bitch of a thing to say, isn't it? What, what? Look a bitter. I've taken away from you. That's way easier to say. I'm like staying that. well away. You're allowed to say what you want. Dude, the people, <laughs> the amount of the gays that hate Max Castor online right now, man. The, 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 the wind has turned, as they say. Yeah, they used to love him because he fancied MJF. Well, the people going, no, nah, we're not really like you going like, hee hee, I'm going to stalk a straight dude for ages and hit on him constantly. That's uh, a bad. I think people have been waiting for that. And as soon as he's done anything bad, they've gone like, oh, right, okay. right, lads, get him. Hmm. Fair yeah. enough. It's an interesting like one. Vultures. The winner takes all stick. Stick is interesting because... It's an actual stick. That's the way he's going to carry them six belts. Because huh. you think with the Ring of Honor titles in there, maybe the, the the team that won't be pushed as much will win this match because the Ring of Honor belts are there. Oh, yes. It'll be very telling what happens mm. given their future traje- 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 trajectory. Trajectory. Yeah. Trajectory. Joel's the only person who can speak properly in <laughs> the podcast and oh, he's behind the that. PC. <laughs> yeah, because are the BC Gold going to go to Ring of Honor? And defend mm. the titles there. I know Who they had the, the match recently, yeah, but I reckon the Acclaim might win just because the six man, all of the belts are on the line. I reckon the Acclaim might win because haven't the heels been getting the better of them? 
a lot. I think, well, yeah, Max Caster couldn't rap for a while. Yeah, Billy got beaten by Jay or beaten down by Jay. Home invasion. Yeah, the home invasion. This is all out of place, uh, this feud, like, Jesus. I wouldn't mind the six-man belts going away because they're not being utilised, are they? No. We, we had one. We had two teams really over at the start of the year, and then this is just ground to a halt, and I was like, all now, right. Now got, neither of them are Yeah, running. they're unover. They should never have got together in the first place. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> well, on that happy note, Orange Cassidy beat Shane Taylor, despite interference from Moriarty and Ogogo. The heels beat Cassidy down afterwards, but Matt Seidel and Christopher Daniels run out to help. They're taken out on the ramp by a mysterious hooded man. <gasps> Turns out to be that turncoat, Trent Beretta. Did I write that turncoat? Turncoat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that that traitor. No good. Turncoat? That yeah. Trent coat? Ah, uh, Trent coat. Trent. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 We're back. Uh, well, He's back. Yeah. Screw Whoa. your ear. Wabadoo. Shane Taylor again was very good here. Very, very good. His nice little fakey on the chop, then flipping off the fans in the front yes. row, like the Kavorka. Orange Cassidy was just a standard, get all your bollocks in there, Orange, your big orange ginger bollocks. <laughs> get them in there and do them all. He did all of his moves. I was a bit shocked to see a big man like Shane Taylor getting beaten with the orange punch, punch but I shouldn't be shocked because it's Orange Cassidy. It's he good. wins most right. of his matches like that, doesn't he? It's a good punch. Um, and it's interesting now that Orange obviously has no friends. So how is he going to survive? Mm, how, how will he survive? Trent was... He'll be all right, Ross. It's I don't okay. know if I will be. He's got no friends anymore. I was about to bring this up like it was deep, subtle character work, but it's not. But I was going to be like, did you notice that Trent's still wearing the shirt of the old state of the tag team? It yeah, is interesting. Very, yeah, well, brilliant. it's still on the fence, isn't it? If Chuck's with him or not, so... Oh, and Chris. Start, well, she's not really... Wasn't well, she, she having really? a word with Trent a couple of weeks ago, but no one knew what they said? Oh, but after gonna carry on watching AW to I'm find a, out. I'm about to turn the lights off and bottom Mercedes. I think that's what she said. <laughs> are, are they gonna team up and be like, "That's right, we're worst friends." Worst <laughs> friends. <laughs> <laughs> Not friends, then, really. Are you? If you think about it. Like bad friends is a podcast. Is it? Who's on that? Uh, Andrew Santino and Bobby Bobby Lee. That's I don't know why I said his name twice. I thought that Bobby was whiskey, Bobby Jane, Lee. Yeah. That's Andrew Santino's That's just on his own. singular podcast. I see. You two are bad friends. It's weird how <laughs> <laughs> it's weird how the comedians doing podcast industry is massive. Yeah, yeah. That's strange. All the Americans. I mean, we're in it, baby. No, no, we're Look not. At us, yeah. No, this one's a joke this week, but you should serious. <laughs> in the main event, Will Ospreay beats Claudio Castagnoli. Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> the rest of the Don Callis family attack Claudio afterwards, but Osprey doesn't join in. John Moxley saves the day. Rip to hell. I have to come back from Japan for like two weeks. And Osprey storms off going, I don't, yeah, I'm not taking him on. Look at him, he's massive. Uh, Very he sensible. was actually saying, well, hi you, Don Callis family, you're weird. That's sort of the point, wasn't it? Dad! Yeah. Why did you bring them all wet here? <laughs> Dad! Look, your man wanted to say hello, all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, the match was unreal, though. Like, how they didn't stop the entire way through was fantastic. Yeah, they're and both a, pretty good. They're really good, yeah. They're pretty good hands. They're not the bad. Ring. Yeah. Solid. Breaking news, Claudio good. <laughs> Especially <laughs> with a, a lad like, like Will Ospreay, who can, yeah, just be, what's the word I'm looking for? Easy to play around with. Malleable. Malleable, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Ten they, points for Jack. Is this the, this is probably the, bless... Go on, Carol. This is elephant, the, elephant. They bless oh. you. This is probably the first Tried time. I do off camera, I'm sorry. Probably the first time I've had a singles match, given their. Because yeah. the time when Osprey was coming up, Claudia would have been in WWE. Mm. You might be right. So, yeah. I it's mean, it's got to be. It's no surprise that they were both really good together. Mm. Yeah. I like how Claudio like, flipped up his offense. He was a bit more gritty with the grapples and whatnot. Just a grappling boy. You've got to ground him to beat him, as he said. Mm. So, Claudio. Like Kenny listened. Rogers said as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the uh, yeah. And then. The kip up off the uppercut was unbelievable. Mm. I've got written down here. And, uh, so there was the. Right. There was an uppercut. Yep. Then a kip up. Then yep. there was a kick. Oh. And then there was a float over while Claudio was doing the clothesline. And then there was another thing. Osprey is pretty good. Um, I've really. The wind's out my sails now at the end of the podcast. Oh, so we're gonna, getting there. I'm going to stop talking because I'm not doing the podcast any favours. You're this doing week. all <laughs> the favours, Ross. You're so negative you on your own. You can make mate. sense of those bollocks notes, knows. can't you? Osprey reversing the swing into a DDT. That was cool. And commentary went, whoa. So that was good. Mm. He'd done his homework. Wait, hang on. You just typed in screw Andrew. <laughs> times. Hell of a These hidden, aren't notes. Hell of a hidden blade for the win. Hell of a hidden blade. Will looking like he was done with the Don Callis family mm. after the ending angle. Yes. Wow. Mm. I only pretend to like NXT as a joke. Why, do you, <laughs> why would you even type that note and bring it in the podcast? These so are rumours. Uh -huh. 
Rumours. It was right. a good match. Oh, well, that, yeah. Was. Well said. I, I liked Claudio getting a bit of the Kavorka. I've got to stop using that word, but I'm around you guys. But just being a fanny doesn't really work as the same. He did the crappest little taunt I've ever seen. <laughs> but like, it's like, how can I do a taunt with using no energy? So he half-heartedly like turned round and just went, oh. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, I'm not going to use any energy because I need your, it for my opponent. You've got to get your special meter up somehow. Right, yeah. th thank you. Um, I'm glad that Dynamite was better this week and has rebounded a bit since last week. At 100%. Yeah. There were no, it was very little in the way of like silly little references. The crowd did chant for CM Punk briefly uh, at the Young Bucks, but they showed up after a bit. Good, 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 good. I yeah. also like the giant swing being counted with dig, a big DDT, a, yes. dig, a dig BBT, as they <laughs> called it. There you go. We all suck, we all suck together because we're stuck in the cultaholic vortex. <laughs> and then the main event segment, Swerve and Prince Nana head to the ring and Swerve talks about getting the better of Joe last week. Joe is scared because he knows Swerve is going to beat him for the title. He wants Joe to come out so we could say it to his face. I like the insults that uh, Swerve was shouting at Joe when he came down to the ring. Like, sweet tooth ass <laughs> and BBL Joey. What's BBL? No idea. British Basketball League. That's what I thought it was as yeah. well. E, let's go, Eagles. Let's go. Joe, can you search for BBL? Yeah, I'm doing it. Careful, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. isn't it Big Beautiful Lady? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I don't know. The first I'm, thing I'm... it comes up is Brazilian butt lift. But there's all oh, you Brazilian oh. butt lift you so much. I knew it, Joe. <laughs> British Basketball League. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's it. Is it not Big Beautiful Lady then? Maybe not. Uh, uh, Do I? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments what it is. Yeah. And then the other highlight was when Swerve somehow jumps off the top rope and manages to kick his legs out when he makes impacts with the security guard. Star jump. Unbelievable. Yeah, he, he must have landed like on their interlocking arms. You know, I had to look back at it because I'm like, wait, who does he land on exactly? And it's just, if people are like, okay, yeah, but there's one lad who's like, yeah. really? Oh. <laughs> it's absolutely taken out. If the Miz was there, he wouldn't have. Been. Exactly, a proper cantonade. <laughs> but I can see the seagulls. <laughs> yeah. um, I love that promo. The promo from Captain Northern. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. It makes sense. So yeah. People pretend that it's just cryptic bollocks, but it's a metaphor. Yeah, it you, can sense. Like, you can tell the press not getting it. At the time, it's like, no, he's talking about Yeezy. Yeah. Anyway, the brawl and Joe gets a better with Swerve before turning his attention to Prince Nana. Swerve saves his manager, but gets hit with the muscle buster to end the show. How can Swerve oh. beat this man? How's he going to do it? He's left him laid out on the go-home-ish show. Yeah. Yeah, lovely, lovely show. Also, uh, Deadlock... Pro Wrestling Champions, sorry, World Champion, big fan. Calvin Tankman was there in security. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah. The boys are back again. Yep. Ski. I was listening to that the other day on, on a walk I did. Oh, good. Where did you walk to? I walked, um, oh, it was a depressing one. I, I got to give up midway through. I walked, Nothing wrong with that? You, you're still beating yourself on the couch? I passed a bus stop and thought, I'm just going to check the bus timetable. And there was one in like 10 minutes. I was like, I'm going to get the bus back to Haymarket. <laughs> but it was up like north of like Gosforth. Like just route, it was called like the three parks walk. I did about one and a half parks. Ended up near like Coach Lane. Got the bus back. Yeah, uh, but so I was kind of distance from Gosford. Just passing people, trying not to laugh because I'm in the mailbag section of their podcast where they're going like Dick the Cock Johnson, <laughs> and I'm walking along going oh no. Oh, it's nothing worse than listening to a comedy podcast where you're walking. Yeah, like, like so I have to. Uh, Oh, in the fifteen dollar Patreon tier, Tony has a huge cock. I'm like, shut up. Why? It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. good. Ah. Uh. That was The Week in Wrestling. Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> ah, let's have a look in the mail bag. Dearest Diddlers. Hello. That as, is us. As AW talks about restoring that certain feeling, coinciding with the debut of Okada, I recall the first knowing time thus far I've gotten to see the Rainmaker live at Madison Square Garden at around midnight. Okada battled Jay White for the IWGP heavyweight title. I was exhausted after a long and thrilling card. I just found out I'd be going to Mania 35 the next day and wanted some rest. But I was still excited to see a pure heel versus babyface main event match, especially between two lauded athletes who I thought I would scarce have the chance to see in person again. Mm. Despite or because of my exhaustion, though, when Okada and White wrestled, time flew by. The over 30 minute match felt like a third of that as I was fully enthralled by this action. This was the most recent time I've truly felt the magic of wrestling in a long time. The full suspension of disbelief, the complete loss of time, the living in the moment that we all strive for. I wasn't thinking about how historic it was or about the match quality or the storyline implications. I was too in it. 
It's something that I know is rare and special, that I hope to feel again. No one only that I've experienced it in the aftermath. So my question is this, when was the last time you've truly lost yourself in a wrestling match? As always, thank you for what you do. Just being yourselves in this podcast on the channel makes a huge difference in the fans' lives, uh, making us all feel like a part of this wonderful community that you've crafted. Sitting around and talking as friends makes us feel as welcome friends too. Makes us feel like welcome friends too, sorry. So thank you for that feeling. Sincerely, Manchester City and Portuguese national t- uh, team sent it back. Ruben dos, uh, sorry, Ruben dos Santos Gato Alves Diaz. Ruben Diaz. <laughs> or Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Ruben. It's a good email, Mike. It's a good question. Oh, thank you. Lovely. Well written. Bloody hell. I like yeah. your lemonade, Mike. Uh-huh. Yeah. Don't remember from that WrestleMania last Mike's year? Mike's hard lemonade. Yeah. Yeah. Seamus and Drew having a can. Don't be a, a beer, Mike. And it's the drink they use on the Catch the Predator. Catch the predator. <laughs> As I pointed out on that podcast. <laughs> um... <laughs> Why don't you take a seat over there with your Mike's Hard Lemonade that you brought to woo the show? Make sure you turn the can towards the camera, please. Thank Uh, you. Thank you, Nons. Um, (laughs) So the last time we were like lost in a wrestling match and just enjoyed it. Mm. And it flies by and it's great fun. Obviously, there's moments like that at at, at most manias because it's a mania and like special stuff tends to happen, especially this year and night two. But the one match that I can think of most recently that did that for me was when we would do these when I'm like doing notes for like what happened at and like the editors are here and stuff and we're all like it's AW shows are harder to do because it's frantic and fast paced and there's less gaps between matches um, so I'm just like writing like a maniac to get everything down and um, and in, and by the end when it's like 5am because they're longer shows as well it's like oh and then I felt so I forgot how tired I was completely in Sting's retirement match because it was just an absolute blast mm. so that's the one for me I think because it was just really fun that's a good one. That was going to be my answer. That's oh, the, yeah, that's oh, the most recent really? one. Well, being a sting bahoy. <clears throat> oh, well, mine then, I'm going to do VXV, which I do all the time. I'm going to say the recent three-way uh, meat, me, uh, what do they call it? Meat Planet? Meat Planet, yeah. Meat Planet match from NXT Stand and Deliver. Over JB and uh, Dodger. The very same. Yeah. I was there going, hmm, who's going to benefit from a push? Dijak's getting a lot of online kavorka, but blah, 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 blah. I stopped thinking about that as soon as they start slamming each other daft and doing crazy yeah. stuff. I'm like, oh, I don't care who wins. This match is awesome. I think you're right. I think that. Yeah, we were live streaming, so we couldn't get quite as lost as you yeah. do when you're just not. It was still very yeah. fun. Yeah. 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 They're good answers. On a good podcast. Oh, yes. With good people who send in good stuff. That's and good. not Dave Meltzer, who doesn't understand Tatum Paxley's character. Oh, what's he Tatum? saying? He's oh, comparing no. it to Isla Dawn and Alba Fire. I hate that character. <laughs> it's just a waste of time. <laughs> what's he? Why does he particularly hate this? <laughs> it sucked with Bliss. Alba Fire and Isla Dawn did it, and it wasn't good with them either. And she's the worst one out of all of them. <laughs> Sir. I must have missed the Go point on, where Dave. she was a mystical witch character with magic yeah. powers. She's just a creepy lady who fancied someone Maybe else. she's the creepiness she doesn't like. Maybe, she... maybe it's like horror films and stuff like that. She, it's the point where he goes, she's the worst of all of them. Has <laughs> she like done worst. something to melt her? She must have done. I wish he was like that all the time. And just calling people <laughs> out. He was slagging off Trick as well. Trick Williams. Was he? What? He said he's not very good. Oh, did oh. Trick Willy! He said he's got charisma, but he's not very good in the ring. He's good enough. Oh. <laughs> I think he's good enough for his charisma. Have you not heard the plans, Dave? There's no plants anymore. How dare you? I think Trick's good enough to make up for his... Like like Goldberg, if you're over enough. Yeah. And he's, and he's a better wrestler than... He's more advanced than Goldberg. Why are we still... Let's move away. Right, okay, yeah. Smelly yeah. Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen your apartment, mate. How dare you criticize anyone? Got cleaned up, didn't it? Is Not, it still it, like that? He though? didn't do it. I reckon uh, he just binned it, and those bags of rubbish are still someplace else. Mm-hmm. Anyway... Howdy, boys. Howdy. Oh, Undertaker voice. So, howdy, boys. What's... <laughs> howdy, 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 howdy. Uh, <laughs> rest <laughs> in peace. <laughs> Bean. <laughs> That's a brilliant Undertaker, Rob. <laughs> I'm writing this as a finish in the best podcast you guys ever done. It shows oh. your relationship as friends instead of just co-workers, which is really nice. You know, we drunk. Nice. No, no. <laughs> you probably hear this a lot, but I can only hope to become relevant enough to talk to you guys personally. Oh, I don't say that. dare you speak to us. No, oh. no. Well, <laughs> good luck with your whatever you're creating or doing. Oh, I would talk to Matthew about One Piece, which after three and a half years, I've watched a thousand and hundred episodes. Keep it going, lad. Those are rookie numbers. <laughs> rookie numbers. Keep Thank them up. You. Thank you. I'm doing the Nixon. Like, yeah. I don't know oh, why. 
Not for the, the chat game. Audio, you know what? I didn't even think about audio, what Bozo's doing audio, there. I'm just the, like, celebratory Bozo. For the audio listeners, Matthew celebrated that sentence by raising both arms in a peace sign, <laughs> which, me and Ross, which me and Ross couldn't help but call it. <laughs> Shoo. <laughs> I was just very happy. I would love talking Batman with Ross. <laughs> Do you what like Batman? Batman? I love the early 90s Batman ah. films. <coughs> oh, the Batman Batman Returns? Yeah, yeah. Batman your Brother? Keatons, oh, your sweet. Clooney's that era. Your Val Kilmer's. Well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Lyra Val Kilmer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> then talk with Jack about music, because he seems very easy to show music to. No, Jack is very receptive. I'll, I'll take recommendations, yes. Thank you. So after that gooning session, hey, what rest of the past or present would you like to talk to about anything? Thank you for reading this. And I know it was probably very tiring, but I hope Next Mania is a long podcast as well. I think we're probably really going to... my overnight job. I'm, I'm going to suspect with a two-hour Mania thing. Eight today, hours, okay. baby! <laughs> 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 with love, Robert from Monroe, Michigan. Thank you, Robert. Cheers, Rob. Nice yes, as well. Ross got screwed at Mania 39 predictions. Check the video Andrew picked, The New Day. Therefore, it was a tie. Oh. Uh, How did that get missed? Oh. I don't know. Ooh. I can't remember that far back. Oh, two years, year, a year ago. Politics is the answer, Robert. <laughs> oh, that's, ooh. ooh. That's like, that's like when Liverpool got the VAR decision against them and it was just wrong. That's I just know. wrong. Yeah. Ooh, sorry. It's just, not like Andrew, though. It's, it's, big it's bully like, that he is. It's like the, the, the pick of God being punched into the goal. Yeah, what, what's happened there? Anyway. Um, anyway, good question. Thank you very much, Robert. So what would we talk about any wrestler alive or dead with if we could? Yeah. So I have to pick a topic or just who we would talk to about anything. I mean, anything, yeah. yeah. Uh, ooh, okay. So I'm trying to think something not about wrestling. I mean, me and Xavier Woods could probably talk about video games for hours, but... Yeah, that's a good pay. Yeah. I'm trying to make a funny one. Uh, oh, no, I can't steal that one. You know Ash from Rise? Oh, yeah. You know that famous <laughs> night that you've talked about in the Head of Steam when the NXT wrestlers were there? Oh, yeah. He said that he got talking to Sami Zayn about, like, punk. Yeah. And uh, Sami knew, like, and all these bands and, and that. Yeah, yeah, Obviously, yeah. Ash knows all oh, the bands. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's better than you. And um, so I, I can't steal that one. Oh, that's Very a good one. You. That's a good one, though. That's a good one. Imagine talking to Sammy Zane about Scar and Punk. Amazing. Sammy, I was just going to like have a hotline too. Sammy would be my answer just to talk about anything. I'll never forget that podcast he did. I forget whose podcast it was. But apparently there was a. <laughs> I'll never forget. The second later. Just the story of like them driving past a field of sheep, I think it was. And he was just like, How many sheep are there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, They saw some chickens. He's just like, How many chickens are there in the world? Like just supplying everybody with chicken. The way that. Kevin Owens talks about Sami Zayn and shooting interviews and stuff. Makes him sound like he gets on everyone's nerves. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the stories he's talking about in like, an endearing way. Yeah, but, but like yeah. he's obviously very serious about what he does in the ring. So yeah, the stories yeah. about like proper wrestlers seeing him and going like, "You probably want to talk about his match and like sneaking down to tweak like, stuff." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I've got one. Uh, I thought the Sheamus about what was like doing the Ninja Turtles films. Okay, has to be into them at all. Is that age where he could have realistically still been there for the toys and had money? Oh, like, your lad, like your little lad from NXT. <laughs> I'm struggling here. I'm trying. I'm struggling to think of what I'm into, <laughs> not what the rest is. I'm like, yeah, what yeah. do I like? Um, <laughs> you want to go to your favorite wrestling? Go. Do you like this? And they go, no. You're like, oh, good chat. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> just say which wrestler you'd rather have. Like, just a hotline to, just to talk about anything. Oh, you know what? A god. A type really figure. obvious one. I don't think Pac's done one about just Newcastle. Oh, that's a good about one. the local area. Yeah. Um, I once talked to what's it? Oh, Punch Drunk Istra, the Australian wrestler. Oh, yeah, just yeah. about Australia and yeah, yeah. like places to go if you go to Australia. Because I want to go to Australia one day. I've got cousins over there. I remember something. he gave you a list, didn't he? Yeah, because he thought I was asking about. I was like, so what's it like over there in Australia then? And he was like, yeah, there's like Melbourne City wrestling. And I was like, no, no, not the promotions. Yeah. I just want to know what's there. And he he perked right up, and I didn't want to talk about wrestling. Aww. Um, yeah, he's a nice guy. I talked to. I'm really struggling here. Um, okay, I talked to Triple H about how he books and stuff because I think it'd be interesting. To, that's boring, I know. It's not about it's about wrestling, but mm. I'd be interested to know about what his thought process is because I did a video on it trying to guess what his thought process was, mm. but I'd like to know the real answers. There we go. Nice. If I had more time to think, I'd talk to someone about something that's not just wrestling, but yeah, yeah. Re <laughs> wrestling. Or oh, Gangrel about directing porn. Yeah, yeah, why not? Some boy did that. Fanging and banging. That's right. I talked, in fact, him about weather spoons. 
Yes. Oh, Dilo Brown wasn't it? That was... No, he, oh, no, the, Gang the, the goes, one, he gets they? he gets Stella and bangers and mash. That's his favourite staple for breakfast. From, from Weatherspoon, but obviously ah, not. What a pro! It's not on the breakfast menu. How dare you! If it was a podcast, <laughs> different not, microwave that makes that <laughs> rather than a private chat. If it could be turned into a, like a podcast or whatever, then I'd, I would choose CM Punk and just ask him about anything because oh. anything he talks about is captivating. <laughs> so just yeah. Can I ask you a question, CM Punk? Yeah, sure, kid. Anything. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello to all the fabulous Russell Wankers and Gooning Nonce Diddlers. Gooning <laughs> Nonce Wow. <laughs> These are just becoming oh. so silly, man. <laughs> this is like the Mega Shark versus... I just saw Boss open a new tab and Google popped up and I thought he was going to type Gooning Nonce <laughs> No, no, no. Nonce. No. And they all drink Mike's Lemonade. Gooning Nonce no, oh, Why are you Googling that? What is Gooning and Baiting from Reddit oh, slash... No. Uh. Make him say... <laughs> no. Uh, no. no. <laughs> I don't even know what gooning is again, do we? It's a mental state in masturbation. No, 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 no. <laughs> Gonna have a panic attack again. <laughs> Finish the podcast. I said half poppers and pee pee. Thanks to the Mammoth Size podcast of last week. I especially like the player banter section being replaced with the glorious God banter. God? What did we talk about? Banter. What did we talk about God? Do we? Did we? Uh, I'd it, always... it might just mean it's really good banter. Maybe, yeah. I'd be really amused to hear some of your theological insights. No. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> Did we? Explain on the basis of wrestling <laughs> terminology. No. I have no memory of that. We We're talking about theology. I remember my... Well, WrestleMania's this week. Hey, what's up about religion? My epiphany was you can still die when falling from the ground. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, I remember that. T to the ground. Yeah, that was good. I had a friend who died hitting the floor, and then I laughed. That like was my neighbour, Mr. Rutherford. Yeah, who's rest dead. In, rest in peace. Jesus Sorry, Christ. Please. If you decide so... This will be my second mailbag question ever read in the podcast. Just as the coincidence of me writing in from Budapest the same week your podcast went spontaneously Grand Pesh Hotel themed. Uh. This last week, Matthew's reference to Blackadder, it says it is a timestamp, at around 5 hours 33... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you remember the Blackadder reference? No. Same. Who would seem beautifully providen providential, uh -huh, as it so naturally links up with the question I've had in mind for you. I had heard about Ilya Dragunov through the podcast. I've never watched a match of his, but remembered your glowing reviews about his VXV and NXT UK exploits. Lately, Ross's impersonations caught my ears and made me wonder how all the positive talk turned into this parody of something that, in the first place, seemed to be the parody of itself. Catching up with the oh. happenings around WrestleMania time, I came across the YouTube clip of Dragonoff's Raw debut on the night after WrestleMania XL. I didn't get further than his entrance, as I was left perplexed by his possessed flapping of the arms, as if he were a particularly flash and utterly useless conductor having a stroke. Oof. He also inevitably reminded me of, ah, I see, Tim McHenry's Percy and Blackadder, particularly in the second season, or his cameo's Lord Topper in the third one. So that leads to my question this week. Can you recall an instance where you were really promising that you heard really promising things about wrestler, but as soon as you saw them, there was immediately something that made you think you would never be able to take them seriously. If so, did they manage to change your mind and how? Thank you for all your generous work. Former Liverpool and Blackburn left back, Steg uh, Ingi Bjornaby, aka Adam from the Pesh. Up the Thank Pesh. Thank you. Up the Pesh. the Pesh. So, wow. So, Ilya Dragunov reminded him of Percy from Blackadder because he flails his arms. I guess he goes, ooh, you know, when, he's, when he gets <laughs> oh, exasperated. Okay, right. Which I guess he, uh, Dragunov's doing not for the same reasons. Oh, well, he might be. He might really be in the black color. I would say, Adam, do check out his matches as well. Yeah. They are, they are good. They are. They are. He's good at wrestling. Yeah, it's it's just the bits of the XT that HBK goes, all right, so. Huh. Um, I've got one. Go on. A wrestler who I had heard good things about and then was like, oh. Go on. And now like. I'll see if it's the same one. Go on. It won't be. It might be the same as me. It won't be. Go on. Oh. So I was. Uh, I went to. Oh God! It was like Fight Club Pros Tag League. One it's not year. the same as me. Huh. <laughs> it was like, and then uh, it was. It was meant to be the best friends, and I was around the time that I was getting into their funny podcasts and stuff. Oh, and yeah. I they were funny, and um, I was buzzing to see the best friends. Then Trent, I think he like broke his leg or something. Didn't he? he had a knee injury. He tore his knee, and uh, so suddenly it's Chuck Taylor and. Fire Ant. I'm like, well, I used to watch Chikara. I can't oh, wait yeah. for Fire Ant. And then I realized, oh, no, there were people like, it's not Fire Ant, Jack. He's this new character now called Orange Cassidy. And I was like, right. Uh... And then I was stood there watching everyone laugh at this bloke not try. And I was like, well, this is crap. I wanted Fire Ant. <laughs> this, is, this is Fire Ant. Is it behind the mask? 
And now I think he's mint. So, uh, oh, yeah. bless you. I didn't get if it. you're expecting Fire Ant, though, I can kind of get it. It was cause... partly because I was disappointed not to see the best friends. Yeah. Because it was when they're trying to just come back from New Japan and they were finally teaming together and it was like, the best friends. Are... Uh, and then I think I think Henry Quigley might have saved that for me, though. Henry Faust, sorry. Oh, God. I was pleased to shooting it. Um, he's... <laughs> He, I was like, oh no, this isn't going to be very fun. And then Henry did the chant from the Chuck Taylor match on YouTube. Let's, Let's go, go Chuck, Chuck Taylor, Taylor, you're the, you're the best, best wrestler in the, in the world. world. You're, you're in way better shape, shape than Tyler Black. Yeah. Although he's not, because Seth Rollins is like in ridiculous shape. But um, it's Orange Cassidy. Wow. Yeah. That's a good pick. I was expecting that. What have you got, Ross? Jay White. Damn it. Yeah, that's fine. Snap. Yeah, Richard Tubman et al. saying he's like the best professional wrestling heel in the yeah. world ever. And yeah. he rocks up to AEW and he's insulting MJF by going, oh, you call yourself better than everyone else, do you? <laughs> Just using other people's catchphrases as insults never worked. But then when the BC Gold got together and he just started lit- letting loose. Right. Become on fully on board with Jay White as a character. Yeah. He was always a good wrestler. I always appreciate the matches. It was just the, the promos and that sort of stuff that never resonated until he became a gold member. Huh. Very good. Huh. No, I'm I gonna agree with everything you said, but add on, I saw him on people, you know, clips up from here's the fantastic New Japan promo. This is the best thing ever. Blah, 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 that you see every bleed day on uh, X and he's watching. It's just nothing. It was Jay White just getting really annoyed and frustrated to the point where I had to check and thought, oh, this is a parody, right? It's like, no. I'm like, and this is all the comments like, wow, what a great promo. Matthew, oh. he'd lost the biggest match of his life. <laughs> I can't believe it. He was fuming. <laughs> <laughs> he lost to Okada. <laughs> But out of context, there's like nothing there. It's just Okada hit an enziguri on him like Inoki. I'm so angry. I'm gonna kick you. <laughs> it just sounded like a little kid. It's the biggest match of his life. And, he lost. <laughs> and that's that was my memory of him for ages. And then like yeah, he rocked up. He made that one appearance. It was just like that's right. I'm the new signing. And I'm like, Who's, <laughs> where's the amazing Jay White we've all been promised? Where's yeah. the earth charging kaboom that was supposed to happen? And then it took a while. And then yeah, he's at that point now where. Well, up until the last few months, he was doing really well with his lads. Who, like, when the New Age Outlaws got with uh, Triple H, and suddenly made Triple H look cool. Um, yeah, that's a feeling I got. It's us. What's going on? Ross has just found a gif of, or a clip of us from last week. It's from at Andrew oh. K underscore. It's you doing something. The thing. Doing the Patreon people last yeah. week. Oh, Reno two two zero zero. Okay, yeah, that's what we're doing. Ah, well, thank you, Adam from the Pesh and everybody else. Thank you, Adam. Lovely Pesh. questions to yes. us. Uh, if you have any. Please, 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 please. Send them to mailbag at gullaholic.com. Wrist piss. Ah, hello, diddlers. Sometimes Hi. length is good. <laughs> that last week's podcast was a joke. <laughs> Six hours and 58 minutes. You could have stretched it over two minutes, but I'm like, sure, oh, Obi. <laughs> of the Obi. Ha ha, no. Or gooning to hit the seven hour mark. Yeah, should have gooned a bit longer. I look forward to next. Yeah, that's, 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 look at these fans. You give them six hours huh. 58, like, with the extra two minutes. I look forward to next year's Night One, Night Two podcast or a tag team event with rolling substitutions to that save your voices, bodies, and minds. Rolling subs would be an excellent idea. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> From another podcast. Speaking this of is length, our show. <laughs> This is our era. Our era. <laughs> Speaking of length, after we saw Roman Reigns and Gunther's record-breaking title runs come to an end, I thought a length-based quiz would be a good idea. Uh, yeah, well, length-based quiz. No, Batista, not like that. Oh, I see. Listed below are a collection of titles from promotions around the world, <laughs> and I want you to tell me who holds the longest reign for each one. Okay. A bonus point to guess how many days and see who's closer. <laughs> Enjoy. All right, so. Well, I'm not going to... The WWF European title. Who's answering first? What are we doing? That's the start first. Uh, European title, I will go for D'Lo Brown, 280 days. Bulldog, 280 days as well. British Bulldog, 206 days. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> that was the uh, longest European title. It was yeah. uh, the IC title, aside from Gunther and Honky Tonk Man. Oh, who's next? Who's the third longest? I'll go Jericho, and I'll go two hundred days. Just to be different, I'll go the Miz. Pedro Morales, oh, four hundred twenty-five <laughs> days. We're going back. In, okay. <laughs> uh, they did we cruiserweight title ninety-six to 07. 96? Oh yeah. I'll go Dean Malenko. Oh no, wait, no, the WCW. WWE. 
WWE Cruiserweight title. It was light heavyweight, but... I'll go Dean Malenko. When they merged together, they just took the name. Yeah. I'll go Dean Malenko, even though it's wrong because you said no. <laughs> and I'll go... <laughs> okay, we can I'll go 200 days. Uh, I will go for Gregory Helms. Ah, oh, you might have got well that. Well done, you. It's actually... Yeah. Wow. How long? 385. I'll predict 385 days. Oh, yeah, we'll skip <laughs> the days, Bix. No one's getting it. Uh, Rating of Honor, world title. Jay Lethal. Sorry, yes, Jay Lethal. Yeah, I was going to go Jay Lethal. Samoa Joe. Oh, Adam Cole's going to be my, my second one there. Has Adam Cole even had it? Yeah, yeah. Thank God for that. Yeah. Five-star wrestling champion. <laughs> oh, God. Morrison. John Morrison. Yeah. I'll, oh, not Bertie Del Wanger. No, because no, I think John, <laughs> I think Morrison won it and then it went out of business oh, and then it came back show, but yeah. they carried on his reign between the two. Ah, oh, it's one of them, right? <laughs> he had it for like 3,000 days. <laughs> yeah. The FD Dub Championship. Tire. It's got to be tires. Ricky Starks. Really? 378 days. Which I don't know about. That's got to be just AEW era. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, Progress World Championship. I'll go for... Mark Haskins. Can we mention this person? Yes. Good. Just check in. I'll go Pete Dunne. Karen Noir. That's the backup I was going to go. Oh, lockdown, 791 lockdown. days. Well, there was no shows. Was there Cara grow up? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Cara. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. WCW World title. Which one? Sorry, WCW World Heavyweight title. Hogan. Um, oh, but there was title changes all the time, so I'm going to go... For Luger. Hulk Hogan, 469 days. Luger never, I'm thinking, nice Luger's, I'm thinking of Luger's Luger. US one. Yeah, Luger's US. Uh, IWGP tag team titles. <sighs> tag the team titles. Good title. brothers. <laughs> I'm trying to think who would have held it around lockdown time. I'm going to say God. Go- Godo and Yoshihashi. You're nearly right, Ross. Carl Anderson and Fake Luke Gallows, also known as Matt Bloom slash A Train. Oh, they, what? Giant they Bernard. Fake Luke the Gallows. <laughs> I don't know why that is. They've got the record. 564 days. Large wow. Bernard. I guess so. NWA World Championship. Um, what was he called, man? The bloke who just held it. I'm not going like Harley Race or anything. I'm going to go Tim Storm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Flair. Alan Pacitti's favorite Luke says. 2,300 <sighs> days. 2,000 days. Jesus. Mm. Uh, AAA Queen of Queens Championship. Yes, you will know the women who hold the record. They are currently with AE Dub. Oh, Ty of Valkyrie. Thunder Rosa. Ty of Valkyrie. Yeah. 945 <laughs> days. IWGP Junior Heavyweight title. Kushida. Um, the only guy I can think of sat here right now is El Fantasma. <laughs> Joshua and Thunder Liger, 628 That's the days. obvious one, I yeah. it might have been Bala, you know, or Devitt. Mm. Ring of Honor, pure championship. Mm. Brian Danielson. Christopher Daniels. Nigel McGuinness. Ah, no. In days. the unification match, was it? it must have been that, I... Nigel, who was the pure one. And... That's what I remember being, yeah. Rev Pro World title. Um, Ishii. Osprey. It is Osprey, 919 uh, days. Why did I try and be clever? <laughs> Uh, hope you're all doing well. And that's oh. the incredible content of a mini weekend. Former Sunderland winger Julia Arca. Julio! Julio, Julio. Arca, big fan. AKA Joe from Wexford, Ireland. You've been, you've messaged he's, up before. Oh, hi, hey, Joe. He's good, he's good at the questions. I like the Joe. quiz. Say that you get them all right. I like the <laughs> quiz. I like the Julio Arca mention. Julio. Julio. Thank you very much for your lovely Reese's Pieces. If you have any more, please send them to mailbag at cultaholic.com. Julio got stung by a jellyfish on Roca Beach and uh, had to get another plate of wee on him to dis him to. That was him. Yeah. I heard that story. Thanks, everyone. It's Cultaholics. The question. Ah, oh, what a lovely, yeah. long, sober podcast it's been. Mm. Uh, maybe we should have some booze. Uh, thank you to our lovely, lovely producers, Reno2200. He's oh. from the future. <laughs> and Noah Anderson. Anderson. Son, son. He is Brazilian. Anderson, son, son, better than Cleberson. I forgot to the lyrics. To the left, to the right, jump up and down and do I the knees. something inappropriate coming up soon. Something inappropriate. Thank you very much for the lovely producers there. Thanks, guys. The big Thank question is, of course, what a what a what is going to be the best match at AEW Dynasty this weekend? Let's have a look at the card. Over to Joel. The Acclaimed, taking on Bullet Club Gold. 
the winner takes all AEW World Trios and the Ring of Honor World Six Man Tag Team Championship. Oh, that's on the pre show now. Yes. Uh, That'll be good. I don't think it'll be match of the night, though. I do not think it'll be match of the night. Uh, yeah, whatever. Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, and Mark Briscoe versus the House of Black. <laughs> Ross is... That's the level of care. I can... <laughs> That's the level of care I have at this point. These these two look I... once great teams. I think this one will be fun. There'll be bodies flying everywhere, but I don't think it'll be match of the night. I echo the sentiments of Jack G King. Yeah, got the right. care. Oh my god, what's he doing? <laughs> He's been well, on to do back to back. Like, oh, I'm just saying. Hook versus Jericho for the. No, this isn't in order. Yeah, no. yeah I hope not. FDW, how much crap is on this bloody microphone? FDW. Don't rules hold match it right up here. FDW <laughs> Championship. There's a table, right? There. Uh, Hook versus Jesus. Jericho will not be not be the crap best one. Crap, <laughs> the... When was last time this was washed? It'll, it'll, it's your microphone. Just diseases. Well, your stuff on it. It Mine. Not... <laughs> the only person who uses the studio is me. Is it? Hook versus Jericho. Will not... about Hook versus Jericho. Will not be match of the night. No. I'm gonna shot after this. How do you wash a pop shield? That's the question. It will oh. not be match of the night. It'll be the shortest match of the night. It'll be the most... Uh, it could be the most satisfying match of the night. Or angering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why also. you'll have to tune in. No. Thriller subscriptions available. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Roddy Strong versus Kyle O'Reilly. It'll yes. be the best of the night. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Well, oh, it doesn't matter. I was going to compare it to a Benoit match. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a different Benoit. <laughs> It'll be like Davy Richards versus Eddie Edwards yeah. from Ring of Honor. Yeah. Jimmy Benoit. No, no, no. He's a midfielder for West Ham. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, Julia Hart versus Willow Nightingale. This is the match I got confused about earlier because I thought Monet's match was this weekend. It's no. not, is it? It's next pay per view. Okay, sure. Storyline implications. Yes. Um, apart from that, I think they've got a good dynamic going on. Mm. Lovable babyface, evil heel. It'll be fine. It'll be good. I like Willow. This will rule. Yeah. Okada versus Pac. Here we go. Yeah. I think it'll be all right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this could be... There are people listening to the earphones. I'm taking a risk here. I think this will just be pretty, like, very good, but not what we think it'll be. Because Okada's not in the mode of putting on these insane matches at the minute. He's being a cocky arsehole. And I think that his match with Brian Danielson at Wrestle Kingdom this year was very good, but not as good as some Okada matches. And I think oh. this will be the same. That, Interesting. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Second best match of the night. That's my prediction. Mm. I hope I'm very yeah. wrong. Um, it'll be a match tonight if Pac wins. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're all going out yeah. at 5am on Sunday. Jelly <laughs> ice cream <laughs> so, so, yes. if Pac wins. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Young Bucks versus FTR. Tournament final ladder match for the vacant AEW World Tag Team Championship. Depends how tolerant you are on Jungle Boy affecting the result of the match, mm. <laughs> but it'll probably be good. The most headline-grabbing match of the evening, I predict. Mm. Mm. Timeless Tony Storm versus Thunder Rosa. Intriguing. Sleeper match of the night, I reckon. Mm. Just because of Tony's gimmick, maybe scuppering people's expectations. Mm. Well, so I'm hoping it's good in a weird yeah. way. I want to see the old Thunder Rosa, which we haven't seen yet, but... This, this be if, any, if, if she's going to reappear, it's going to be here. Will Ospreay versus Brian Danielson. Oh, yeah, this will be the best match of the night. So. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yes, we're bought in a sound effect machine now. Ross actually went home an hour ago. <laughs> this will be the best match of the night. Yeah. This will be the match of the year. <laughs> the year, really? The year. It could, it could, yeah, why? You, don't be so incredulous. I don't know if you. I the will be there. incredulous. <laughs> One says Will Ospreay, and the other says Brian Danielson. That's right. Won the greatest wrestler of the previous uh, 100 years. <laughs> yeah, that's how he's doing it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and one of the next 100 <laughs> years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it'll be match of the night. But it's for it, it, it's got that the, the same trap that all matches like this have, which is that the hype will be huge. Can they live up to it? Probably. Right. The crowds could be good for it, though. Yeah. Uh, where's the event being held at, by the way? St. Louis, up? Missouri. Uh, okay, fine. Randy Orton running incoming. Uh, uh, <laughs> and Samoa Joe versus Swerve Strickland with Prince Nana. Hey, could he AW World also in with a shout of match of the night? That I'm um, in a weird way because of the storyline and because of the the I don't know the build for Swerve and everything else. I'm more excited for that than Osprey versus Danielson. I'm I in a way I am as well because I'm worried that Osprey Danielson could feature like not a direct run in but like the Doncaster family coming along right, and right, being yeah. like mm. yeah i look I'm, i care about who wins joe versus strickland whereas osprey versus Danielson, i'm just going to see what they want to they're going to do right yeah 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 
This is the Liverpool to match number nine's Manchester City and oh. match number six's Arsenal. God. If that makes sense to you. Oh, God. Joel didn't like that. So this one's the favourite then to be match of the night? Nah, third place. Wait, this one's the who? The Liverpool? The Liverpool. Osprey, Dinerson, City. Yeah, that's the favourite. Who's, who's Arsenal? Number six. Ocada versus Oh, Pat. right. I got you. Which one's the Aston Villa now? <laughs> the Aston Villa would be Timeless Tony. Okay. And Thunder Rosa. Not Bucks. Nah. Well. They're, like the, they're like the Spurs. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to be more excited for that match if it wasn't a ladder match. Can yes. the Young Bucks actually have a, a normal singles match? Sorry, yep. Singles, yep, they can. Tag match. They can definitely do that. All right. Actually, <laughs> I'll be interested to see if FTR use the ladders in a tactical way. Oh, if they keep on like throwing them out or whatever. Yeah. Or like, or no, like, we're not doing that crazy spot. Yeah, they can. I would find, love that. We're not going to get it. Think of some interesting ways to use the ladders, but we'll see. To prop them up so they can sit on the ladder and read the best of CM Punk <laughs> novelization by <laughs> a young Jack J. King. Okay. Okay. It's, it's going to yeah. be a good show. It yes, it really, is. It's that looks card. loaded at the, yeah, the top end of it. That was a yeah. WCPW show, but yes. Uh, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm looking forward to that. Mm. Again, yes. Looking forward to Swerve beating Joe. If that doesn't happen, I will be contacting Triller and demanding a refund. Ross is looking forward to Swerve beating Joe because he's predicted him in the predictions, which you yes, can find I online have. right now. I would be surprised why anybody would say different, but Tim I'll have did. to watch... Bloody Tim. I'll have Tim. to watch the... Uh, Tim Kimball. Tim, Tim Kimball. Tim Kimball. <laughs> he died there. He's African. He's, he's... Oh, okay. Ah, but yeah, that's looking mint, isn't it? Yes. You know looking even more mint? You lovely lads. Until next week, if we want to see more of you, what do we have to, <laughs> what do, we have to do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've just got to find us on Cultaholic. I'll be uh, doing what happened out in the immediate aftermath of... Uh, Dynasty Ross is on the predictions li- uh, on the live stream with Tom at cultaholic.com no, youtube.com forward slash cultaholic forward slash live while the show's going on uh, what about yourself Matthew what have you got going on <laughs> not really no no not a sort of a lot no botchamania uh, so. hopefully but I can't guarantee okay it's taken forever <laughs> take so your, much to edit take your time it's like this is the, the botchamania version of the seven hour podcast I'm like <laughs> people wouldn't ask Picasso to rush a master but I don't know if they, they did. did oh did they <laughs> they whipped him down the street get going, that Quirica get, get painted get back to work get that Quirica painted now <laughs> like he chopped his dick off <laughs> that was that was Van Gogh and it was his ear yeah <laughs> 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 oh my painting's rubbish I cut my dick off that's how you finished it. Do you know Picasso is actually like way more modern than you think? Like he was like 20th century, isn't it? Anyway. Oh, so Osprey wanted to wrestle him as best. Picasso, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh, Joel. <laughs> I've, got noise I've got no noise. I've got no saying. No, you missed Ross did a dab as well. I'm glad. Joel, anything? No. Fantastic. <laughs> Wait, what are we going to say on the screen? Big <laughs> Jindal. What? I'm wrapping up. Do- he's telling us to go home. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. I'm trying to interrupt this. Patreon.com forward slash called the Holic. Mailbag at Cultaholic.com. You've been magnificent. This has been Jack, Ross, Joel, Papa Jack. Now I'm going to end this lovely podcast by saying. Biscotti. Oh, God. <laughs> On account no, of no, three. No, 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 no. It's a fitting tribute to a murderer. No, no, no. One, two, three. Biscotti. Biscotti.